Chasing the vibes, chasing the vibes, chasing the vibes, chasing the vibes. Too busy chasing the vibes. Feeling good, feeling great on my time. Won't let a hate of light my shine. I'm just living my life. Too busy chasing the vibes, chasing the vibes, chasing the vibes. Chasing the vibes, 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 chasing
feeling good, feeling great on my time. Won't let a hate apply my shine. I'm just living my life, too busy chasing good vibes. Chasing good vibes, chasing good vibes, chasing good vibes. Too busy chasing good vibes. Feeling good, feeling great on my time. Won't let a hate apply my shine. I'm just living my life, too busy chasing good vibes. Chasing good vibes, chasing good vibes, chasing good vibes. Too busy chasing good vibes. Too busy chasing good vibes. Feeling good, feeling great on my time. Won't let a hate apply my I'm just living my life, too busy chasing good vibes, chasing good vibes, chasing good vibes, chasing good vibes, too busy chasing good vibes, too busy chasing good vibes, feeling good, feeling great on my time, won't let a hate apply my shine. I'm just living my life, too busy chasing good vibes, chasing good vibes, chasing good vibes, chasing good vibes, too busy chasing good vibes, too busy chasing good vibes, feeling good, feeling great on my time, won't let a hate apply my shine. I'm just living my life, too busy chasing good vibes, chasing good vibes, chasing good vibes, chasing good vibes, too busy chasing good vibes, too busy chasing good vibes, feeling good, feeling great on my time, won't let a hate apply my shine. I'm just living my life, too busy chasing good vibes, chasing good vibes, chasing good vibes, chasing good vibes, too busy chasing good vibes, too busy chasing good vibes, feeling good, feeling great on my time, won't let a hate apply my shine. I'm just living my life, too busy chasing good vibes, chasing good vibes, chasing good vibes, chasing good vibes, too busy chasing good vibes, too busy chasing good vibes, feeling good, feeling great on my time, won't let a hate apply my shine. I'm just living my life, too busy chasing good vibes, chasing good vibes, chasing good vibes, chasing good vibes, too busy chasing good vibes, too busy chasing good vibes, feeling good, feeling great on my time, won't let a hate apply my shine. I'm just living my life, too busy chasing good vibes, chasing good vibes, chasing good vibes, chasing good vibes, too busy chasing good vibes, too busy chasing good vibes, feeling good, feeling great on my time, won't let a hate apply my shine. I'm just living my life, too busy chasing good vibes, chasing good vibes, chasing good vibes, chasing good vibes, too busy chasing good vibes, too busy chasing good vibes, feeling good, feeling great on my time, won't let a hate apply my shine. I'm just living my life, too busy chasing good vibes, chasing good vibes, chasing good vibes, chasing good vibes, too busy chasing good vibes, too busy chasing good vibes, feeling good, feeling great on my time, won't let a hate apply my shine. I'm just living my life, too busy chasing good vibes, chasing good vibes, chasing good vibes, chasing.
chasing goodbye. Is he chasing goodbye? Too busy chasing goodbye. Feeling good, feeling great on my time. Won't let a hater block my shine. I'm just living my life. Too busy chasing goodbye. Chasing goodbye. Chasing goodbye. Chasing goodbye. Too busy chasing goodbye. Feeling great on my time Won't let a hater block my shine I'm just living my life Too busy chasing goodbyes Chasing goodbyes Chasing goodbyes Chasing goodbyes Too busy chasing goodbyes Too busy chasing goodbyes Feeling good, feeling great on my time Won't let a hater block my shine I'm just living my life, too busy chasing goodbyes, chasing goodbyes, chasing goodbyes, chasing goodbyes, too busy chasing goodbyes, too busy chasing goodbyes, feeling good, feeling great on my time, won't let a hater block my shine, I'm just living my life, too busy chasing goodbyes. Chasing goodbyes, chasing goodbyes, chasing goodbyes, too busy chasing goodbyes. Too busy chasing goodbyes, feeling good, feeling great on my time. Won't let a hater block my shine. I'm just living my life, too busy chasing goodbyes. Chasing goodbyes, chasing goodbyes. Chasing goodbye, too busy chasing goodbye. Too busy chasing goodbye. Feeling good, feeling great on my time. Won't let a hater block my shine. I'm just living my life. Too busy chasing goodbye. Chasing goodbye. Chasing goodbye. Chasing goodbye. Too busy chasing goodbye. Feeling good, feeling great on my time
like a champion. A champion. Ain't nothing that can't be done. Oh, yeah. I put it all on the line. Definition of divine. Yeah, I feel like a champion. Ain't nothing that can't be done. They told me I wouldn't be nothing. Came on now, I'm second and none. I need me a trophy, I need me a ring. I'm not with the bull, but keep it a beam. You know what it is, you know what I mean. She, all I do is win, 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 win. Ha, haters wanna hate, they ain't made top 10. Ha, double, triple team, what they need to defend. Ha, I do left and I'm going with the win. I'm going with I feel like a champion. A champion, there ain't nothing that can't be done. Oh, yeah. I put it all on the line, definition of divine. Yeah, I feel like a champion. A champion, there ain't nothing that can't be done. Oh, yeah. I put it all on the line, definition of divine. I feel like a champ, MVP status. Yeah, the win been guaranteed. Snow, let's see about it. You gon' speak about it, then be about it. If y'all don't bring that energy, no, I can't be around it. Nah, I'ma shoot my shot. I'ma stick it, watch. At the tippy top, I cannot take no loss. Two seconds on the clock, they gotta give me the rock. I got a game on what? I got a game on lock. I feel like a champion. A champion. Ain't nothing that can't be done. Oh, yeah. Put it all on the line, definition of divine. I feel like a champion. A champion. Ain't nothing that can't be done. Oh, yeah. I put it all on the line, definition of divine. I got big dreams, I'ma do big things Hey, you see me on the big screen, looking so clean I don't move slow, I move fast right past Anybody taking life for granted, yeah, that's too bad I'd be grateful for everything that I have You only got this life, you don't get it back Make the most of it, become the best that I can Everybody look at me, I got a plan You gotta work hard, play hard, do it from the start Cause how you do anything is everything is art Stay consistent and do it every day Don't let fatigue get in your way Cause 10% of something is better than nothing You better do something if you wanna be something I can feel my stomach rumbling, I'm hungry Big things coming, I ain't bluffing, yeah No, I don't wanna stay the same, yeah So I keep pushing through the pain, yeah That's the only way to make a change, yeah So I fight every day and train, yeah It'll all be worth it One day it'll all be worth it so I keep pushing through the pain, yeah That's the only way to make a change, yeah I've had enough I'm making my own luck Adrenaline, my drug I'm sick of feeling stuck I got this, I got this Will not quit to the top, I promise Cause I've had I'm on the climb to the crown in my prime right now Hear me loud, I've been spitting for a while now I'll buy myself independent DIY now Don't need no help, I've been beating out labels And money and budgets, it's funny I do all the work, yeah, keep it 100 I fight for my dreams, I would die for these things I believe in myself, I refuse to be weak I like to build things 
Empires out of buildings. I wanna leave a legacy of helping others finally feel things. Of motivating and killing. Depression, exhaustion, we need some healing. I work through the pain. I like seeing gains. I keep my head down, buried, walk through the flames. Yeah, I do this every day, even when I feel drained. A true man pushes through, you don't hear complaints. No, I don't wanna stay the same, yeah. So I keep pushing through the pain, yeah. That's the only way to make a change, yeah. So I fight every day and train, yeah. It'll all be worth it. One day it'll all be worth it. So I keep pushing through the pain, yeah. That's the only way to make a change, yeah. I've had enough. Feeling great now. A hater can't play with my day now. Get that negativity out of my face now. In my city, I'm the man of my state now. Yeah, I'm living life to the fullest. Baby girl, you're talking to the realest. Energy and joy, you can't steal it. Good vibes all around. Baby, tell me, can you feel it? I woke up, so I'm blessed. Just another chapter in the test. I know I'm doing better than the rest. Got a smile on my face, showing teeth for the crest. It's no sweat, I'm a vibe in my own right. Go time in the sun, yes, I'm gonna shine. So fine, got Betty on my phone line. Feeling good, feeling great, chasing these good vibes. Feeling good, feeling great on my time. Won't let a hate apply my shine. I'm just living my life, too busy chasing good vibes. Chasing good vibes, chasing good vibes, chasing good vibes. Too busy chasing good vibes. soul on that beat i'm ready to feast margaritas with some divas i'm pouring the drinks i'm living life to the fullest the blessings in me don't really care what you say whatever you think nah unequivocal miracles with the lyrical with the homies trying to pop like the cereal lucky charms got a model on my arm go watch on my wrist garlic corn no alarm fireworks i can feel it in the sky i got love in my eyes with this money on my mind i see passion and pride i despise all the lies i've been around the world so i'm down for the ride mm. good drinks good people and good times fast cars pretty women on face Time. More money, more fun in my life. I'm just chasing my shots with good vibes. Feeling good, feeling great on my time. Won't let a hate apply my shine. I'm just living my life. Too busy chasing good vibes. Chasing good vibes. Chasing good vibes. Chasing good vibes. Too busy chasing good vibes. Friday night putting them plays in, but it feel like a special occasion. So let's go out, go blazing, hit the dance floor, let go frustrations. I might have a hidden agenda, but my intention's pure. I'll give you all that I got, and I hope that you don't need more. It's okay, just take my hand now. Damn me and sweat in your hair out. You got me creasing my sneakers. That's usually something I care about. Couldn't see the path, but it's clear now. You was in my dreams, but you here now. And I just want a little dance and a reason to change my plans. All I want is for you to dance with me. With your hands. 
Called the ride, cause I'm going up. And it's something mixy going in my cup. Don't say much, cause they know what's up. Huh. You know it get cold on the late night. We getting all close like it's day night. You looking so fly, you can take flight. Now I got this feeling that I can't fight. Your courage got my urges flaring. You got me by the collar and I'm not caring. You see how the people can't stop staring. I'm trying to make you mine and I'm not sharing. Okay, let's bring it back a bit. She said you could have whatever if you ask for it. Well, I just want to have a little dance and a reason to change my plan. All I want is for you to dance with me with your hands in the air where I can see. I don't know if we'll get another chance, you see. So I hope that you'll just come dance with me. Yeah, 
Get on your feet and move to the beat. Move to the beat. Mm. Pour up some drinks and then we repeat. Then we repeat. Yeah. Chasing my purpose, need a release. Need a release. Yeah. My life's a beach, I'm lost in the breeze. Lost in the mm. breeze. Do this with ease, don't play with my dreams. dreams. Yeah. It's so together, it's not what it seems. Mm. Part of a tiger, life of a king. king. Yeah. Chasing my bag, my feet in the cream. cream. Running these laps, not losing my steam. Mm. I'm feeling good, this life's what I need. Mm. Mm. Don't intervene with my energy. Yeah. I'm in her scope like Jimmy Iveen. Yeah. No Superman, but I'm feeling supreme. Mm. It's not a movie, but I'm making a scene. Yeah. Hey. I can tell you how to live your life, but, hey. but, hey. but hey. you just gotta get up. Yeah. Live our life, we paying a price. Mm. Piece of the pie, I need me a slice. slice. Yeah. Rolling the dice, the scariest spice. spice. Mm. Sticky like rice, the tricky reprise. Yeah. Love will suffice, I suffer in silence. Mm. All alone, I'm lost on the island. Lost. Let's spread peace and less of the violence. No. Sebastian Block, I'm God's playing violence. Yeah. The flowers violet, give me my rose. rose. This for my city, all for my bros. Rose. Did it alone, so far in my zone. Toast. So raise your glass, let's all have a toast. toast. I can show you how to get like me, live your life to you, D-I-E. D-I-E. Yeah, look, I can tell you how to live your life, but, but, hey, but, hey, you, you just, just gotta, gotta get up now.
I know a place that will break you into a thousand pieces. Stay away from them. Stay away from Lorca, Paco, and Picasso. Don't ask about Lola. I, Caballo Grande. I, Lord Nieve. But, in spite of everything, it occurs to you to visit Andalusia. Don't say I didn't warn you. Be careful of the Andalusian crush. Hey guys, it's Jimmy Lin, former professional Counter-Strike player and Valorant coach. Watch out for the stairs, clear this angle, you're going to be able to fight this. Red Bull gives you wings. I'm out here in the cold night, running till I barely feel my feet. Wanna see it through my own. There's no going back, and I'm not afraid anymore Cause I know I'm gonna be the last one standing Yeah, I'm not afraid anymore Yeah, I don't wanna wait anymore I'm ready to fall Take me down. See that I'm surrounded by predators. It's critical they got me in my element. It's dirty, how you trying to keep it elegant? Keep my eyes open wide when everyone around me is an enemy. Too bad you can't take me down
take me down. Hello, everyone. It's Friday. It does not look like this in Berlin. It's absolutely pouring with rain, as if you needed another excuse to stay inside and watch some glorious Valorant today. I have no idea how big the umbrella that Giant X was standing under when they came into the studio today. Like, how is Yampi? <laughs> Completely <laughs> not. Damn, that, that's actually incredible. I did not know that um, Emil was under duress. Emil, when we see you on stage later, just blink if you need us to come and rescue you. They're his They're protecting him. What do you mean? Yeah, maybe. Yampi was having a full-on photo shoot. I did say to him, is this like football now? Do you have to all arrive in team suits? I think that's something we definitely need to see when our teams come to Shanghai. But speaking of what people are wearing, uh, you guys got the memo. <laughs> We are, we are checked out, quite literally, on the desk today. Uh, I'd love to know what you guys think in terms of who's wearing it best. Let us know. Hashtag BCTEMEA. But this is your, -E it's your look. Like, I, I just yeah. copied you. Sorry, I'll be yeah. You're the style of icon. Course. I just came in and went, how do I try and match steel today? And yeah. I, you know. I think my squares are a little bit smaller than the squares that you brought. A little out. bit. Yeah, a little bit. Because just... I'm a bigger square. That's, that's what it is. Yeah, maybe, I guess. <laughs> if, I mean, if you're hearing <laughs> self-deprecation, then go for it. We do need to speak to Wardrobe, to lovely stylist Firat, because next time you're on the show, I do expect you to be wearing a full head-to-toe pink checkered suit for when you do Pink Wednesday oh, with Woody and Sue and Bayer. You want mesh. Mesh, you, yeah. For him, you want not nipples. for me. Not for me. For That's him. what you're saying. You want to go full Berlin. All right. They have, they, they, they <laughs> have one of those, actually. Let's take a look at the standings, OK? Let's, let's stop yeah, talking really. about what we look like. Let's look at what the teams look like, where they are. Are we, we going to look at the standings? Should we do that? Or should we actually take a look at what happened yesterday? What would you prefer? I, I don't know. Oh, we got standings. We're going to look at the standings. You, you control the show, Frankie. We I, do whatever you want. Are you surprised to see BBL at the top of Group Alpha still? Still, uh, well, they've just got there. They've just got to the top. I said steel, they? not steel. Don't oh, make water steel. jokes on oh, my watch. Okay. Well, I mean, Fnatic, they play today. They have a chance to kind of like over overcome that a little bit, but it's still like pretty early on. I mean, there's a couple more weeks to go. Am I surprised a little bit? I didn't expect this coming out of kickoff, but I mean, it's Valorant. Anything can happen. To Miracles be fair, happen. if you look at the record as well, it's actually quite tight in terms of group alpha. Omega, on the other hand, uh, it's hashtag Navi Nation, Thomas. Yeah, it, it may, maybe it could change today. I don't think too many people are, are hopeful on that one because I think both GX and Koi have got tough games coming up. But at the same time, yeah, Na'Vi have been fantastic. Foot obviously had their first loss, which I, I don't think... I think it was a close game. People expected it to be close, but I think most people had Foot coming out of that one on top. Yeah, I mean, when we went to Sunset, though, though, and we saw the compositions, mm. I think we kind of called it then. You loved that the one, dead didn't you? Lock. You're a big fan. <laughs> It Not was, as big a fan as Mitch It was fan. interesting. I mean, <laughs> we love interesting out here. That's all I can say about it. It was different. It, was, different. it was very different. It, it didn't work, but it was different. And that's all that matters sometimes, OK? And that means that next time we see Foot play on Sunset, we're probably going to see a whole new composition. Mm. ISO. No. I think it's I hope so, not oh, ISO. Oh, okay. sorry, sorry. I hope My so. Bad. Yeah. Have we actually seen any? We haven't seen any no. of the teams play ISO this no, year. No. Any of the other regions? No. I don't think so. I don't think we will. What needs to change for us to see ISO? The angels. <laughs> 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 well, I've got my fingers crossed that we're going to see a Clove when they're unlocked next week, I have to say. And mm. I'm hoping that we're going to see some more uh, Turkish firepower in the coming weeks. Actually, mark your calendars for week number five, because that's when we're actually going to see BBL versus Foot. Okay. It's going to be. Uh, it's, a, it's, well, uh, let me do that right now. Hang on. It could be week Deadlocks five, at Dawn. It's BBL. That's not on. You need, you need to turn All the right, they're going to sort out. It is on. It's just very low contrast. Gonna, oh, sorry. They're going to yeah. sort out the tablet adver, whatever <laughs> they're doing right now. While you guys check up with what happened earlier when I <laughs> caught up with the IGLs of Giant X and Team Liquid, Redgar and Enzo. Last week, Redgar said, every time I face an old teammate, I want to beat them. But today, we thought we would ask Redgar what it's like facing someone who does the role he used to do for his old team. Uh, so how do you feel when you look into Enzo's eyes? Ah, I'm feeling that I want to have a good fight versus him, but not here, like in the game. Yeah. And, and what's it like for you, Enzo, sitting next to the man that you kind of replaced? He wants a good fight. He looks very friendly. I'm going to give him a good fight. So how does Team Liquid look like now that you have taken over the reins? We are looking like a team that makes progress daily and that I'm very happy about. And now we got to win games and we're going to win games. 
how are you going to win the game today against this man? Play better than him. <laughs> <laughs> how are you playing at the moment? Because the team is still working on the fundamentals, going through changes with roles. Uh, so what do you think the performance will be like today for Giant X? Uh, it seems like from each week we become better and better in some aspects because we're taking from the games that we played, for example, versus Karmiko, we take one thing versus Fnatic, we're taking one thing and we're becoming better and better and I'm glad to see that we are not repeating like the same mistakes several times. So I think that right now we also become better and we need to show it in our game. You're being so nice to each other. Everyone is nice too, Redgar. Uh, why, why? Why does everyone love this man? How can you not be nice? I mean, there are players that are hardworking and kind to others and I think just respecting that is the, the ground basis. So. Yeah, that, that, that's pretty much it. In the end, we fight each other hard in game, but we love doing that, so it's fine. See, here, here's the thing. As always, it ends up being so nice when Redgar is on the sofa. So I wanted to raise the stakes Let's of go. Team Liquid versus Giant Sacks because I know you both love a man called Nats. True. Now he's lurked his way into your hearts. So I think winner takes Nats. Winner takes Nats. Winner gets Nats. Mm. I think we need to ask him before, but I like this idea, so let's do it. <laughs> I love it. He's all about the consent. <laughs> Can we get a handshake on this? You haven't agreed, Enzo, but you okay, will. Okay, winner go hug Nats. Okay, okay, let's do it. Winner gets a cuddle with Nats. I'm, I'm going to settle for this. This is, uh, this is the reality of my situation. But now I want to see Tom, Biz and Steel's expectations versus reality. Today is a wonderful day for some Valorant. The sun is shining. And honestly, I don't know who could be miserable on a day like this. Mm. Uh, well, for starters, we've got Koi. Koi have been a team that they've had a little bit of a, a rough start. Things haven't been going their way, but they have a Masters winner, a Champions winner too, and some young guns to sort of pad the gaps in between. I think this week is gonna be their week. Koi came in a little cold. Speaking of which, it's a little cold in here. <clears throat> well, moving swiftly on, we have Giant X. And you know what? They've got Papo. He's someone who's been performing really well in the last week. You know what? They even managed to take a map off Fnatic. Purple looked bad in week one. Uh, uh, okay, well, let's talk about a team that no one can be sad about. Team Liquid, no access to sight. You've got Yumpy, he's gonna be barking. And of course, you've got the guys coming up from the tier two as well. They almost beat Na'Vi last week. They definitely lost to Na'Vi last week. Okay, well, there's one team. There's one team that no one can be down on right now. Fnatic. Sure, it didn't work out at kickoff. Even the first week looked a little bit rough, but since then, they have been unstoppable. In fact, Durka's even back on the server as well. There's absolutely nothing anyone complain about when it could come to Fnatic. They lost the map to Giant X and Icebox. Okay, well, you know what, Frankie? I, I think at this point, that's just no pleasing some people. So let's just get on with the show. I'm usually a really optimistic person. It's, it's so hard for me to look depressed because I naturally have a smile and these two massive dimples on my faces. But let me tell you, I, I don't know what to say really, guys. I feel like I need a cuddle after that one. <laughs> Are you not excited for this matchup? Can we feel excited, please, Neil? Can we talk about his, his Let's matching, get excited! Can we talk about his matching shirt and jacket? I actually, now I can... I love this. Can we sell these in the merch store here in, uh, at the Riot Games Arena, please? Because I actually feel like people will want to cosplay as Steel in the future. Uh, this is going to be an interesting mid-table matchup, though, boys, because it's, it's going to be quite close. I know that people on paper may go, well, it's Team Liquid. I mean, of course Team Liquid are going to win. But Giants X hate they've been making changes, they've been experimenting as well, so maybe this could be closer than we think. Uh, still, I know you're quite interested, though, in terms of Team Liquid, in talking to us about Yampi's impact, though. Yeah, Yampi has had a little bit of impact with his Breach stuff, obviously. It's been a little bit interesting kind of seeing how 
people are moving around the different agents on that team. So even in the last week, I think we saw Enzo and Nat switching between the Viper and the on the. It was, it was Yumpy as well on split. They all did like a yeah. three-way swap. So Enzo took up the Cipher, which was something he didn't play too much. It was mostly him on Initiator. They put Yumpy back on Initiator, and then Nat's moved from Cipher to Viper, which is fine. And yes. that's just to give Nats a bit more ability to roam. I think it's <laughs> Yumpy. I, that's who I would look at. You I think, think it's Yumpy. I think Yumpy's the one who I. I I wasn't as impressed on his Viper, and in the past, his initiator was really explosive. I think they do want to get Nats a little bit more involved with the action, because as Viper, you can kind of move up and put a lot more pressure, yep. especially with what their, their split comp is two controllers and a Cypher. So using that Viper as a more proactive kind of lurker, space creator option, buyer i guess for <laughs> for the team v rather than having you know enzo on the viper and then you know the cyphers just kind of sitting around just putting the trips here holding the space maybe throwing a couple cages but not really involved in the rounds on defense or attack as much as the viper can be mm. i think the only problem with that though is then you kind of lose the the nats value on defense because I, I feel like his cypher at a point was the best in the world. Maybe it's not quite as good as it has been in the past, but like he used to just be a sight hold on his own. With Viper, I feel like that's a little bit more difficult to do. And Enzo's is not quite as strong. So where's the, the most important value here for Team Liquid? What do they actually need to work on the most? Is it their attack or their defense? Defense, it, definitely. It's, <laughs> it's their defense, but it's, wait, I don't even know if it's just their defense. I think one game they'll look really good on a defense and another on attack. I think the main thing is doing stuff together. And we yeah. saw that a little bit on Lotus when they're kind of forced to do it because they're running the breach. We saw it last week a little bit on split. We saw it in week one in the first match as well, but we're not really seeing that in like round by round and we're not seeing it across all maps. So maps where they have more individualistic players, where they have perhaps like double controller Sentinel or a map like Icebox. Um, I'm not talking about the Harbor comp Icebox that they ran. I'm talking about, <laughs> you know, the standard comp one yeah. where it's like kind of every man for himself. Yompi's going up on this mid lurk and then Nats is going for this B lurk and then someone else is going for this A lurk. It's like, okay, the timings are off. What's going on? Like you're not doing anything in sync with like a push pull. You're not doing anything in sync with Kiko those timings what's going on here you need to do something where you're actually going towards a, a shared goal together at the same time and where we saw that a little bit last week against Navi and it looked really good until it didn't obviously yeah. well let's talk about giant X then and the purple change because it, it was very surprising when they brought in purple because actually he came in and replaced Nuki but they didn't play the same role Right. No, it, it's a bit of an odd one because I think that's now where Giant X are trying to come in and actually fix some of their other problems because I think Purpo individually as a duelist has been fantastic. Like I think especially last week when he played Breeze and they played a double duelist with Fitinho, yep. that looked really good because they're able to really push aggressively, play off of each other. And I think it looked great. But then you have the problem of I don't think they have anybody who's a traditional Sentinel. And I, I think that's the bigger issue is there was the first week where both Redgar and Hoodie got completely caught off guard with like basic stuff like oh a trip gets broken and no one turns around or no one even notices and that sort of stuff is like okay it can happen in the moment things can go wrong but there's been too much of it in a lot of maps where you go okay someone like Nuke who played for a long long time probably wouldn't have had that same issue. But I think that's where a lot of things are weird because Nokia wasn't ever really traditionally a Sentinel either. He was True. kind of in that role for Giant X, but it wasn't really working either because he was so kind of aggressive in, in his playstyle still that it's he was giving up a lot of man ad advantages trying to kind of do the next play. And as a raise player, that's fine. But as a Cypher player, it didn't really work. But it begs the question, was there something else happening behind the scenes? Because all we can see is what we see at face value, we don't know exactly what's going on behind yeah. the scenes. Nuki was one of their better um, performers. So Purpo has big fills to sh uh, shoes to fill, and he's been doing a good job of it in this last series, especially. Um, not so much in the first series, but you know, First series, first series jitters, enough, yeah, right? adjustment level, you know, it happens. Yeah, and the whole team was adjusting. Uh, the stats that we just saw on screen were actually from the match last week against Fnatic. Yeah. And Purpo is playing this pure duelist role, despite the fact he has a reputation. He's risen up the ranks as being this very skilled flex player yeah. who can essentially do anything that the team needs him to do, but they're not asking him to do that at the moment. And, and Fatinio, I'm just wondering, is it because he's not able to give enough on the duelist role, but they obviously seem as a valuable enough player to keep around and try and put into different roles? It's yeah. interesting. I, I don't know specifically what they're trying to go for or achieve or 
how the roles are shaping out, but we have seen kind of an influx on double duelist comps across different maps here. Uh, we've seen, I think even Liquid, they're, they're running like Yoru plus, um, they're, they're running double tools on some yeah, maps yeah. too. Um, so w it's not too kind of far-fetched to see that from some teams. It's going to be very interesting as well once Clove is out, uh, if they're going to pick that agent up, because that is going to be something that's going to help teams like GX that want to do these double duelists, maybe this is a way that they can kind of fix out whatever role issues that they're having. Yeah, and if you are a team searching for the answers to the problems you've been having, and there have been many we've seen from the Giants so far, it makes sense. You're pro probably going to look at an agent like Clove, basically, and, and see whether that could solve some issues. And also, your enemies are not going to be expecting it. Uh, they are also working on the fundamentals, they say. And I wonder, does this mean that the Giants are expecting to not be going to Shanghai. And they, they probably are not, let's face it, <laughs> expectations versus reality. So are they going to stick with this comp? Uh, I say comp, I mean players uh, for the long haul. Tom, would you look at that lineup and I say, think, yeah, this is I think is, making another change haul. so soon would be rough, but that, that's where we are. It, it's like we're in such a competitive environment that every team is going to always be looking for better and better players. That's why teams like Fnatic in the past have been able to improve. They would have a good team and then they'd get an even better player. So I, I do think there's a possibility if they don't manage to at least see some resurgence, because taking a map off Fnatic, that's not bad, Like especially in the spot they were in before. But I think they'd at least want to maybe even beat Liquid and go, okay, this core has something to it. Because last year, they made it to champions. Like, going and making one change after making it to the champions, you must have bigger problems than that. I think the problem is anybody from the outside, like us, looking in, we could just see whatever we see from the results, but we don't know what's actually happening. Maybe they have really good results in practice. Maybe that there's issues internally with uh, players in terms of role clash, personality clash. We don't know what's actually happening. We don't know if there's... Uh, a disagreement on play style or on comps or on no, uh, game plans. Pipson. Like, they, they, they listen to Pipson. Yeah, I can well, tell you it, that for free. So, <laughs> well, maybe it's a problem of like executing the ideas, and maybe True. like maybe the style of the players that they have is is mismatching with the the style that they want to run. We don't know. They're they are the only people that do know, so they will have to make those decisions, and we just have to sit here and watch and kind of like have this surface level speculation. But that's about the most we can do. I just want to update everyone at home. We do have an audio issue on stage at the moment. Our league officials are working on the solution, and match one between Giant X and Team Liquid is therefore just a little bit delayed. But don't panic, it is coming your way. And in the meantime, obviously you guys know what to do while we're waiting. Spam the chat, we want to hear from the fans who's going to win, Team Liquid or, or Giant X. Uh, Tom Beers, I want to ask you, who are you thinking is going to win? You haven't got yeah, Mitch Man here me? to jinx Enzo. You want me to go first for you, buddy? No, I, I think <laughs> I, I will, I'll lean towards Liquid. I, I do think like this game could go either way, but just in terms of the form of the players, even though they sort of choked the game versus Na'Vi, they still had that really solid half and a map win versus Na'Vi, who are looking like one of the best teams. Fnatic have been on shakier ground, especially on certain maps here and there. So although it's great for Giant X that they managed to take that dub, I still feel like they've looked a lot more problematic when they faced off against other teams. I would agree. I think it's kind of like a 50-50. It's one of those things where Liquid, they have a decently high skill ceiling, but their floor is so low that they could basically lose to anybody here. That's why it's so difficult to predict which way it could go. And then, as you said, like Giant X, they did take a map up of a map off of Fnatic on Breeze. And it, when we look at some of their scores, some of them are like complete blowouts where they're just shattered, but they they have played a few top teams fairly close, especially at, like at kickoff, for example. I think they, they went the distance against Carmine Core, who ended up winning the whole thing. So yeah. it's one of those things where it could go in either direction and it's too tough too tough to predict. It's like a 50-50, flip a coin, whichever it lands, that's, that's who you pick. Are you surprised given that three of the players from Team Liquid were playing together very solidly as Apex last year uh, by the fact that this is a team that still is playing very individually and, and not playing as a group. You would have thought that there would be an established chemistry there, established protocols there, that they've had to obviously blend in with the, the boys who are existing on Team Liquid already. But it just does, strikes me as a bit odd. Well, I can tell you that in my experience in esports is that it's it's very difficult to get five people on a team plus coach, assistant coach, whatever else 
all coming onto the same page and agreeing with absolutely everything and then executing it flawlessly in the game as well. When it actually happens and things click really well, it's really good to see, but also it's very hard to stay at that level for a long period of time as well. And, and it's so easy to just fall from that high point as well because people start being like, oh, this is working so well and I think this way, therefore I'm gonna start doing this and you just deter from your game plan and everything just cascades and falls apart. It's almost like you're describing Team Liquid from last year where they make it to Masters Tokyo after winning uh, EMEA, you know, in the first half of the year and then suddenly the second half of the year is... It's well, almost I, like a I think as grace. well, like looking at Apex last year, if I'm going to pick players for different roles, they kind of had everybody in the right position. Like you had someone who was an out and out support player in Shadow. You had someone who was basically willing to flex, but a uh, hardcore sentinel, like everything sort of fit together. Whereas I feel like right now, Yumpy is the player I'm looking at. He's an incredible player. I'm just wondering where he actually fits within this current roster. The problem is Yumpy's always kind of been a, one of those X Factor type players. Yeah. Even back in CS, he was kind of like that. So I, I feel like w when we talk about certain players, maybe certain habits do die hard. Like it, he he's stuck in that kind of role where he is like in my head, what I'm, visioning is Icebox. He's walking up mid-tube, and then his teammates are, like, not doing any pressure around the map, and then he's not, like, he's going way too forwards without the rest of the team time sync working, and he's just trying to be too much of a hero. And if he's able to dial that back and sync up the time better, it'll be way better, because he is so skilled as a player. Yeah. Uh, when your team is losing, we see this, we've seen this quite a lot so far. The heroes plays, the hero plays, I should say, happen, and things can fall apart. So hopefully, Liquid like, can have confidence in each other today. Let's take a look oh, at the maps that they are going to be playing on as we bring up the map veto. Uh, what are you looking for? from this deal? I am looking for, well, I'm not looking for Split at this point. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's interesting as well, because I feel like Split was sort of the middle map with both of these teams. I think if there was one I Most expected played, to but, see, yeah. would kind of be in there. So I, I wasn't, okay, this is interesting because I don't think we've seen uh, Giant X play Lotus yet. And we saw Team Liquid play it last week against Na'Vi. And actually they played it pretty well. They pretty, played it close. I think they won narrowly, like 13-10. Um, so it's interesting that you would pick a map where they just took out the the 3-0 um, team in the league yeah. at the moment, and they're going on that map. But maybe because they haven't played it, they haven't shown anything, they've got something up their sleeves, they've been prepped. Interesting the decider is ascent, because as you say, not seeing anything. Well, I wonder like, if that might yeah. be what GX are going for. It's almost just like having very little on display, especially with Purpo, because obviously they've only played it for a couple of matches so far in the league. So I think that that's the one thing for Team Liquid is they might want to come in with some counters, but in this map pool, well, the only place they can really do that is looking at the old comp they played with New K on Icebox, which you can't do. Well, the other, the, the flip side of that is that if you're running the Viper Yoru comp on Ascent that Liquid ran last time, it's very difficult to get reps against that to be prepared True. for it. So even if Giant X goes and looks at it, it's like, oh, they, they do this, we're going to be prepared for it. Unless you get reps against it, you go in with a theory, but theory and practice are very different things. Yeah, you have to be an incredibly strong team as well to be able to maintain your own game rather than trying to counter everything that's being thrown at you. Uh, while we wait, though, for our teams to get ready on stage, we're going to sit back, relax, and enjoy some words from Giant X. Oof, this doesn't look any good. No, no, trust me, it's going to be good. Udi, turn on the camera. April 1st, 2024, Experiment 32 kickoff has been a complete failure. So right now we're gonna start our experiment 33. What are you doing, Ficinio? Be careful. Wait, what is this? I don't know, but we need to replace it. Relax, relax, Ficinio. What are you doing? You're gonna break it. Cloud, help him. Now? Yes, yes, look. Woody, increase copying by 10 percentage. Okay. Hoodie, what are you doing? Healing over here. Bro, it's not Valorant. Increase copium 10 percentage right now. Guys, you don't think he needs something? Yeah, he needs a... He needs to shoot headshots. What can be up? Sorry, Cloud, I will need this. What the... Bro, trust me. 
They were all glasses. But we need them. Lil Pipson gave it to me. I don't know, I feel so bad. Man. And what now? Guys, we're losing him. No, 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 guys, guys, we need to see him up. No, 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 wait. I'll do it. I've got some good lineups. Come on, guys, fast. We need to do it. We need to try. Almost there. Hurry up, hurry up. Now! What did you do? He's dead! Guys, guys, what's happening? What have we created? Bro, tú no tendrás tres corazones, ¿no? Suena como un pulpo. All that creativity from our friends at Giant X have uh, inspired me. Yeah, and I you, thought not I'm me. going to do some <laughs> surgery of your own. Given that we have Clove coming out next week, I thought I'd get you guys to do Riot a favor and design the next agent after Clove. Are you kidding me? Oh, that's what no. we're doing. No. <laughs> You've both got tablets. Tom, I've entrusted you with my notes. You okay. don't even want to know how many different <laughs> notes I have on there. My whole life is on that thing. So get drawing and Ooh, Josh, you can do the same. I thought we were going to say something like, oh, uh, look how good they are at, at creating these memes in the, you know, the content stuff. Surely they're going to be really good in the game as well. But you guys are so great at creating memes. I'm literally wearing a jacket version of your shirt and he's a All Teletubby right. son. Well, I guess I'm making a... a a plaid man. If I knew, only knew how to draw, though, I don't know how to draw. So he's not one for the art of suspenses, Steel. No, I'm not. Sorry. Uh, so you're making a plaid man, but think about the class of agent. Think about you know yeah. gaps that could be filled right now. Think so about how to make the eyes agent so tenable. Or just creating the abilities. You have to do some drawing. So yeah, draw the agent, make them look cool. Done. And then the abilities. Was it, it is it is the the a hairy Mitch agent man with like a, and it's so it's Mitch. Gonna be, a beard. It's going to be a, a sentinel that blocks off certain areas with his hair. Wow. Okay. I'd love some ability names, please. Uh, Tangle. Tangle. I like tangled. Tangle. Like a kind of brambly so, thing. Yeah. It, it's sort of like a, a trip, but it's more like a little fence. And if you walk into it, you take damage. That's good. Okay, so that's that's a little yeah, bit of area now, of control. Don't ask that's any some more side control. I, I put I 200 credits on that one. <laughs> uh, you can come up with a name. Come up with two more abilities. <laughs> oh no. Meanwhile, Josh taking the homework incredibly I'm, seriously. I've just seen a preview. Yeah, I think I'm good to go. <laughs> I call it um, the stick man, and. Um, it's Have you somehow been lazier than me? Yeah, a little bit. Well, I mean, I, I was rushed He's for time, a right? Of oh, yeah, because this took me like 15 yeah. minutes. <laughs> so I drew. This is the. This he is drew the, himself. The stick man and. Uh, He's got stick-related abilities, so he can take off an arm and throw it at the so enemy. Is it a and, duelist, it, then? and it does a little bit. Yeah, sure. Yeah, if and you want. It, only, <laughs> sure, it does yeah. a little bit of what now? Um, damage? Yeah, a little bit of damage on Just the when the stick hits, and then it also it concusses them for a little bit. So it's a little okay. bit be between like a stun and like a like a 50 damage like uh, nuke thing. Yeah, and then um, you could take off the shoe and and throw the shoe like a. So he's he's just got, throwing he's cool got two projectiles. Yeah, two projectiles. So we're we're really laying into the projectile thing. And then the last thing he can do is take off his other arm and use it as a shield, so he can block damage like ISO, but better. So so you have kind of re recreated ISO in a way. Well, What's the ultimate ability? Um, <laughs> I have an idea for one of mine if he needs more time to think. Um, okay. I have an ability he can, if he dies, Cole. he can regrow <laughs> regrow himself. <laughs> he can regrow. That's his ultimate. Wow. I he regrows himself. I have an ability himself. called comb, and the comb <laughs> combs the hair away from his eyes for a min for 15 seconds. For those 15 seconds, he can see through a single wall. There you go. <laughs> is that is that a game changing ultimate ability? Because obviously you've got not an ultimate. You've got neural theft from I just said an ability where you can actually You just go like everyone. this, and for 15 seconds you can see through a single wall. I think seeing through a wall is quite a strong do, ability. Do you think that this is a? Can uh, you shoot through the hole that you've no created for yourself? No one asked me to like, reinvent think... the wheel. No, like, but I'm asking you to make a viable agent in this game. Uh, but you, your ult that ultimate I didn't is say that ultimate? Okay, that just feels very similar to Cypher. Okay. When you're looking through the wall, can you shoot? No. It's just purely, strictly <laughs> info. It's, yes, it's, it's like a cipher cam yeah. that can see through walls. Exactly. Okay. In, but it's called comb. 
Tangle comb. Brilliant. So we've got two abilities from you yeah. now. Brilliant. Now okay, so we've got Tangled and Comb. Come I'm trying to make mine hair related at least, not just Are you projecting he throws on us? his shoe. <laughs> like, come on, I'm putting effort in here. Uh, I need a name for your agent. The Stickman. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> it was such a memorable name. Uh, How could I forget? While these I don't two see are you still... drawing anything. No, because I gave Tom I, my oh, tablet. Oh, you I can have this Fine. Back. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna, I'll, I'll draw on a cue card. Um, in the meantime, just a reminder, we've got an audio issue on stage. League officials no, this are working is the on show. a solution. No, Tom, you haven't finished your homework yet. Uh, <laughs> match one between <laughs> Giant X and Team Liquid is therefore delayed, but we are going to bring it to you as soon as possible. This is what happens when you bring casters onto oh, an analyst I've desk. Got, I've got an ultimate. It breaks the universe. I have an ultimate. Brilliant. Yeah, please well tell done. me. You haven't had a third ability yet, but, but you're going straight to the yeah, ultimate. Yeah, straight to the ultimate. The ultimate is that for a few seconds, or no, for 30 seconds, all the hair disappears and there is a blinding light from the bald head that is shown. And as he walks into any area, anybody who sees him is immediately blind. Does that only work on like outside maps like Breeze or would that work on like Icebox A site as any, well? Anywhere. I've, anywhere. Got, an, I've yeah. got a name for that ability, but I want to know if you've got one for it first. Uh, I do not. Go ahead. We, we can out. Waking out. <laughs> uh, you yeah. could just call it bald boss. And one of the voice, and one of the voice lines could be, "It's a hell raise." It's a no. I messed it up. Hang on. <laughs> Carl, can production cut away from me? <laughs> production, edit that out. production edit that cut out. away from me. Thank to Tom. To me. Bald blinding light. Okay, cool. Bald right. bald 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 blinding light. Okay, right. Light. Production, yeah, I'm ready for you. Okay. Okay. Ready? Okay, go nice. for it. It's a hell raiser. <laughs> no. Okay. No, I, I, I like balding light. Bald, balding, Fine, balding light. Balding balding light. Fine. Yeah. How, how, hair razor could be one of your... Anyway. Hair razor, yeah. Yep. Okay, cool. Come up with some of the voice lines. Voice light. lines? Yeah, we need voice lines. We need a geographic <laughs> thing. Like, I'm, I'm where's getting your loyalties agent from? from this, right? Because I think this idea is going to be stolen. The, the problem yeah, with mine exactly. is I, I'm very uh, cautious about doing any sort of copyright infringement from uh, a, a company that has a very famous movie that has a tree-like character that <laughs> is basically a stick. I actually don't know what movie that is. <laughs> There's some children's book for stick <laughs> characters. Uh, what about um, where you're... Your agents from? Could they be Canadian? <laughs> from the ground. <laughs> from the ground. Are they like? Oh, oh no, I actually literally just realised the stick figure that you're referring to from the comic book universe. Um, only says three words. I'm gonna yes. go with Ireland for no specific reason. Ireland. <laughs> yeah, I mean. An island or no? The no, country. Where the... Mitch Man comes from. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Ireland. But for Ireland. No I thought you said. I... <laughs> Island. <laughs> like, okay. Can but. you um, can you give us a voice line? Can you do the accent? Nope. <laughs> Absolutely no. No, I cannot. Okay. I would need someone from Ireland to do <laughs> that that uh, that accent. Yeah. Ireland. I wouldn't want to offend anyone, you know. Me me doing an Irish accent has never happened before. I would love to hear it though. Well, we'll have to get Mitch Man maybe to <laughs> record some voice lines yeah, yeah, for yeah. you. I could. Well, obviously one of the voice lines can be. That was the luck of the Irish. I, but but what accent would you use for that? Well, I use an Irish accent. Oh, go on then. Then I'm not doing that. <laughs> not, I have I have a half Irish baby and an there Irish you go. husband. So and I spend anything... a lot of time in Ireland, but um. No, I just, just, just do like they're after me lucky charms. Or I something, can only I can only do I can do a, I can do a <laughs> Belfast accent, like a Northern Irish accent. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> the game is not starting now. I like how this has divulged into absolute madness, but. Uh, yeah. You know, it, I, it only took three days. Oh, no. Less than three days. I'm trying to. All right, it's got to be like some sort of hair shield. <laughs> I think we, it's we might be ready. Yeah, it's a there yeah. you go. We we we're gonna hopefully gonna hair. be ready for a, uh, for the teams to walk on in about five minutes time. I've been reliably five, mo five minutes more of this. <laughs> in four. So I I wish I had uh, I, I wish I had chat up right now so I could get people's contributions. I'm gonna have to draw my own. Yeah, I think. I, I, I honestly I think I've smashed this. I uh, like fringe comb. Up. What was the fringe ability? It's a shield. It's a shield. Oh yes, but you Because he took. Shield. Yeah, I got a shield first. So you got Sentinel, and sorry, what? Were you, yours is a duelist. Yeah, mine's yeah. a duelist for sure. Okay, so maybe some kind of controller. Yeah. It's quite hard. Or an initiator. Mine oh. could also be an initiator if you want to take duelist. Yeah, I feel like my ultimate it doesn't really tie into anything to do with the Sentinel at all, but 
I, uh, at this point, I don't really care. You know what? <laughs> I think, no, I'm going to think... do an initiator. Okay. I'm going to do an initiator. Right. And... Oh, it's actually really hard. Yeah, it's almost like I'm trying to keep yeah. keeping these two difficult. under control while I also create yeah. the don't next worry, amazing It's kind of a one-sided assignment, isn't it? Uh, uh, Can we just is, solo is, cam Frankie for the whole this of this? This is my yeah. default, okay. well, I think, for this entire weekend, which is talk about Clove. <laughs> Because <laughs> I haven't heard your in, opinion on Clove yet. Just in general? Yeah, I think about Clove who looks... should play Clove next week. If someone had to well, play Clove... Well, it has Clove... to be Angel. I think that's been widely discussed it as has. an agent you can run in, die, still put smokes down, and then even res yourself if necessary. Well, that's a thing. Do you actually want Angel to res himself and give the other team another ultimate orb. <laughs> <laughs> but he'll be a nice distraction while he's like moving well, around to shout to kill everyone. I think there's other, other abilities in the game that are nice distractions. They're called walls, maybe like harbor. <laughs> Or a fringe, <laughs> or sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, whip, whip his hair back and forth or something. Yeah, exactly. Them. I'm okay. trying to think who would be able to, who who would look. Mo oh, I guess it would just be Mitch. Also, <laughs> Mitch with an Odin being able to see through a wall. But you can't do both at the same time. You said that's true. Mitch That'd would be... need someone else to play my agent, so like that... a sniper spotter or something. Yeah, just, like, just pinging on the ground where the enemies are, and you have to Odin so spam on, on the radar. So basically, we need someone who can't aim. We are ready. Uh, well, we're ready to <laughs> just remind you guys, I should say, of the map veto uh, as we are experiencing the delay. But we are just a few minutes away. In fact, the teams are now able to walk out onto the stage and take the seats. We'll do okay. our final checks, strap everyone in, okay, and then we'll be able to get things under, underway. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> just, in, just in case anything's changed. <laughs> well, well, why don't you just give a TLDR of what to expect for anyone who's just joined us? TLDR is that uh, Lotus Liquid played it last week. GX, we haven't seen Liquid beat Navi on it. Should be interesting to see what happens. Team Liquid, uh, if you want to talk about Icebox. Yeah, I, I think ultimately it's, it's a map for them that didn't look great with their new composition, but they'd been fairly comfortable on it. With the Harbor only time that we've actually seen it played was with Nuke for Giant X. They haven't yep. played with this new roster, and the last time they played it, they won, but it was against Foot when they were running one of the trollest comps ever. It was like a Phoenix Fade Chamber Icebox comp, which just didn't work at all. So we really don't have much data there. I'd say if you're going off pure paper, the first two maps do favor Liquid, but mm -hmm. it, as you said earlier, you can only assume that an insane amount of work must have gone in behind the scenes for I, the side of Giant X. I must say, if it goes to Santo, it's gonna probably go in the favor of Liquid, but... Yeah, Lotus uh, Liquid's kind of doing the same thing that they did uh, last week against Na'Vi. And uh, they've kept, yeah, both teams are actually going to be coming in with that sort of, well, at least on the other side, it's somewhat of a default comp. Like, it's the old, like, Fnatic comp, right? That they were running pretty much all the way through for Giant X. Yeah, I, when I look at this comp and I see the Cypher involved with the Sova and, and the Breach and the Raze, it kind of feels like it's a mismatch of pacing because with the Breach and the Raze, you, you're expecting to go really fast with it, but then you have yeah. a Sova that's a really slow initiator. But the Sova actually combos really well with the Breach because with his drone, you can target stun someone, and that could be the, the goal that they're going for with her. Well, guys, I think we have waited long enough, so let's see who's going to come out on top in this mid-table matchup between Giant X and Team Liquid. Yeah, thank you, Analyst Desk. I know that was a bit of a brutal one there, so unfortunate, really, I was gnawing on some cables. So uh, glad to see that finally affected you. Tried to hit it yesterday, but it happened today. Yeah, it's just a little bit delayed. Yeah. It was like 24 hours. Classic, lag, basically. classic. Yeah. yeah, call it Striker. Anyway, we are about to hop into game. We have kind of covered everything on the desk, but a quick reminder of what we're up for. Lotus to start, Giant X's pick, Icebox then following, and then Ascent third if necessary. Now, Mike, these two teams really need to change narratives, change opinions, get on the board a bit here. This hasn't been a pretty season so far. Yeah, I think call it what it is. It, it's, it's been pretty difficult viewing at times for both of these rosters. Yep. Uh, I, I guess to start with Giant X, now sure. we're looking forward to some sort of that comfort now with Purple establishing himself Absolutely. within the roster and, uh, you know, everything kind of coming to fruition around him. On the side of Liquid... Uh, Don't I choke. Mean, we're basically, we're, we're looking back towards consistency. Yep. And unfortunately, historically, Mm. That's uh, always been an issue for the name, not necessarily these individuals on the stage. Interesting start here, actually. Liquid try and set something up outside of B, but 
Giant X seemed pretty happy to sit in the buy phase for an extra 20 seconds or so, just waiting. Yeah, gonna see what they eventually commit towards, because it does seem rather indifferent, doesn't it? Maybe a little aware of what Liquid might be doing. I don't know if there was any indication early on, but you can see the intent here, right? You can see what they're waiting on. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's Kiko to try and take contact here. Obviously, the, the stun and the paranoia to follow. Enzo nearly played in here. The Sheriff, but just misses the timing. We'll have his recon back up now. Standing ahead. We're going to send out immediately. Yeah, actually, that getting destroyed now. We'll raise the flag for Liquid. Rotation should come through. Yeah, slow and steady progress. So 30 far. 30 seconds left. And contact going to be had. Enzo still fine, not really phased yet. He's been able to find a little bit of safety towards the backside of the site. The first contact's found. It's going to be Purple, it's going to be Cloud, and a good little follow-up here. Nice standing. clear on the site. Giant X looking very robust on this. Yeah, a little late in the day, but perfectly Spike done. Planted. Plants now in, and it's Nats to try and handle five. Pass the test on the first, but a quick trade out for Purpo. A couple of headshots coming through, yeah, but basically unrecoverable at that point. Giant X bide their time. Even here, I think in the space of about five or six seconds, every kill coming through for them. Yeah, interesting to see. I mean, Giant X happy to anticipate that sort of aggression on the pistol round because it's, uh, I wouldn't say it's particularly uncommon, but unorthodox to see such a setup. Mm. Outside of B, Giant X get themselves on the board first at least. Like coming back in. Yeah, yeah, two Guardians. That's your yep. alongside of Vandal here. So it's eyes on Cloud, really. Want to see him keep control of that, make sure that doesn't fall at any juncture. But again, if you look at Liquid here, they're coming in very, very reserved. Only the classics coming out. Um, early progress alt-wise, Purpo. I mean, he had a really good start there. So early work. It's a showstopper. He'll be happy enough with that. Again, looking at Purpo, looking to see how he kind of gels with this roster, how he fits in. We've seen highs and lows, but you give them a little bit of time to acclimatize to the roster, find their footing here. And obviously, let's see how he looks played in a little more. So that young talent certainly has been looking excellent throughout this opening season. I think it has been kind of the talk of the town that, you know, the newcomers, the rookies, um, be interesting to see how well Purpo kind of fits into that as well. But looking like Liquid going for a stack, and it was all a bit of a ruse from Giant X. They, they can take the walk now. They've got pretty much the green light to go towards eight. And again, if you're Liquid, you're just going to try and make a stack out of this. Yeah, Hoodie going to try and dig a little deeper here. Maybe figure out that there's nobody actually positioned up towards heaven as Kiko's. 30 seconds left. Now fully committed towards this rotation. It's a wide open sight for them, Hoodie. Catch a couple of audio cues here now. Yeah, that's nice. Should be fully aware now of what it was. Got to be a little cautious of the flank, obviously, not knowing if they progress. They still have the utility invested on the back lines from Fatinho, so should keep them somewhat safe. But he does need to overdo things here. That's a lovely bit of chip damage towards Kiko. And now it should be par for the course. Hoodie can make these sort of moves. Again, just that ghost outdone by Mystic's positioning. So not exactly the upgrade he was dreaming of, but it's what you're going to get. Yeah, as long as we see these three rifles maintain, you even see in Actually, Purpo swapped over to the Sheriff here to try and go forward, maybe get a couple of more orbs towards the Showstopper. And no hurry for this. He knows that they're going to give it up to the Spike, you oh, know, yeah. if, if possible, right? So it's, can he cost them more? Can he work towards his ult? Uh, well, I mean, another step, yes, but not exactly, you know, the, the maximum reward he could have gone for. Even just going forward and dying, yep. to be honest, getting one more yep. worthwhile in that situation with the three Absolutely. rifles maintained. He's got an extra clean start here to Lotus. And what are we looking for, in your mind, when it comes to Giant X? Because they, we kind of talk about like mid-table teams, right? And I think a lot of people put these two names somewhere toward that. Are you looking to see how maybe Purpose fitting into the roster? Is that going to be enough of a solution? Yeah, sure. but yeah like I said, top, top of the map here, for me, it, it's just about comfort levels. Obviously, mm -hmm. having, I don't want to say forced to make such a roster change, but mm -hmm. also with some of these role switch-ups, that's the key thing for me. People slipping onto different agents, picking up different roles or, or different positions on certain maps. It's the comfort factor for me. Questions that do come about with a roster change, and obviously it is more noticeable when it's, it's somebody picking up the reins on the duelist, tend to be the front runner for the team. Now, this looks far more committed than the previous round, where it was just a simple test here. Purpo trying to be the first in, but Mystic manhandling both Redgar and Purpo gone. They're going to lose a lot of that punch to the front line now. Oh, and it's quick work from Mystic. 
Feeling confident today, and rightly so. Bonus round, not looking so likely now. An ace could be on the cards, and he's up for it. The turret not even going to be in question. Beautifully done by Mystic. A big start for him. Looking sharp today. We're clean for the first two, but Mystic showing a bit of his own prowess here. Beautiful Oof. opening. I mean, the shot to Klaus. Come on now, what's I thought that? he was already on top of the box there to catch yeah. that one. Lovely. The first round, he has a rifle in his hands. I think he said, lovely round, Yeah, Giants. lovely round. Uh, I can't wait until I yes. see you again. Let's play round four. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the riot voiceover at the grenade. end that comes on the subtitles. <laughs> okay, so a little bit of a different start now for Giant X. Enough of that kind of C lean didn't really work out. First roll by round for them, and again, Purple only two away from that ult. So that could be on the horizon. Now, Mystic the one to get his first and foremost, but not particularly something that's going to be game changing. Enzo! That's got to be straight through the wall there. I'm curious, actually, if even that's on the back of a, a Darth to take that space, because there's no challenge coming forwards towards Rubble. So just walking up ADS here with the Odin. They have Kiko in support, but he will now slip away towards B. As Giants, uh, Spike not committed just yet, still trying to poke and prod around oh. the map, and Enzo's found a second again. Mitch is fuming that none of these kills have been caught. He's furious. Oh, hopefully we'll be able to see the replay on the second one, because again, look yeah. at where the death marker is. Yep. Instead of wallbanging the kill feed, but I oh, that's just a wide swing by Enzo. Oh, and they've lost out on so much here. Well, they lose a, a ton of map control off, off, off losing the, the, the double lurk, but being the killjoy and the viper as well. Yeah, Kigo spotted them. That's the paranoia triggered. Mystic already here 30 as well. Got to be left. cautious, though. Doesn't want to give them a chance. Keep in mind, three of them can still do some serious damage. And Purple's actually slipped ahead. Kigo with a fantastic bailout. Good trade remaining. for Redgar, but again, Liquid have this on wraps. Keeping control of those extremities means this map feels so small. So few options for Giant X in this round. And Cloud now with 10 seconds. I mean, the door's shut here. 10 seconds left. He's yeah, just going to try and hold on to this rifle. Liquid looking to punish a little further. I think Cloud is going to be noted on the retreat here. And not enough time, I think, even here. Three seconds ticking away. Oh, oh, oh good. Cloud. It went for now. a challenge, yeah. Easy, Tiger. So said there, was, there was no way they were catching him there. The other way back through. Yeah, first here, just blind Straight spam. Okay, the second's pretty unfortunate. Oh, Nothing actually, no, shoulder, well, yeah, okay, at least, yeah. yeah, it's shoulders onto the angle. Oh, I mean, it would have been pretty unfortunate yeah, if it was just another been. blind spam, but yeah, I mean, at that point, that sort of round, that slow burn, there's not a lot of options because you remove basically both question marks. There's no flank utility mm -hmm. and also then no kind of denial of information behind this wall over towards eight. So Ace change here, though. Yeah. Uh, Hoodie. Real clean with that. Kiko's not going to be happy losing his head early, but. The vast majority of Giant X was still eyeing up. Dealing with what's in front of them here on that B site. They've taken the space, they might be able to get a plant. Just with this all on top, securing at least one side of these approaches. Just Yampy. a tag, though. Maybe just a tag for 4HP. Lucky to get away with his life here. Spam coming through once again for Enzo. No connection just yet, but Burpo will fall now. But Cloud doubles up. And that's a mystic. What do you do here? Mystic go and walkabouts, but it's a long old route, and I don't think Nats is all that fussed. I think they're going to have to relinquish this one. Giant X, I mean, yeah, the ult on top of that fabulous shot to start with, alleviating some of the pressure on the extremities, working wonders, converting this round back. Liquid won't be happy with this. No, definitely not. And with what was brought into this round, shows that we're not necessarily Pretty. finding. A kill, but enough damage. It's a thrifty conversion here for Giant X. Mystic and Nats will hold on to their rifles, as said, but again, funds still there or thereabouts for Liquid behind this purchase. I think Kiko toying with the idea of an operator, actually. Yeah, it's, the, it's the response here from Cloud, really, that shuts that down. You see the hero rifle carried across from the previous. See if maybe Giant X can keep this up now going into the natural buy. Obviously, plenty of upgrades are available after that last <laughs> round. 
And uh, yeah, I hoodie, guess fight fire with fire. Yeah, Hoodie's a little pissed about getting spammed out on? previously, so looking to catch the uh, the angle on the, the spam the other side. Very slow early rounds coming out from Giant X, so the only real pace change we've seen was round three where Mystic was able to find that ace over on C site. They have been somewhat testing B now. I feel as though that's been kind of upped in the priority list, but Yampi ready to try and slow them if they can, but I think you're right though, it's the lack of commitment, right? The, the spike still left by Spawn, still testing on the extremities. Ugh. I've just got to be a little bit careful here, because it looks like they want to take that space back. Yeah, I mean, they definitely do. With, obviously, the Omen and the Breach, in terms of these lanes, they become very, very awkward. When you look at the utility available for Liquid, which may be why Giant X are uh, kind of tiptoeing around the map, maybe. Got to be careful that's required, but oh. yeah, Enzo definitely going to get overwhelmed here with the Odin. Good for one, but look at the rotations. Already going to have two players here after that. Clear on B. One post towards backside, one a little closer, that being Nats. Left. Can't really back away from this as an issue yet. The ult denying any audio, so Cloud going to take that opportunity to close the gap. Mystic did manage to make it out of dodge, but Cloud going to hold the ground here. The plant is now in. 4v3, Kiko, Yampi and Mystic going to try and play this one back through. Keeping a little bit of a mind towards Yampi's no. positioning, but it's Red Guard to isolate Mystic. Trade comes in, and now we're down to a 2v3. Make it a 2v2. Nice attempt from Kiko, but now it's all on Yampi. One right, one left. A fair fight on the first. What is that now, time looking at? Yeah, not him. <laughs> Fatinho, though, eyes on the prize. Giant X stabilize here and get another on the board. A little bizarre to see Liquid after the Nightfall, kind of half in, half out. Mystic obviously retreats all the way up into the smoke in heaven. I'm sure if Nats maybe thinks there's a smaller window here, or he's, he's expecting something to push through the cage, because then Mystic's stuck inside a smoke. She a little curious. That's where maybe that's a, a frantic communication in, in the moment. Well, it's interesting, because we're seeing that operator coming out now, something you're saying that's been kind of considered gone. previous, now committed to. Keep opting for that. So a very different look here now, kind of indicating the early presence from Enzo. That's not a surprise. That's been what we've been noting thus far. But again, Giant X, I, I think you said it very well in that previous round that we are seeing them taking this very passive Watching default here. approach. Try and deal with extremities. But again, you are starting to see pressure now from Liquid. Look at this, both sides of the map, Mike. We've got Mound and Rubble Control being fought for. Kiko on a real knife's edge. And Purpose found success on B. Almost a nightmare now scenario for Team Liquid. Yeah, because... I mean, posted up this deep, only one satchel left. And you know, as soon, as soon as he yeah. shows this operator, there's going to be a second player swinging onto this. Oh, so diligent. Love to see Giant X still hitting that protocol list. That's, yeah, very disciplined from Kiko to give this up. No second shot at it. Red Guard. Isolated on the TP. Again. Oh, to look to try and pressure the back lines here, but Mystic, actually, I'm just you're going to come through and connect as well. So much information free flowing. Liquid levying that early damage so well. That was beautiful, Lauren. Enzo working that like an absolute champion, teeing up Mystic to build off the back through the small door. That was a bailout from Enzo there, because that looked like Giant X could have then potentially flooded the site. Absolutely, yeah, and you're absolutely right to know the Hunter's Fury, because they either sit and tank this, or they move into Mystic, or they swing out into the open outside rubble. There's, there's no correct answer here in the moment for Giant X. One enemy remaining. Really well handled by Liquid. Lovely. Again, Red Guard, tough. I mean, I love the reaction to try and get into the back lines. You know that it's a deeper setup towards Rubble, maybe reading one, potentially two people. But he's just out in the open. He's not tucked into drop there. And it gets punished before any pressure's really mounted on Liquid. And I, and I kind of like the, I, I guess the conditioning Liquid are doing. You're burning a lot of that early utility. But Giant X, if they do want to try and clear these spaces, now we've seen it. I don't know if they've noted the, the mount control that was considered last round, because we saw them go for it, but I don't know if Giant X really actually explored that option. So again, to clear, even just this part, it's either a body on the line or it's utility. I love this now. They're trying to bait them onto Hoodie. this angle with the Odin. I think maybe not expecting. The operator was there previously, but there was no spam, so they're almost trying to bait them in on the previous round, and here, baiting them in with the Odin. A little surprising, yeah. though, because Enzo was still showing utility in the last round. There was still Absolutely, yeah. that presence of mind. I'm, I'm a little surprised, but regardless, you're going to take it every day of the week if you're Kiko. You're happy with that. That was a perfect set trap. And now an exchange of space. C taken over, but the rest of the map now under the Liquid Banner. They Five should planted. note this is going to be all in. Door on the swing, and it's going to be Kiko on the look. 
Does he spot anything out of place? No one having a little bit of a glance. You could see the temptation maybe for Cloud there, but again, Pain Shell starts to come through now. The pressure needs to start mounting, and soon. Fatinho is the one to dig out first, but he's playing so deep this. Actually, Boombot here to clear him as well. Okay, they know he's there, but he's his presence alone is still an issue. Look at the time being purchased. Spike's starting to tick a little quicker. They've got to get a move on, and Liquid aren't getting the access they want at all. Good damage, but they've got to go fast here. Fantastic discipline from Kiko to hold that. And they're clearing the time. Keep it in mind. Oh, my God. There's no time left, but you saw how close that was. A nice attempt, but Giant X holding on long enough there. A little bizarre to see. I'm not sure if they were waiting on a cooldown, maybe of something, uh, a piece of utility that was crucial. Obviously, no, the, I think the paranoia is synced with the recon sent back through here. Obviously, the two pieces of utility in question being the dart and the fault line, but a beautiful retake, really well constructed. But yeah. like you said, you can just hear the spike ticking away. I think the penny drops way too late for Liquid. Yeah, credit where credit's due, but I mean, Giant X didn't really have to do anything there. Rounds around. Kind of put a little bit of uh, credit as well towards Fatinio, just kind of playing his life so well at that point, because you are going to be committing players trying to clear that back line. It's going to be a nuisance. But a pace change and a gear shift straight in towards B, and that's he got revealed, but he still gets away with it. Kiko, the one to claim the kill, but still, his position paramount. And now they've lost out on purpose. So the space can't be taken, it can't be followed back up on. And a quick pivot potentially, but it's an isolated affair. Spike M will spot Cloud as well. Gotta be cautious. Mystic now tasked. <laughs> Holding down Rubble. He's in a tough spot here. If anybody wide swings onto this, I mean, we have to TP away. Paranoia will slow things down. Again, Rolling Thunder and Paranoia burnt up here, where it's looking like Giant X are going to find themselves potentially a 4v1, 4v2, maybe if Nats preemptively heads towards C. And two massive tools for the retake. Yeah, and I think, again, the uh, timing, the lack of presence is starting to kind of build suspicion for Team Liquid. Already going to put left. two players at least leaning a little close towards that seaside. It will be Kiko to deal with all of it. And the operator got switched out. It's going to be Yampi this round to hold it, so it's just him on the rifle. Going to have a spot from Mystic, but yeah, they yeah, can't really do much. There's a pit to work with as well. But can throw this in, yeah. This is a quick clear. That's very hard to handle. Cloud with a freebie on towards Nats, it looked like. And straight on in, though. One player just flying on past Kiko. How has no one called How this? How has it? no one called that? It was seen. He's got Spike. What? This, He's outside the pit here. This could be a huge problem, and it's all going topsy-turvy. They are locked into their own prison. They don't even know it. And Yampi goes walking in. It's all on Hoodie in a 1v3. Yes, he finds the first. No and the way. second. No Does way. he save them in this nightmare round? Yampi waiting, and he strikes. And the timing this time is fine. The fuse should be there. But what a round, Mike. That was all over the place. I, I mean, I, I hate to assume, but I've already talked about kind of chaotic comms and maybe things not being relayed in the moment. Uh, that is one of the, the best examples you ever see. Kiko is caught, sattling through the top side here, and he gets two kills in the back line. Outside the pit, gets control of where the spike is planted. And don't get me wrong, there was obviously Cloud's ult on top, so that did remove the audio cues, but it was seen. If no one's even looking that direction, there's a problem, right? It's It's... Real issues there, and that's a timeout. That's a giant X. Hit the brakes. What is going on? I oh, coach cam might be a little rough around the edges after that round. Not necessarily. I mean, the trade back and forth is is what's concerning here. Neither team able to stabilize. We've seen kind of fumbles on both sides now. Yeah. Over on C site. As well, this obviously is a byproduct. I think of the form that we are seeing currently for both Liquid and Giant X. I'm curious to see what the adjustment is, whether or not now feeling as if they do have a bit of freedom towards Rubble or an ability to maybe take that space away from Liquid. Operator's still here, Odin's still in hand for Enzo, so mm. you'll see it leans in their favor in terms of what we've seen so far on that side of the map. Yeah, I, again, you look, look back at the start of some of these rounds and where the spike isn't committed. You know that Giants are just trying to probe on both sides of the map, and Liquid aren't really nibbling, to be honest. They're not biting the bait. 
No, it's actually been very well done. A lot of faith put into the utility, of course. That certainly helps having just, you know, again, a couple of deep pieces of utility that kind of generally, I guess, imply commitment. That didn't even get tested over towards C until very late in the game, obviously. But still, you're absolutely on the money. Now, this time Enzo, because he is soloing the site, is going to respect this. Any show of force early on doesn't, it just doesn't get to be able to do the spam he was doing before. But, so Yampy's coming on over. Classics rattling off a couple of shots, but is that Sheriff? A lot of respect shown here from yep. Liquid. Happy to give up the plant here on what is going to be a lesser purchase. You just don't want it to be messy, really, if you're, if you're a team up against a buy like this. Now, Giant X have actually got themselves a plant. I mean, this paranoia, if he gets the right timing on it, could be very valuable, but just walks in. And that's going to find Redgar very clean. Follow up towards Cloud. No naughtiness here. No allowance for it. And in reality, they're being cleared very cleanly. This is a good look for Liquid. Clean, concise rounds. Boxed up and package Liquid. Nice succession here, getting up to five Flawless. and tying up the scoreline. Yeah, we'd say that again, considering how these rounds have gone, tying up the scoreline at 5-5. Five, five. Giant X still in this half. Chance to maybe recover in the final two. Need a round win, though, here to protect the economy for the next. And Redgar and Cloud just trying to get something done. And as soon as the neural theft comes through here, one enemy remaining. All but wraps for Giant X. So stoppers on both sides here. Kiko and right Purple an opportunity. Out. To invest here, but yeah, look at it. We might have a brawl for it here. Yeah, this could be a nice fight. Kiko instantly cleared by Red Guard. Now there might be right an, there. a little bit of an issue on this. Yampi somewhat committed. Can't really back away, has to fight his way out. But fortunately for him, he's got Enzo, but yeah, that Cloud, stunning standing. work with three. Enzo, Yampi, and Mystic all just get deleted in a heartbeat. Now they're going to assume Nats is on the other side of the map. Right? Surely. They certainly do, but it is Nats, of all the players. But there's bodies. Oh. All good. I mean, you know, Cloud nearly a lineup, yeah. Got a little, little nervy, all good. Good answer back from Giant X there. Pace change really suiting Giants, uh, but uh, at the same time, Liquid kind of get caught into a weird commitment to this hold that, uh, I mean, here, Yampi's swinging with an operator wow. from behind. Nice, nice! Yeah, very strange, but like you said, can't really fault the reaction there from Giant X to just scale up immediately and punish that. Again, I think about the information they have previously. It's it's one, maybe two people. So this much of an investment behind a rubble hold immediately destroyed there. And I um, mean, the pace will continue here if we do see commitment towards C. Yeah, Nats needs to get out of the site here. No point trying to hold on to that. This will be under the banner of Giant X, and they should get themselves in a very comfortable post plant position as well. Quite like what Pearl's oh. doing. The timing! He's caught Nats! And he's Got sticking around. As well. Yeah, nice work from him. Support from Fatinio as well. It's not an isolated effort anymore. Going to post up the Night 4 as well, just going to secure all that space. Doesn't note a player, so again, allows them this freedom to take over Waterfall. And the last two players, I don't know what you're meant to do, really. Not an easy scenario to try and clear. Oh, just yeah. so Jeez. many late pieces of util. Yeah. To slow things down, make it even harder for Mystic and Yampiu. Just have to sit back and let this one conclude itself, to be honest. A goal will find one. Yampi next on the chopping block. Yeah. Andalusia wow. flawless to close out the half. It's 7-5 for Giant X, which, like I said, close your eyes, cover the top of the screen. You probably wouldn't feel like that's how the half went. No, but yeah, the, the pace change, a little bit of a gear shift. It looked like it completely just stunned Liquid. And I love this commitment through towards Waterfall. And it wasn't just Purple. You had Fatino there by his side. Really good look on that. So closing out in a nice flawless round. Going to keep that confidence rather, rather high. But again, it, it has been a bit of a back and forth affair. But on the side swap here, Mike, what are we looking for for Liquid on the attack? And what are we kind of eyeing up for Giant X? Uh, I mean, Kiko's already stretching his legs a little bit in the first half here. He's going to be the power player for Liquid, obviously, in the second. See Enzo and Yampi, how they can set him up, put him in motion to continue delivering here. I'm looking at the minimap. It might just be a straight play towards B here for Liquid. I mean, no, con no presence shown on the other side, but yeah, wide open B side. Liquid able to thread the needle, find that. 
Now, my curiosity down the line will kind of lean towards Nats and what he can do there, but beyond that, they have it's getting weird. Where's the spike going? It's getting really Where's the spike weird. Going? Why is the spike there? Down. Defender spawn. You had B. That wasn't enough. I right. Mean, maybe not feeling safe with the pressure from the door outside C and that pressure coming through from Mound, but now wow. Spike ends up in the uh, defender's spawn. Don't see that very often. No, and um, Cloud should get a reward here, I'm pretty sure. Oh, yep. That's that. Standing. Gone, Enzo gone, and that's going to be Liquid kicking themselves. Um, didn't love that, Mike, if I'm honest. No, I, like I said, I, I think that this is just absolute paranoia that there's going to be a flank coming through. They're going to get shot in the back and concede basically the spike at the point they tried to plant it on B. But I it's mean, just there's, the logic. Yeah, there's, just... there's, 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 I mean, I, I understand the logic, but it, again, stand and, and handle the flank. Commit to sure. one side or the other. This this almost seems like a roll of the dice to get the spike off site through fear of losing it. And, and again, it's like in my mind, logical Life steps being the fact that you haven't had any contact towards B. Yes, you'd you'd maybe consider the extremities, but also there's a as every other chance they're sitting deep towards CT, waiting to play back in towards B. You know, it's it's again walking into that potential blender felt like too much of a risk for too little of a reward. So I won't be happy with that. But again, we move on, we shift forwards, and they're gonna have to suffer through this round as well, considering how clean that was. And Giant X, who've already got themselves Guardians galore. Let's see if Liquid can pay, you know, maybe get a plant, get involved a little. Tap yeah. the spike, obviously, we'll draw out the spam. Already four members of Giant X here, though. I'm trying to deny that as best they can. The swing on from Hoodie and Cloud is perfect. Oh, wow. Yeah, Down nice. Eight. And the cleanup One duty here. Happy will find a consolation, but Hoodie will find four on the round. Big. Giant X, beautiful conversion after, what, back-to-back -back flawless is really... Yep. The first one to set things in motion here for the second half, and they could already start on the back foot. Really tough now. Lose this, double digits for Giant X, upgrades come through. Yep. Do you have a little pocket play maybe for Giant X in this round in the bonus? Anything to be, you know, offsetting Liquid? I, I'm waiting to see. It, it looks like there's a stack and it looks like Liquid are on the other side. So this could be a bit deadly. Now, generally, Enzo has gone through the protocol list of clearing this, but the timing on this could be pretty important. And Cloud is unaffected and played in oh, just no. perfectly. Cloud just bringing down pain. Giant X couldn't ask for a better start. They looked so well prepared for this. A commitment of four players towards this as well. Cloud able to punish. And they still have someone on this side. Yeah, I'm walking into the Killjoy setup now. You know, gonna set off the Molly here and still find a kill, Enzo. Spike down A. Caught out here, Spike has to be retrieved now, but already the reinforcements are here, Lauren. They're running low on numbers. Yampi needs to get this plant in, or maybe a pick if possible. If you're being honest, they need to get a couple of kills. And Fatinho's not having it, not allowing it. It's all on Nats with four HP and four to find. Can't even commit one HP per player. Yeah, this round is wraps. I don't even know if he can survive in this. They've got a I mean, three th up, two upgrades. Yeah, 30 seconds. There's plenty of time to hunt him down as well. 30 seconds left. So, again, they've all now got a, well, they've got another rifle now out of this. It's just Purpo, who's on that Guardian. <laughs> yeah. That's going to try and find some damage to the economy, but nah, when we get the happen. first hoodie. Another kill, double digits on the board. He's encroaching on the Viper's Pit as well mm -hmm. here. Giant X looking way more decisive on the second half of Lotus. And uh, Liquid struggling to really get on the board. Yeah, this early stack, I mean, Cloud being completely unaffected, it couldn't have gone better. It, yeah, it I mean, they're not caught by the fault line, not spotted by the yep. drone coming through, just sits under this one way. Nice. This is your what? It's my sight, I think. I must, yeah. <laughs> I love, I, I love, if I they love can how, swear, can I swear? I love how it's like censored completely off the I know, as well. I, it's, it's like, why I want those like buzzers, you know what I mean? But it just does it incredibly wrong. Like if we could just bleep things out, but just completely miss it, I'd be, I'd be wildly happy. Um, and someone who's not gonna be wildly happy is uh, the people on your screen right here. Um, couldn't ask for a worse start. You've got three rounds, right? You're struggling. It's going to be rough. 
So Liquid have got to come up with a solution here. Uh, it, for Giant X, they're going to be over the moon. Again, close out strong, and then you've got that nice beginning, clean work, and it felt like Liquid were red in that round. Again, yeah, a little bit of, you know... Oh, oh, oh. You know what? Yeah, I've had a lovely we're update, Michael. Michael. We're, yeah, we're transitioning oh, into... Oh, uh, good. The stage has gone oh, red. Thanks, thanks, audience. Yeah, the, the, Sorry. The crowd are on their feet. <laughs> hey, look. I saw a couple of beers earlier. At this point, I might start <laughs> nipping down what, there and stage? grabbing one. Is that, is that a tech pause? Oh, it might be. <laughs> it might uh. <laughs> but, uh, Once we know an ETA here, we will let you know. But I yeah, absolutely agree with you. I, I, I think Liquid, yeah. uh, particularly towards the end of the first half, like I said, it, uh, there was very little separating them. A couple of fumbles on both sides of the coin. Yeah. But uh, the second half, unfortunately, that sort of scoreline. Giant X find themselves starting on the right foot. And now uh, it's just a very small window. But it, yeah. it comes down to basically one by round until you concede a map point and... Oh, it compounds a problem, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, you're up against it for seven rounds then. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, we wait and see. Hopefully we can find out what the tech cause is. Then we can speculate on it some more. I reckon audio issue for Liquid. I reckon inside it's come back around. Yeah. No, it's not inside, it's just what happened earlier. But they all have headsets on, so I don't know. Because like, normally you can kind of tell who it is, who has like, the headset off, you see the admin start getting closer towards them. But no admins closed in. Cloud's having a nap. Cloud's having a nap, yeah. I mean, that's the... That's that's the method. So what's and nobody's, nobody's scrambling. Yeah, and that's... That's even more worrying. I didn't yeah, want to, that, I didn't want no, to say it. I know, because like, uh, we could deal with like, oh, my inners aren't working right. But I, I still feel like it's a liquid problem. I don't know why. They just seem the guilty sort. You know what I mean? Yeah, they just had confirmation. It is the same audio issue <laughs> from earlier on. So <laughs> Is it? Once we have an ETA, we'll get back to you. Well, fortunately, um, the analyst desk really ran through the content, so... Phew. Yeah, I, I mean, watching that earlier, I almost forgot there was a game. I was I was enthralled. I was just tucked in here. I was I happy Cozy. to watch the show, yeah. Yeah, it was really nice. It's been a minute since we've had a tech pause. Like an extended... Yeah, well, an extended... Chat. Yeah, yeah we like, like a, pause, boom, go. Yeah, yeah, like fake tech pauses. Yeah, like yeah, start they're, second they're half, real. somebody's, they're somebody's real. spilt their water. Yeah, yeah, it's not it's not a, a fun one, but this, it, this could be. Strap yourselves in. <laughs> yeah, Mike, how you been? Good, yeah, I'm, I'm getting conscious. I, I do have a flight this evening, so... Do you? Yeah. Oh, that's risky. Yeah. You've rolled the dice I've rolled like the that. dice, yeah. Well, that's unlucky, isn't I'm, it? Again... What time is it now? Oh. I don't want to look at the no, clock. No, let me, let let's, me let's, have a check. Let's, 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 let's hide let's have all a check. clocks in oh, the building. 6pm. We're pushing it. We're pushing it. Wow. I. It's going to be like those 90s rom-coms, you know, where they're like trying to speed to the airport to catch them before they fly. Well, good luck, mate. I'm sure it'll be fine. Can we let him know on stage? Uh, do you think that would help? My like, boys, can you just fix it up? Mike's got a flight. He'd really like to catch it. Yeah, I'm sure they'll rebook you in the morning, mate. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> <sighs> At this point, I might have to check in Sliggy's chat, see how he's doing. Has he already just left, and left his chair there? That's what he normally we does. Chair stream. Well, normally, once the work starts, you know when co-streamers have to actually say something, they leave. Well, you know, like breaks. Yeah. Yeah, 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 no, they just nip on out. Smart. Hydration I wish I could break do it. or something. Oh, the Some classic. Weird excuse. But it's got to be a sub goal, so you've got to milk the money too. Classic approach. Not Sliggy. He's, you know. But if you do have Amazon Prime, Sliggy, you know, always welcoming. Um, I'm actually going to check Sliggy's stream, see if there is actually a chair there, because otherwise it's, you know, wild flame. Can't be doing that to him. Whew, how's it looking? Are you any updates there, uh, Michael? Uh, yes. So hopefully we should be heading back in shortly. Um, I know what the issue is. I'm not going to tell you. It's, uh, it's a secret. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. My lips are sealed. I think but you, uh, out it. Suppo out supposedly, it. we're heading back in very shortly. I'm seeing mm. mouses moving now. Mouses? Okay. Mice? Mouses. Mouses. Okay, well... Yeah, people starting to move around in-game again, so usually a good indicator we should be heading back in. And also, Sliggy's in his chair, so the content's coming. So we should be good. Just had a quick check. Oh, so he knows when we're coming off. Yeah, yeah, obviously. Well, coaches are like coaches, right? Yeah. So he gets the inside he's still, info. He's still wired into Bacon, I guess. <laughs> bacon is actually just his shadow government. Yes. It's, it's yes. actually still Sliggy. Bacon's just an imposter with just an bacon, earpiece bacon's in. Bacon's not just real. <laughs> <laughs> relaying everything. Just like Jackson and Jessica. Yes. We're not real. Neither is Bacon. Just an extension of Sliggy. Um, yeah, as I said, everyone's a bit... Oh, what's this? What's he got there? That looks like the hand warmers, I think. 
I might be making that it's up. It's headphone case. Oh, is it? Or earphone I couldn't case, really see. sorry. Open it again. Is he implying that's... Well, no, because it was liquid side, wasn't it? Well, I'm, what now, they, I'm, what now, they I'm, have one? now I'm feeling like I've been lied to. I've heard it might be going into a timeout as well, so we really extend it. People started moving in the lobby. <laughs> and they stopped. Now they've stopped. But I think they're going into a liquid timeout. Didn't liquid just call a timeout a minute ago? Well, no, that was a tech timeout. <laughs> so, again there, thank you. Thank you. The crowd goes mild for a team liquid timeout. Love that. Do you know what? Shout out to you guys. Uh, you're pulling your weight here. Um, but it is just normal time out now, hopefully, for Liquid. Oh, music change as well. Yeah, yeah, really, tempo's really yeah. shifted here. Back in now. Yeah, tempo shift from production. Um. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it should, but, uh, well, know, lots, it should be good. Lots to consider from, right. from this time Talk out. Like to I said, me. Talk it, to it, me. It, it comes down to, uh, I mean, on a nice edge, really, there's looking like we're going to have investment from Liquid. Mm. Come through here in round four, the second half, and that does make it... Uh, I, I guess, yeah, if you want to hedge your bets and, and, and try and make a go of things here. Like I said, with a 7-5 scoreline, you lose pistol, the follow-up, and then the bonus. It's a really awkward position to be in. It's severely unpleasant. Okay, seems as though they are happy. Oh, clap of the hands. There we go. Mm, I don't know if that was a good one. You know what I mean? Just like that. Well, you know, uh, it's yeah, like you're about to leave for an evening. Just like the slap on the legs. Right, Kiko's going to be bringing in a, a sheriff and it's, it's guardians to round out. But uh, again, really the... Concern being what lies behind this purchase. Well, not a great deal, I believe, is the current standing. But thankfully, we are back underway. There we go. Oh, good. Didn't have to really lean on the fill, so we're fine. Um, now, hopefully, Liquid, after their several timeouts, one for actual tactical purposes, it actually has value for them here because they need a bit of something because it's been a little bit sparse. Coming through after the end and the start of this, at least on the half. Again, early looks towards rubble. But those guardians are no subtlety. And no, we know the economy is not sitting comfortably here, but... I think once Giant Next hear this as well... Oh, yeah, we'll spot the shoulder. Oh! Enzo Anyone? with Carpin down, down the second. Feet. Could have been nice, that. And like I said, yeah, once you hear a couple left. of these guardians ring out, obviously... Oh, uh, that's... Wow, this... Oh. <laughs> oh, ladies and gents, we are in for a ride today. Yeah, okay, quick update. One, I've, I've been told production, the next round's on them if they get another tech pause. Yeah. Which is crazy. That's so, so nice of you, production, to be doing that. I think we might have a lobby remake. Uh, yeah, so... <laughs> um, it's looking us. like we might have a repeat of the same issue. I'm not sure if that carried across into mm. the round, but uh, once we do have official word in, obviously we'll let you know. Yeah. Obviously, nobody wants to be stuck with a red stage for too long. But here we are. Here we are. Just checking the time. It's gone six now. Don't be yawning, Enzo. Don't be yawning. So, yeah, official word, we are going to replay the round. Apparently, the audio yep. issue did carry across into the start of that round. Um, obviously, that's the official wording. So, just got to wait for obviously the lobby to be remade. So, you might be stuck with us for a little longer. Yeah. This thing start to dry up now. <laughs> in terms of conversation. Well, Michael, I feel as though we can talk to each other normally outside of game as well. Oh, yeah, no. No, I mean... Oh, I'm... you were, like, looking at game-centric yes, yes, conversation. No, yeah. there's nothing to be talked about here. Um, yeah, I think I think that one's kind of wrapped, so I guess we divert, right? Yes. You packed. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> you know me. You know me by now. <laughs> Oh dear. Which is why I'm worried. <laughs> I was about to say, you need a nice little hour to get yeah. your stuff shuffled together. Right. Well, yeah, usually it's Mitch that bails me out of this sort Mitch of situation. Mitch has helped good, you before. Good story that, for, but for another well, time. We could. No, it's for another time. Yeah, I don't want to spoil here. Well, once we obviously get our podcast going, we'll, you know, we'll divulge that information. Um, yeah, no, I mean, well, you could always start talking about Icebox if you want. I'm, cl I'm clutching the straws, but you're bringing me nothing. I was going to say, there's very few times I ever want to talk about Icebox, <laughs> to be Can honest with you. Can they get out of the map pool already? Uh, well, please. I, please. I never thought I'd say I miss what Haven. You, about, I, I'd say it every day of the week. I miss her terribly. Um, Do you miss Pearl? Anyway, we're ready to yeah, go. thank God. <laughs> what good timing yeah. to get back into Lotus here. Yeah, let's not discuss maps. So do pick things up. Obviously, scoreline at 10 at 5 still. Obviously... 
Oh, we're back in Liquid in a similar position in terms of the purchase. And we'll uh, see how it goes this time around. Different setup this time around, though. Got Giant X. Here. Looking to try and deny some of this space outside B. Mm. Again, Fatinho on his site, as he calls it. His what site? His site. Beep. Okay, it's a very similar beginning, if I'm honest, yes, as well. Yes, yeah. Very, very similar. Purpo not going to get the same reward, but patience being shown on the other side this time. I thought maybe, yeah, but Purpo obviously catching Enzo shouldering in the previous, but it looks as if Giant X were going to be very proactive outside B here, but maybe just reinforcing that hole. The trade will come through, though. Mystic and Patino finding kills. I felt like it was potentially blind as well. I don't know how much information they were able to see on each other with that. Like the wall covering it off, but kind of trading out omens. And looking like they want to kind of imply they're leaning back towards B with the Aldrone coming in from Enzo, but we can see where they're heading. Heading over. Yeah, that's going to be Hoodie. Yeah. Seeing on this one. He can maybe get one and back away. Let's see what he can get from here. Good stall. The but two have slipped down. through. So, Sight is going to be pressured now, Hoodie. It's got to be good for it. Yeah, gets his one, gets away. That's all he needed to do, particularly. As Nats, Enzo, and Yambi still trying to at least secure some safety left. for this plant, but it doesn't feel comfortable yet. And you can see why. Straight back in, they want the fight. Purpo gonna find one, the trades are there, and Hoodie stays alive, stays standing, as was Cloud, but it's 11 for Giant X now. And you were worried what was behind this purchase. Yeah, looking at a similar situation, you only really get the same purchase again. Looking as if Liquid might just commit towards it, try and get a, yeah. Try and get a rifle, a proper rifle, at least in the hands of Kiko. Let's try and be the difference maker here. It's giant X. Four in a row. <laughs> Liquid, you and if you laugh. hadn't, if you hadn't had you enough. You having a laugh. Liquid. What do you reckon this one's for? Check on the audio issue, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, are you hear absolutely me? sure you can hear me? Because because it didn't seem like you did. Production are panicking, so they think we're serious. We're not serious, don't worry. You guys are going to be like, no, it's a real one. I promise you. No, it's fine. It's all, it's all good. We're, we're... Uh, I mean, obviously, fundamentally, the last few yeah. rounds, there's been something that, uh, I mean, from the sidelines, they've picked up on that maybe they still feel there's a chance to fix it. I mean, have a laugh about it. Bit of internal discussion down on the stage as well. Yeah, nuts. Having a chat. I imagine that's with, is it Mystic next to him? Yeah. But, again, I don't really know the conclusion they're going to come to on this. I want to see if there's any no, tangible I mean, adjustments. The, the, yeah, the other side of this being as well, you're not on a full purchase, so it's not one of those rounds that you can really scrutinize in terms of uh, how it plays out, unless there's just a massive miscommunication or, 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 yeah. or something else that's happening. At least you don't take too much stock, especially when you're kind of up against the ropes and yeah. a scoreline like there. this. and. Bringing Guardians in again. <sighs> Only the neural theft to invest here. The others aren't close enough that you could bank on either. So early no. contact made, and you can see the response is quite swift. Liquid, are you walking to a blender though, Mike? Yeah, nice adjustment here from Giant X to actually force them into Patino's setup. Kiko actually, yeah, bearing the brunt of that. Down to 61 already. Patino now will concede. One kill, we'll give him the lockdown here. Okay, now, last time around, they focused on trying to fight towards Waterfall and take that space away. Excuse me, that was Giant X doing it, but already Liquid seemed to be more dedicated towards the site, and they've been cleared out, isolated. The two trying to be tucked towards CT, tucked towards Waterfall, get cleared in a heartbeat. It's Mystic, Nats, and Kiko trying to, like, push back up, try and be proactive in the post plot and bring it down to a 2v2. Fatinho's still standing, and I've heard pretty recently one of these was his site, but this time it's going to be Cloud to confirm this. That's 12. And once again, Liquid struggling to get across that line. Yes, it was closer, Mike, Team but still eight. another round lost. The tough thing being now, map point for Giant X. They'll have the lockdown available. Cloud one away from his ultimate as well. There's the pit for Hoodie. So the saving grace being the plant comes through here, so will protect a little more investment on the side of Liquid, but... <laughs> Very fine margins. But nonetheless, credit to Giant X. Five in a row for the second half oh, from Cannon, the two from the previous as well. It's been really good to see them in this, looking like they've yeah, got a really a, nice beat on the game. A very slow, hesitant start to this map as well, so it's, it's really good to see them stabilize and really take control towards the back end of the first half. And 
solidify themselves in the second, not allowing anything to slip through their fingers. On the money, and the difference of ults is pretty palpable too. Neural Theft and the TP for Mystic and Nats, and then on the other side, you still got locked down there with Fatinho. You've got the pit for Hoodie, so I'm real. Impactful ults. Enzo's gonna get his online, so there's one bonus to this. Where do they go now? And catch. Rotation towards rubble. Obviously, gonna be well read by Giant X, you can see on the minimap. Mm. Cloud also mm. on his way this direction. And they're not gonna spot anything out here, so no it's confirmation here. here for the stun. I'm a little nervous about this. There's a lot of bodies on this. And yeah, Purple gives away a little bit of his position here. But he's going to stick around. The stall coming out was enough that gives him a little bit of freedom. But here we go. Here's the problems. As he gets closed down on this, the champion Kiko and Unison going to find two. They start making their steps towards the site. Purple stands tall and takes down two on his own. Bring it down to a 2v2. Now, keep in mind, Fatinho is a million miles away. But he's got the lockdown. Exactly. Hoodie's a little vulnerable, but playing it safe. Not going to be affected by the neural theft, but they're going to know where they are now. Yeah, Nats almost has to commit towards this push here. Ooh. Hoodie, hoodie. Okay. We're trying to actually spread out here from, from drop. The lockdown and the pit invested at the same time, but it's not going to force Liquid off the deep sight line necessarily here. Can they spam the plant from here? Uh, they can. I think it's just inside the pit, but uh, again, the lockdown just not forcing them deep enough on three. No, you're absolutely right. It wasn't going to force them away this fast. They still get eyes on the prize. Now with the one pick going to be dropping, me. Mystic isolates one, and the problem is it's Hoodie left. Down low, and Mystic's still alive and breathing. They hold on for another go of things. Liquid making it count when it mattered. Big round to secure there. See, investment there from Giant X in terms of the ultimates as well. 30. It's tough for Purple. He finds two crucial kills to kind of stop anything from kind of spinning out of control here. Mystic the one to secure, but uh, again, by a very fine margin. Doesn't necessarily give Liquid any further comfort carrying on from that. I think that's reflected in the purchase. A one away from the Rolling Thunder, Showstopper available here. And again, a similar start though, but the trade out Cloud's Cloud is going to be challenged. Great read by Nats to close the gap, but it seemed just so lost in the source. Cloud assuming no one was there with him. We've seen that duo working middle. And now, Seasight, going to have the spike down. There's Fatinho, Redgar, and Hoodie. And the switch up of position means that this time, Fatinho is very far away again. Ah, that was not pretty. No. Enzo, comfortable on that pick up there. A kill way ahead of the curve as yeah. well. That's a save. Kind of, yeah, makes this almost an instant pivot towards saving these rifles. Yeah, Cloud caught a, a weird interaction there. He's sent the right. ultimate out and ends up looking back behind himself onto B site. Again, maybe wouldn't have had an impact on the round otherwise, but I always get worried when I see somebody just instantly turn <laughs> 180 degrees. Looking like a maybe a mouse issue, but... Don't say it. Uh, I mean, uh, that's unfortunate. I'm conditioned to think now. I've been hurt in the past. Yeah, not necessarily any further comfort for Liquid, but it results in a second round nonetheless, which they'll definitely be happy about. I do see a pause. It's only a normal one. It's a tactical. I got, I got very worried for a yeah, second. Yeah, I was waiting to see it in game. It is a tactical one coming in from Giant X. So maybe starting to, you know, want to make sure this doesn't slip away, right? These two teams, I still feel, are in somewhat of a fragile state where they aren't fully where they want to be. Again, uh, Purple coming in, Liquid still trying to, you know, find their footing here. That mid-table ability to lose games is so high. Well, uh, I'm, so gl I'm, I'm glad you worded it that way, because I was about <laughs> to say, again, one of the things you come into a series like this is really judging a team's ability to close out uh, and really capitalize on the advantages yep. that they've created for themselves. You don't want to see this go the distance. You really, and again, I'm, I'm speaking very candidly here. You don't want to see this now drawn out into a potentially a 13-11, dare I say, in overtime. This oh. would be a big win for Giant X to close out comfortably and maintain this deficit. And, and I kinda, Advantage, sorry. Yeah, no, but I, and I kind of like the fact they are pumping the brakes here. Two rounds is enough. I'd say the first one, round 18, was scrappy in essence, so it could have been a bit of a coin flip, but it was one out in that 2v2 at the end very nicely. A lot of ults came into play there, so that removed it from the hands. But this round looked a little bit more stable. Again, 
Good test from Liquid, and they passed it here, right? So round 20 coming up, though. I, I, we do still have that ult with Purpo there in the pocket. On the other side, they're starting to get some valuable ults really coming in. Yes, uh, and building up actually a bit of a cushion, which means they can, uh, I guess, fly a little closer to the sun, the, play a little more risky. Adjust the play style ever so slightly and not have that fear of the finances to be the one to really hold them back. Nonetheless, it's still a five round gap. Should I write five? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wait. That's fun. Five chances. To, no, five chances to close out. It's the other side. Sorry. Yeah, it's gone now. Oh, it's gone. The moment's gone as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that happened with the second technical timeout. But <laughs> Patino <we> potentially <laughs> to be tested once again. Patino now. Um, yeah, early test here. Going to be forced away from this, but there's a lot of a response. Look how close by Giant X are. Now they've got to be very careful because we've got a lot of ops coming in. Now the counter ult can be placed in there, dodges one. And he decides to post it behind and it works out. A two for one trade out though. Team Liquid hold numbers. They also hold site control. Not completely, but well enough to ferry that plant into place. So Fadinho, Redgar and Cloud, now with limited utility, just that paranoia and a TP to play with, close the gap. Now Cloud just going to cycle back some of his kit, but you can already see them slipping in that smoke. Cloud's in real danger here. And oh, Kiko, sharp as ever. Catches Cloud and the follow up. Suddenly, Liquid looking lively. And uh, Fatinho's gone, Team Liquid. Looking much better here. That is fantastic from Kiko to convert this, swinging it back in their favor. After it looked a little dicey. Yeah. Giant X trying to get ahead of the curve. A little bit of a pre-take coming through and a, a weird exchange here, but both showstoppers still landing. Yeah. Not necessarily on the desired targets initially, but... but yeah. And then, unfortunately, I think Purpose is way ahead of the spacing on Giant X here. As soon as they hear the showstopper, they tuck back into Spawn. You can see Fatinho just tuck right into the corner, praying that he's not found. And fortunately, then the window just it closes for Giant X. Yeah, financially, it's doing the same as well. Guardian Sheriff's coming out here. They're feeling the pinch, but they're getting proactive. That's their answer. But yeah. it's going to be Nats on guard duty, keeping this Keeps in track. Triggered. Yeah, he's felt that pressure, I think. Yeah, he's certainly going to know it now with the Prowler being sent, but maybe not expecting Purpo. Yes, he does. Camera in place. Should spur on the rest of the hit here from Liquid, knowing that they do have not necessarily an open site, but a non-stacked site. Oh. Drive to the back of the head. <laughs> yeah, getting blocked. <laughs> plant comes through, though. Full 5v5 in the post plant here for Liquid. It's a massive... Advantage in terms of the equipment. A couple of key bits of utility invested towards catching a... Maybe a, a, a pick towards no. drop. Yes. Redgar removed. Wow. Yeah, getting active towards stairs, but already giving up at least the kind of comfortable plant hold, but they do still have the player by tree, which is going to be Enzo, so they still have that. And, and really, Giant X not finding any value just yet. They have to swing, they have to commit, they have to take a fight. And they ain't winning it right now. Hoodie, yeah, Fadinho, yeah, finding a couple, but it's not going to be enough. Team Liquid suddenly fixing all of the problems, looking like a whole different team. Looking very comfortable <laughs> playing from behind, which isn't something that you ever would have said historically about Liquid. How many chances do they have to uh, close out the game now, Michael? Let me just... Let's do the math. Uh, three, I believe. One three. Three. I've got to wait for the replay to be done. It's very valuable three information more. here. Three more. Three right, more. Just, yeah, yeah, just yeah. confirming as well. Yeah. Let's see, as you can see, three. You're it's welcome. Like it's tradition, obviously. Yeah. Deeply rooted. <laughs> Bacon in the actually relaying that. Yeah. <laughs> With the in ear. Um, for now, though, buy back in for Giant X. Liquid made me feeling like they found a, 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 a weakness here to exploit. Yeah, back to this again, but Fatinho's here now. His setup does get cleared quite quickly, so they should have access. They're taking a little bit of chip damage, but it's fine. Plant is there. Now you see the pain cello. That could remove Enzo from this. Gets Force to keep his... Him, yeah. Wow, well, only for a second. Plant did come through. Fatinho finds another. Oh, Liquid now looking a little on the ropes here. Nats, Kiko and Yampi gonna need to bail him out. Need a couple. Kiko's good for one, but there's an army facing him of three. Nats Last still holds, but only gets one. It's That's on Yampi in a 1v2. That's not the original Iceman. What can he do now? The post it in. There is going to be a time limit on this. He can't do anything. Yampi. I don't know if he can. Oh, he can! Yampi keeping cool as ever. 
I'll never doubt the Iceman again in the Red Bull clutch. And as soon as you see that smoke's dropping, the next question mark being, does he have line of sight? Doesn't even matter, finds both with relative ease here after things look a little dicey for Liquid. Isn't that a couple of key of these close quarter engagements? Yeah, I mean, both headshots landing here. A big clutch to keep hopes alive here for Liquid in map one, who have clawed their way back in. Yeah, kicking and screep. Thank you for letting us know, audience. Appreciate you. Wow. Just when things were getting exciting as well. What's this then? Things you love to see. <sighs> this might be the, the longest <laughs> regulation map I think we've ever had to cast. Oh, no, 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 Michael. We've regulation, had, we've... regulation, not before overtime. I don't know, we've had some nightmares in game before. Oh my God, we're back in. Yeah? Yeah. Are you sure? Maybe. The clock's not moving yet. Yes, we're there back we in. Go. Let's go. <laughs> Production were quick on that, yep. jumping back in the air. Like, no, no, no. The second they tell me it's good, it's good. We go again. Focus back up to... Oh! Kiko! We're just like an insta-punch to Purpo. Puts him right on his back. And now we've got Enzo with ult. We've got Kiko with ult. A little bit of a glance towards A and going back to this C-pump. They want to hit this site. And this time around, difference being... It's not off the rip. They found the first blood elsewhere. Kiko yeah. commits into <laughs> the danger zone. Uh, Fatigo is finding so much value here. Ow, that adjusted setup was just exceptional, and it's all gone wrong for Liquid. In the final moment, they will be praying that Enzo has something. He's got his ult, he's got two shock darts, and he's almost got the information back flowing, but he's going to be affected by the ult, but they're going to swing together. Oh, he's oh my got two! God. Oh, he's got all three! Liquid need it most. It was Yampi before, but it's Enzo now. We're up to 11. What and the hell? I can't was believe that it. Round? Look at that. Watch that is it again. One of the most, I mean, a beautiful opener from Kiko. But unfortunately, I think gets caught in the nano swarms. Then the alarm bot takes effect, catches him. Then he's vulnerable. He just gets eaten alive. <laughs> It's not often you see an Odin 1v3. No, no, you but really don't. But Enzo, the man to find it. Revealing it. And oh now the Giant X Mentor God. has to be absolutely cooked. It's on the ropes. Where's Mystic Look, going? I don't know. He's, no way, he's, 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 Oh, God, oh, my God, what is going on? The Mystic, oh, he's popping off. He's slaughtering them. Mystic gets lost in the maze and comes out on top. Fatinho now, do you have it in you? Can you close out in regulation? Or is this the moment the liquid take us the distance? Mark Five comes planted. in. He needs one and he needs it quick. Smoke just gonna be put back in play. Can he isolate a fair fight? A clean fight. It looks like Mystic's on the chopping block. But that guy is not losing now! He started with a bang and he ends with a bang. We are going to OT. I mean, that is the definition of pendulum swing. <laughs> Mountains <laughs> to climb for Liquid. And they get it done. Uh, I mean, Mystic just pulling off the TikTok in the final round. Uh, one of the most ridiculous TPs I've seen for a while. Results in an initial 3K and a fourth to close things out. Oof. Yeah, Giant X have got to be kicking themselves. I don't want to say I kind of manifested this, but it's the sort of thing that you are begging they can close <laughs> out cleanly yeah. with a lead like that. I'm waiting for the Pipson timeout. The anger timeout. <laughs> yeah, we've had enough. We go in. Giant X on the attack now. Liquid on the defense to start with. And it looks simplistic. It looks like it's his B take. You're going to have a couple of problems, though. Mystic being one. The man at the moment, the man who kept him in, but now he's gone down. Fatinho finds the first, gives them good options, draws the players in. And also keep in mind, Hoodie might have just slipped through. Don't know if he got noted on the Owl drone. They're going back this way. Great timing from Hoodie. Now Enzo feeling the pressure here. There. That's only a massive gap created there. just yet with Liquid able to 
Okay, Enzo still finds it. Hoodie will fall. Removes the wall now. Maybe weakens this approach towards yeah, yeah, A site. Yeah. As that is reflected in Giant X now. Don't yeah. want to entertain the possibility of getting spammed out from that recon. Where are we off to? Going around the world. Look at this deep setup, though. Yeah. They're going to get very early information here. A camera as well, which maybe you don't even want to see Nats give the camera yeah. up at that point. Keep it for the post, Second maybe, because you're not going to be able to challenge on site here. I mean, I say that. Kiko is quick to this. Paranoia going to be invested just to handle him and force him away. Quick to rotation as well to join Enzo. They do have bodies here. They've got four players very close by Purpo. Big clear towards CT. Enzo going to be kept in check. Gonna be safe, but still, it's a lot Player's on the other game. side. Kiko clean with it, but it's on Enzo again. A 1v3, you got more in you. This one's a little more tricky. Not gonna happen now. Burpo tipping the scales in OT. Back into the hands of Giant X. We get the second chance to try and close this out. I say second, overall, yeah. bigger picture-wise. Yeah. Now to draw blood first in overtime. opportunity to convert this now nice. will be giant x to call a timeout I said, <laughs> you don't want to be in those comms right now <laughs> can we get a pips and cap can we get a pips and cap pretty please cherry on top i mean they did win the round but that's never changed anything before he seems he seems okay oh a little bit animated uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's. Uh, there's a couple of really weird rounds where yep. where Liquid are just like doing the unthink, doing Liquid things, like just doing things that just are out of the wheelhouse altogether, getting really weird and big and, clutches out of nowhere. And then on the other yeah. side, it's it's like you you can't look at that scoreline yeah. from the second half and not expect Giant X to close out. So frustrations, rightfully so, kind of hitting boiling point here for Giant X, but. And you almost want to see kind of a, a chance to take a breather now. Like I said, a second chance to right their wrongs. Prediction and drag line? this one across the line. I am <laughs> not touching that Come with on. a barge Come pole. on. Give us a production. Give us a little prediction. Go on. The Giant X, 14-12. <laughs> All right, can't wait for the second round of OT, but for now. For sanity reasons. <laughs> I'm happy with this going as well as, you know, I'm, I'm happy. I mean, if, yeah, if Liquid played like the last yeah. rounds of the second half, sure. I'm... Fair play. But you just don't want that kind of dragging it through the mud sort of deal. But we go again, Liquid. What have you got for us now? Same you said for Giant X key. Close it out. Second chance. Second opportunity. And actually, Cloud goes down. He's like, wait, there's one below me. That's wild. Anyway, Liquid with a man up. Giant X, bodies on the site here. Oh dear, it's all going a bit topsy turvy. It's Nats with three. They can't stop succeeding. Alt now coming through. They know where Hoodie is. And Michael, I can't believe you cursed it like this. Hoodie denying the first attempt at the plant, but you can see it ends up getting close. So we go again. Liquid have literally just set their sights on this seaside hold. That's a lot, yeah. <laughs> and time and time again, look to punish it. And uh, I'll, I'll be honest, succeeded. Yes. yes it's what got them to overtime. It's what got us into this position. Even here, Giant X, the adjustment being to tuck. A second player in, Cloud underneath, in and amongst Fatinho's setup. To sit on top of that utility. This should do. This goes here. Go again now. Go. Sattling forward here. Hoodie. Gotta be careful. Yeah, can't go down. The expected uh, second leg of this rubble. Oh, well, that's yours. I was. Yeah, curious whether or not actually there was going to be any commitment outside here, but Burpo. We'll just swing the door open. Spike not committed just yet. Yeah, Liquid trying to keep their finger on the pulse though. And Enzo's playing on a knife's edge. There's three players now. Four players coming this way. He's got to be so ready for this. He's normally been good for it, but now he's seen the player, but there's already players ahead. Hoodie, not going to find one. He finds two. He clears both. Yeah, he'll lose his life for it, but he's found them so much value. It's only Yambi to watch the cross for now. They still got to be careful and cautious. You can't afford a loss hit without crossing the T's and dotting the I's. Yampi's timing just a second behind. They've slipped through towards Tree, but they've kept control of this. They've kept the information free flowing. But man advantage with Giant X. He's still got some utility to work with, but 10 seconds until that fault line comes back. 
that's finally catching up with this rotation. Going to be forced out by the nade, potentially. Tanks the first hit, but still looking pretty healthy. The others do here. Okay. Trying to clear the pressure on Tree. Yampi, get your gun out. He does. Fadinho's fallen. Nats now decides to strike. Oh, Nats! You are outrageous! In OT, this man is coming alive. 14. Going to be on the board. Taking the lead, finally. One of those Nats moments once again. It just looks so damn clean. And a 3K now to put Liquid on the brink of finally closing out this first map. The emotions finally turning now in Liquid's coach room. <laughs> oh, but I mean, it feels like no one can close. The first opportunity really for Liquid to have that upper hand. How does it look now? Can they get across that? A curse. Oh, hoodie. Where's that come from? That was on the other side. Yeah, man of the hour okay. shut down. I think just blind through a cage. Yep. I'll check it on the replay, but... That's big as well. Yeah, Nat's looking to get a very, very quick lurk going as maybe Liquid try and find contact outside C or towards mound. Spike drop. This is intense here, but look at what they have to get through towards A. If Liquid follow this pathing, they still have Hoodie on. and Fatinho on this site in an early rotation. They're trying to maybe sell something with Enzo over here with that owl drone, but uh, I mean, Liquid have tried to condition them that this, you know, Seaside is I mean, their the, eventual the goal. The drone has drawn too. Cloud hasn't and, drawn enough though. There's yeah, still Cloud two and here. Purpo, but there is a chance here for Liquid to find a favourable fight. But this utility has caused problems for Liquid on the entry. Kiko, Kiko able to get it. through unscathed. Yeah, he's absolutely on it. But then Fatinho finds him, and now they're isolated behind each other. Look at them, divide and conquer. Yeah. They try and take the TP towards the other side, offset Fatinho's expectations. But he's just playing it smart. They haven't fully shown Hoodie's hand yet either. So he's still around, and he's still as clean as ever. Hoodie starts it and ends it. We keep going, and Andalusia flawless here. Giant X taking the reins back again. How's that flight looking? Just looking to cancel now. <laughs> See what's available phone. in the morning. <laughs> oh, and a liquid timeout on top. Maybe the emotions are fully no, not fully flipping. Back. In the code room for Liquid, but yeah, this war of attrition will continue yeah. here on Lotus. <laughs> what a wild game. Do you know what? Did you see that tweet earlier from like no, Tom? No, 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 no. No, no, no I just no, wanted to. No, I just no, wanted... Don't even start. Don't even start. Because <laughs> well, that, really that was like a 24 yeah, that was 20s. 20 that was 20s. three scoreline or something. But I'm somehow attached <laughs> to this chair. <laughs> I, don't know how that's I wish happened. you guys at home could see it. Michael has got himself tangled up, which is very funny. Um, however, Someone did tweet out a picture of an, a, a sort of 20s. I was sat here watching the warm-up. Yeah, OT. And we've got it in the first map. Well, I mean, it's... We're, we're halfway there. Well... No. <laughs> no, not now. <laughs> Why not? not? Now. Well, it's, it's fun not allowed anymore. No, no, serious. <laughs> Somebody close out Lotus. <laughs> <laughs> this is serious. <laughs> I'm glad they've just removed the timeline. The, 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 the round timeline's just gone now because... It doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. Uh, it's a watershed issue. <laughs> it's been removed from the screen. <laughs> oh, good. I feel like that UI's up quite late. Oh, hey! yay! It's back. Yeah. Thank you. That's, that's what's happened, guys. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. horrific to see, yeah. isn't it? Giant X fans are in tatters. We go again, though, Team Liquid on the defensive side and Giant X on the attack, but you can forgive yourself if you got it the wrong way around because Liquid are taking the fight to Giant X. Straight up the gut, straight up middle. They're going for a crunch on this. Audacious plays from Liquid, and it might just work. Fatinho, the one to fight one back, though. Remaining. Giant X take the challenge and take it further. And once again, look who's left alive. And a 1v3 on with C. an Odin. <laughs> yeah, we've been here before. We might be here again, but there's a lockdown on top of it. Truly living up to the name, the killjoy in all matters. But a moment to find a little bit of respite. In the corner gets a chance. I mean, it's come through pretty early on. Oh. She's throwing stuff at the site. But it has area. Bloody hell, taken a lot Enzo. of time away from Enzo. Similar position to the other clutch. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Don't <laughs> do that. Don't do that. They take back the lead, Mike. 15. 16, the golden number now.
And a really weird except I'm not sure how much we'll, we'll see on the replay here, but... Again, just such a back and forth here. Purpo falls. Mystic still finds that kill somehow. And then this pinch is actually beautiful from Patino and Hoodie. Keep up. Generally we say like OT goes a little bit out of whack normally, you know, the strats are off the table, but I think we're seeing this go completely on its head. Liquid's turn to now attack. This where it falls apart, or do they still have that fire in them? Purpo's off angle could be so valuable. Good trade for Nats though, and he knows the Purpo is still around here. So he's having a little look for a bit more. While this happens, you got to look at the rest of Liquid still lying off that C site. Oh, hoodie! First time I've seen him commit this deep here. There. Cover going out. Slow, slow down a little bit here. Liquid try and find some steady footing. I think Enzo may be considering showing presence on the other side. Yeah, the drone will come out, but there's nobody actually to confirm the, plane drone. the other side of this. You're almost hoping he can go forward and find some utility. The other side, I think Liquid going to show too much here. Look at Purpo. They've not seen this position used before, and it's Hoodie. Lines them up and knocks it. them down. This could be the round. Giant X so close to converting for the two men who kept them in this. The ones that clutched left. up alongside Nats was Enzo, it was Yampi, two of them. Key clutches that got them close to OT before Mystic was the one to knock it out of the park. They still got it in them. You're going to need one of them to over-deliver and then some. One away from the ult for Yampi, but he's only got 10, ten seconds. seconds. He needs to get left. this plant down, he will. Let's get it down now, yeah. I want to stop it, and Enzo, deep, ready, can't do it, drive-by by Fatinho, and Yampi's got his ult, though. This would be outrageous. Show me what you got. Let's go, Iceman. Another chance, another time to shine, but he's been sent away boom by a boom bot. Perfectly kept in place by Purpo. And now he has to fall away. Again, new angles, new opportunities. What could he give us here? He needs a clean one. It's not going to happen. Fatinho, the final blow given. Up to 16, Giant X go and finally get the victory they were chasing for so long. A sigh of relief from the Giant X camp. So they dragged this one across the line, but uh, I mean, bloodied, battered and bruised, Lauren. That was a battle. You're absolutely on the money. War of attrition, wild affair, 16-14. Finally, Giant X got across the line. But don't forget, that was only map one. I know a place that will break you into a thousand pieces. Stay away from them. Stay away from Lorca, Paco, and Picasso. Don't ask about Lola. I, Caballo Grande. I, Dolor de Nieve. But in spite of everything, it occurs to you to visit Andalusia. Don't say I didn't warn you. Be careful of the Andalusian crush. Hey guys, it's Jimmy Lin, former professional Counter-Strike player and Valorant coach. Watch out for the stairs, clear this angle, you're gonna be able to fight this. Let's do something crazy, get 
get it wild today Cause we don't do this every day And we deserve it Life is so amazing Nothing is in our way Baby, let's fly away Do you feel it? Is your heart rushing The way my heart's rushing When you take it all in Big taste is so hard. I have a very big tasty for you, Purpa. You're actually very tasty for me. It's gonna be big and tasty for you. Let's go. I don't wanna play anymore. Uh, this is my smile. Welcome back. I believe that the word they were repeatedly saying was big. Just to clarify for anyone listening who is confused, just like we are yes. on the desk. It was big. We are we are in Berlin, uh, so that must be Berlin International Gaming. It, it could be <laughs> <Okay>. fantastic <laughs> organization. Uh, maybe one day we'll see them in Ascension and we'll see them playing in this studio. But what we did just see was a game and a half of Valorant, multiple overtime, yeah. so many that I lost count. There was chaos, there were clutches, and uh, there were two teams who desperately wanted to win, but a Giants X came out on top. Yeah, it, it seemed like that chaos started pretty early throughout the match with sort of like weird failed retakes, like super aggressive stances and positions. And this was something that sort of like continued on all the way through. Like this is another example where they basically get in, they do everything, but not in time for the spike to go off. Like these were just peculiar rounds that seemed to happen all the way through the match. And I feel like there was definitely things missing from either side, but ultimately I think Giant X are only going to care that they came out with a win. I think Giant X will definitely care. 
only about the win here. I think they played good. I didn't think they played great. I don't want to do the whole pessimism bit that we did earlier today <laughs> again about it. That's literally every segment you're on still, by the way, the pessimism. Like, True. Okay. You're that. fair. Oh, okay. 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 But okay. So one of the things I wanted to look at is like they had the info going into this, right? They prepared against Liquid. Liquid played it last week and Liquid kind of went in blind. They didn't really have the information about what Giant X was going to do. And it looked like Giant X was for the most part, in control of what was going on for the whole game until that second half when Liquid starts getting all these clutch wins. And the, the, like yeah. the Hero Miracle 1 versus 3s, it happened around 22, round 23 with Yampi and Enzo back to back 1 versus 3s. And Giant X could have closed it out right then and there. And I think a lot of that is attributed to, I don't think Liquid's comp is that great. It looked like for the first bit of their attack side, it was very telegraphed, especially behind that Sova. And it wasn't until like over time that they started using the Sova drone as part of a fake. Like, hey, we're gonna fake reclear C and then go A, but you know, that didn't work out for them. And I wonder if it's, you know, the inflexibility of Nats only really being able to play Cypher and then Viper, because this map is a Killjoy map that every team runs Killjoy on it. And then we're also not even seeing them run Gecko, which is also another mainstay for Lotus. Mm. Yeah, I, I think, yeah. like, obviously there's that. And then on the other side, I think we saw some of the performers actually sort of come back from the fray. Like Cloud last week, who has been, I want to say, one of the best players for GX continuously. He is, he is, yeah, he, like, he has been player. for a very long time. I, I think he had that return to form. And that definitely helped them out, especially when, when they were in the good, when they were in the streak of rounds that was actually going in their favor. When they won rounds on the attack, a lot of it was off him sort of being that secondary duelist even while playing on that fade like it was an agent that definitely found them information but he also did a lot of the work just in terms of heavy lifting himself yeah i think he was a little bit overshadowed this game by hoodie in terms yes. of actual like stats and performance but when we look at this team we definitely look to cloud to be the the one that is the the rock the one that's always going to give you consistent performances and close out a lot of the rounds whether it be on attack in the post plans or on defense just literally just anchoring down a spot and just sitting there and shooting back and and getting a multi-kill every time, just being so reliable for their team. And to be fair, in terms of Hoodie's stats, that was really attributed to the overtime situation, right? When it, it yeah. came to actually playing the regulation game plan, Cloud was a really key part of that for Giant X. Uh, what did you think of the defensive side uh, from the part of, of Giant X? Because one of the big contrasts, I guess, with Liquid's defense was uh, Giant X were always able to get the bomb down, whereas until Liquid kind of figured things out, actually, the site clakes, they look pretty clean. Uh, they, well, no, in fact, it's the opposite. Sorry, the site defense looked pretty clean for the side of Giant X. Yeah, I think the Giant X had a few like proactive ideas. Like it would be just to take some control away. And I think actually it sort of leans into what you were saying about the Sova. I think there were a few times here and there where the Sova just didn't clear certain positions, which definitely le led to some really problematic issues, which GX actually did quite well to capitalize on. And a lot of teams also run like the Viper with a, as a double controller, and that is mainly used for info denial. And I think what we saw there was Giant X had a lot of map control and info because there wasn't enough pressure from Cypher Cages to be like, hey, we're in this area, be afraid of us. So when, when we see the, the hit coming in from Team Liquid going into the site, they were running really low on abilities to actually close out in the post plan. So Giant X is able to kind of shift it to the area that they need to be in. And then they have a decent amount of abilities with the fade, um, you know, with the extra prowlers and the, the seas and everything to be able to go in for the, those retake rounds. Well, I know that uh, Cloud has been keeping himself hot to trot and ready for Icebox with Aim Labs warm up. You can see him there. He's, he's getting ready to hopefully pop off again for his team. Uh, thinking back to the overtime, though mm. on uh, on the map because uh, my eyes are still <laughs> still recovering from what we witnessed is it a positive sign for liquid going into icebox that they are able to pull off those individual magic moments I think it's important for Liquid to be able to do this because that's kind of what their strengths are, is that they have a lot of individually skilled players. It's just a matter of can they get all of this together? Can they show up at the same time at the same area and just sync up their timings because if they are doing this mismatch of things i, I mentioned in the pregame uh where yampi is walking at mid two but his teammates aren't putting the pressure on a then he goes for his duel and, and loses it everything falls apart so that's what liquid really needs to focus on it's a good thing that these individuals are hitting their shots though because if they're 
mistime their plays, it bails them out at least. And let's face it, no team really wants to have to end up in a clutch situation, but of course, that's a nice insurance policy for Liquid, knowing that they can have those moments when they need to have them. Looking at the composition for this one, Mystic is on the harbour, Thomas Business. Yeah, it, it didn't go particularly well last time out. That was one of the major worries for me with their icebox. I think when they were winning it with Koi, it was a much more bread and butter composition. But also, you look at his performance in the last map, it was pretty good on that omen. I think he takes a big hit individually when it comes to harbour. Also, I, I'm looking over at Team Liquid here. They ran this harbour comp uh, last well, we time. We got a chamber on purple as yeah, well. We, yeah, that's what we're... Wait, yeah. <laughs> I thought that's what you were addressing. No, 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 no. I, 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 I was looking at Liquid and uh, yeah, talking about so the harbour. They do so. have the harbour. And I, I, did they have the gecko last time? They're, they're switching to the Sova now instead of the, the gecko, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Cloud um, was playing Sova last time, so he he wasn't on gecko. Yeah, Sova, I believe, is being brought in, but also onto Yumpy, which onto puts Yumpy, Killjoy onto, onto Enzo. Enzo. So, which, which is all again is weird, yeah. but also it's a completely new comp coming out of the side of Giant X as well, who are moving completely away from what was bread and butter other than the Rays. So this is a lot of new stuff coming out for both sides. Yeah, Giant X are bringing a whole new look to the stage, but will it be enough for them to get it done in a clean 2-0? And more importantly, will the stage be turning red yet again as we head back to Pampok? How dare you, Frankie? How very dare you try and summon that into existence? However, Michael, I'm also slightly curious. What's uh, Chamber yeah, doing here? Yeah, well, what's Chamber doing here? But again, and what are just these to, roles on Liquid? Just, just to hit onto Liquid <laughs> again. Yampi's got playtime on Killjoy, and uh, yep. Enzo, could argue, is sort of a specialist on Sova. So yeah. that's the one that kind of sticks out for me. Uh, uh, again, whether or not the roles in application look a little more comfortable, I'm absolutely there for it. Purpo, though. Bringing out a chamber, that's that's almost an alpha mm. move here to Aye. try and make things work. But hey, I'm, I'm happy to see it. Yeah, show us a little something. Map to underway. And I don't know what to make of this. <laughs> I just want to sit back and watch, which is a really bad thing to say as a caster, but it is just a little topsy-turvy, isn't it? Liquid on the attack, obviously Giant X then on the defending side. Let's see how Purpo looks on this and, well, how Liquid look on some of these new adjusted rolls. Lovely pop flash, though. Need to close the gap on a couple of kills. Who took respite behind the, the second wall. Build. Mystic again from the back lines. How does he keep slipping behind people like this? And, well, this is all a bit weird. I mean, Spike held in look kitchen, yes, but Hoodie, or maybe just think he's going to catch a timing over on default right here. here as now Yampi and Nats left to try and recover this, but Purpo will find Yampi. Puts Nats into the 1v2 now. One snake bite left. Oh, and they're just going all the way around. That seems That's, aware of yeah, it. Yeah, seems aware. Uh, they, oh, they made great progress, but Don't still a headshot. Oh, this is... <laughs> what was that noise? That was me getting nervous when we <laughs> went for the ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you highlighting that, Michael? Peter Griffin coming yeah, out. Yeah, leave me alone. You're, you're, being, you're being a bully. Hey, this you isn't... Well, Nick, this is winnable. All I'm right. saying Nats has actually planted open here up on bridge, so he's Which looking to yeah, play back towards all. One it's going to take Purpo a while to kind of figure this oh, out. Nats, you are actually obscene if you even check this. There's no way you look. Right? You don't look that way. No, you just stay where you are. You're playing for the, for, playing for the plant. The young so now, blood against yeah, Nats. Yeah, now Purpo's spotted the spike. He ain't got much down. time, though, does no. he? Look at, it. look at his HP as well. Oh, Nats, you are so nasty at this one, aren't you? It's almost bullying at this point. Oh, it's just beautiful from Nats. There's not many who can play it as well as he did, but bloody hell, that was nice. Conversion comes through here, the Red Bull clutch in the pistol. The Giant X have seemingly great control on the spike after it's dropped here in Kitchen. Initial two kills from Redgar Mystic responding to make this doable, to be yeah. honest with you. Like I said, Hoodie trying to find a timing here over on default, maybe. I mean, you could argue it's an overcommitment, but regardless, credit where credit's due. Liquid on the board here to kick off Icebox. All right, Pepper, that's... Oh, a quick death gifted from Kiko. No charges left. Again, if there was any upgrades to anything here, an outlaw would have removed it, but it is going to be just classics. 
Oh, the yeah. info on the back of that, yeah. The knife confirm presence here. I think maybe three. It should be at least three there. So I don't think Kiko got noted, but everyone else who was behind him probably did. Mystic. Playing outside of it really nicely done, actually. Liquid doing that really well. Holding them at arm's length. This looks like it's been worked on, to say the very least. Looking refined here in terms of this round two execution. Well, that carries across to the buy rounds. Anything? Yeah, forcing Purpo. TP available, but again, I don't think he knows anybody's drifted onto this deep angle. So punished here to open the round. Rifle's coming in now for Giant X. He said, see if Liquid's control, the composure, will carry across here into the buy rounds. To explore a site now for the first time. Hmm. Indicators sent up. A confirmation of how many just yet. The Cloud and Hoodie. The Gecko and the Viper definitely well equipped to slow things down here, but Enzo. Ooh. They want to find the open up. Hoodie fairly committed in this nest position. Oh, what a dreamy Off start. On 115, yeah. Mike. You, you, you take that both hands if you get given one of those. And Giant X now are going to have that horrible. Decision to make of how much we commit behind this. They can still rotate. They still got a lot of time to play with. I mean, they're going to put a lot of faith, obviously, into Purpo here. But still, the knife. I think only finding one. Yeah, I don't see anyone else noted on this. So just Mystic. Not enough to fully assuade their fears. But still, you are seeing Purpo fall away from that B site. Maybe assuming they are still heading this way. Yeah, I think Liquid cutting sound here to allow time for a rotation to come through. But Giant X. Stick to their guns here. They have themselves an opportunity to stop Liquid at the front door. 30 seconds yeah. left. Cloud and Redgar still do have the utility to play with, so there is a little bit of something. Top? Um, where be. is it? It's well, not there. What the hell was this? Bit of a trade. It's Enzo the one to keep things moving forward for Liquid. Kiko wants in, but so does Mystic. And this is just bizarre. It's all on. Well, that's just to get that spike down, but what a strange round, my guy. Yeah, Giant X would, would, like I said, sitting deep off this flash out over the top of screens, but it, it, did it happen? I, I didn't saw a see second, it. A second but... player rotate towards heaven. Maybe there's a moment there. Hold three seconds. I'm going to double swing from yeah. rafters as well. This is the opener found here. Oh, very nice. Enzo Enzo. Comes, uh, yeah, second headshot here. I think maybe it's on the back of Fatinho actually wrapping back round towards heaven mm. to have a second swing on that, but Liquid able to thread the needle, get ahead of that play. Like I said, that A-site hole just crumbling. Oh, that was a lot of noises, so that's all players noted, it seems like. Um, you can see on the other side that maybe Cloud wants to try and <laughs> Do something. Find something. He's not going to get much for it, though. And this round again, you're looking at maybe just kind of pulling at those threads, right? You get a little bit of an angle, you try and play it out like an Yampi. Not going to be vulnerable to that just yet either. And it's going to be Hoodie if they do continue on this pathing. Not going to be phased by the first. And he's actually been able to evade most of the utility coming through. So he does get a fair chance, at least one. Not going to get the follow up, though, but a good shot towards Enzo. Now Giant X get themselves in an even affair, but obviously no recoverable weapon just yet either. This is a problem for Fatinho. Oh, the flash was divine. He'll be thanking Redgar for that, but can only still make one of it. They are still going blow for blow here. Oh, well, actually, you know, the double fragment and the mosh bit coming through, but Redgar caught here. The flash takes full effect, but no swing from Cloud on 6 HP. The Purpo not in a position to punish. Left. Oh, tries to adjust Fire for Nats planted. on top site. Four on the round for him. And six HP, a chance to find the ace. He's feeling it, and he's found it, Nats. With an incredible start to this winning about the pistol. And now here, making sure none of those threats came to effect. Fabulous work, finding all those players. And again, that was just with those sheriffs, Mike, but still able to keep these rounds cleanly in their hands. Here, the utility. You can see Giant X leaning towards some of these deeper set pieces on the back of Red Gas flashes. Maybe looking to sync up in a couple of variations with Cloud and the Dizzy. Well handled by Liquid so far. Obviously, Giant X going to be coming back in on the purchase now. 
will be a tour de force available for Purpo. What are we making of the chamber so far? Have you seen? Uh, well, I mean, I haven't had many chances to see it. No. Not really <laughs> expecting too much in terms of, uh, I, I guess, aggression. Mm -hmm. um, particularly now there's a 4 0 scoreline. No, he does want to be the, the difference maker to go forward and maybe try and find an opener, but I said Liquid of uh, very, very composed considering a 16 14 scoreline on yeah. map one. I mean, none of that none of that scrappiness seems to have no. carried across on either side, to be honest with you. Like I said, Giant X are a big shift now towards kind of these set pieces to kind of absorb sight hits. A little bit of anti-plant sprinkled on top as well, but not really seeing the success come through there. A misread with that a side yeah. execution. Uh, and here on B, at least, I mean, nice flash over the top for Fatinho to find an opener. But um, I think once Liquid realized that some of these contact plays are in effect, yeah. they can adjust very early on in the half and, and kind of mitigate that risk very easily. And, and also to add that, Nats is 9 so and 0. Dead. He has yet to die, and he has been winning them so many moments. So, again, you're seeing him in fine form. Kiko, the one to take a little bit of first contact here and a that little was, bit of damage. I don't, did I, I'm not sure if I just heard Purpo pop the open. I thought I heard it. It comes through in this one, but, I say that, Fatinho, gonna find the first Ooh. a second as well. That's so Yet to die until now. Hoodie joins by his side. And now it's Kiko and Yampi. This position's nice, but it's Red. Hoodie really heads up work. They're not allowing any of those access points to come through. And Redgar, quick to the case. A response has been found. Just off the back of that timeout, Giant X answer back. Does Purpo get an upgrade? I think he comes through with, yeah, just the Guardian. And he did pop the ult as well. Yeah, he so did. He sits at 5K and maybe just wanted to get the operator online for the next fully confident in the round victory, I guess, ahead of time. Yeah. Do something we didn't. But again, yeah, Fitinho doing Standing really ground, well. Yeah. yeah. Good to see the timing on this too. Not allowing that to any more of his uh, nonsense. So, everyone. Answer him back. Doesn't spiral out of control <laughs> early on here. Ooh, early aggression, though. Reading that they could be considering that alt hoodie very close by, as was Cloud. So, good little read there from Liquid to ensure priority towards that. And they're going to work quickly off the space they've been giving themselves. Kiko, quick to it. Cloud could be in danger here. They've got three players pretty close by to this. And Kiko chomping at the bit. Fatino might be ahead of the wall, though, and could potentially pressure. He slips the net. Oh, but he's been caught. And Enzo finds Hoodie. It's just Cloud on the back of the site now. Attack's not going to be enough. They need a little more. The plant's in. And Kiko's control in this. Liquid instantly writing the ship after what was a bit of a... <laughs> so if we can just pop back and have a look just at the Just a little, little free cam, yeah. maybe, of this one. <laughs> no, is like, there it is. this is uh, not <laughs> what I'd planned. Uh, you know, I wonder where that's is. <laughs> what do they say? Yeah, what do Size they say? Size doesn't matter. Teleport's ready. So it means Liquid will find a round. Right. Flawless. Uh, uh, what flawless? Andalusia, obviously. Obviously. Is there any other kind? I don't think there is any more. No charges left. I'm hoping that it does stay flawless. Otherwise, all that discussion. Oh. Oh, well, 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 not so flawless. It was, though. It was for a little while. Flawless in execution. In idea. Yes. <laughs> in, in concept. Um, but, but yeah, answering instantly back. Again, Giant X's uh, adjustment there worked well because they had uh, Patino almost over deliver in middle, right? There We're it is. To see the lineup Whoa, as well, just in case. Case. For you at home. Happen. There you go. You can play just like Nats. <laughs> Happens to the best of us. Oh. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's curious to see. I mean, this is obviously a pace change on the back of Mystic's ultimate getting posted here, uh, basically off the rip. Again, no secrets about it on the way in, the snake bite and the shock dart. Giant X, unfortunately, I think scrambled to try and find some sort of steady footing to fight ahead of the execution. Take flight. Oh, drone going to be sent up. And it does catch Purpo, so I don't know what your plan is now. I mean, the closer Liquid get, the, I was going to say, yeah, yeah. The, the less comfortable this TP feels tucked yeah. in behind default, so. It's a very small gap to close down on. We did take the TP. Not making any subtlety of new positioning, but again, they have all responded. We do have, I say all, four players here for the defending side. And a pause for thought for Liquid. Purple able to reset onto a deeper angle here. 
Again, Liquid cut sound. Come down to the last 30 seconds of this round. 30 seconds left. No so no play back in, yeah, no play back in yet from Giant X. The Hunter's Fury gets posted, but a trade. Yeah, Two but... Two for one, actually, yeah, Mr. This, Dubbin down. There's no comfort there, right? It was so hard to find comfort, but we are going to see the lockdown coming in as well. 15 seconds left. It, it makes it a little bit more oh, dangerous. No. The HP, yeah, is low on Mystic and Enzo. A but snake by still as well. Eight seconds now, and the Marsh going to come through. This is actually getting really dangerous here. Cloud going to find one. Hoodie could be on He's for this. Live. Yeah, just live. Oh, no! Did he fall too fast? Unfortunately, commit. Just let them try. Can't get out of that. Again, with the snake bite and the mosh pit, I don't think maybe they're they're not banking on finding a util kill, but it's actually on the spike as well. Quick reaction from Liquid to dig a little deeper and convert that. So I think it's what two and a half seconds left on the clock by the time they find this kill. One enemy One remaining. Down. Spike down B. I said, Hoodie just yeah, so committed there. there. Rough, but that will be a sixth for Liquid. Giant X back down on a broken purchase as well. Holds here, yes, but necessarily want to see the the likes of the the pit invested here. I guess initially, even just a visual check, like, like those comfort questions in terms of the roles being switched up a little bit. Not yeah. apparent so far nope. in the first half of Icebox. Oh, looking pretty well rounded. Again, the big test for, for Enzo, particularly being on the defense, if we get a decent amount of rounds to, to really gauge that. So far, the only real committed player towards this is going to be Nat's going to take a walk up tube. Everyone else just sitting on back. And now look at the space that Purpo's been able to get, right? Clearing this deep. You should run. That's validity to the stack here. I wonder if Nats can maybe apply a little bit of pressure himself. But it's actually Purpo to find Yampi. Trying to fall away. That was at the back of Belt. So that's going to be something to keep in mind. Yampi, with the adjustment of that window there, now finds great deals of damage, great deals of success. He doesn't need to necessarily even get the kill. He's teed him up here. Done so much for them. Hoodie trying to patrol himself, and Purple just feels a little late to this. Nat's already slipping away. Oh, Kiko. No. Yeah, yeah, that's that's probably not the player you wanted to go down, but they still at least find Kiko on the trade, but Mystic is there. Brilliant from him. The man is probably the most viable weaponry here. But look at these positions, really disconnected from each other. Yep. That would have needed a real belting shot. They do some damage, but again, if you look to that round from start to end, Nat's in the position, the lockdown there. He was set up to do so much damage to Giant X. And just a, a strange investment here for the pit to come through as well. So just banking on. Maybe it being, uh, you know, a split towards A or not as many people scaling up onto site just yet. Certainly on the defense, you, you never really want to see the pit invested in a, in a lesser purchase like that. Unless Hoodie's, you know, rocking an SMG or a Judge or something mm. to try and make it work. Yeah, six round gap now. Giant X to try and recover as Kiko. No secrets about this on the way in. No, but it's quite curious, Sue, because he's, he's completely going to put Fatinho. He's past the turret as well. Yeah. It's, it's got to be a consideration. And the timing on this is horrific. They're going to feel so uncomfortable. It, well, then he's dead. And Kiko's getting, yeah, much, much closer. This split is gorgeous, actually. He's working really well off the off from Mystic, too. Yeah, and Kiko's cleared it. That's the, the site's theirs. Beautiful combination work there, Mike. Oh, we'll come through. No chance for Giant X to try and deny this now. Uh, 3v5. One being an operator in the retake here. It'll require massive overcommitment from Liquid to some of these opening engagements to Mercator. throw this one away. Oh. Completely blind, just tagging up Redgar too. Uh, Mystic happy to stick around just to make sure that nothing goes astray. <laughs> Kiko's just roaming. He's looking really comfortable now. He looks very good here. Again, kind of impressed with Kiko coming yeah. into this roster. He's been looking very, very sharp, finding his footing very quickly. And again, I think Giant X just want to keep those, well, that rifle and the operator in hand. This has been a little underwhelming from Giant X, if I'm honest here, Mike. This doesn't look like it's part of their map pool yet. It doesn't look 
I don't know. I'm not loving the chamber. I haven't seen anything enough to kind of sway me towards it. It's just yeah, a bit yeah. Flat. I mean, again, the, the chamber comes out. It's not necessarily. We're not really looking for any major differences in in macro, so to say, but. Uh, we're just not seeing the value from it. It's the no. same as really when you look at somebody playing a Rainer or a Phoenix or something yeah. like that. It's, it's very kill dependent now to really warrant, or unless you, you're finding value from the operator. Unfortunately sure. here, you're no. not because Liquid are getting themselves into post plant situations where that operator then is going to struggle to find value once again. Mm. So unless Purpose finding first bloods or really slowing down these sight hits, it, it's really hard to justify. And unfortunately, I'm not going to see many examples in the second half either. This is the sort of scoreline we're looking at. Yeah, a bit of a blowout so far. Now, I, 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 maybe Giant X off this timeout can turn the screws a bit, but one round to eight. I'm going to be honest, it's not looking very competitive here, Mike, um, which, you know, leaves me, it leaves me hoping that the scent, which does seem very likely at, the, at this point, um, unless obviously something changes quite drastically after this timeout, could be a bit closer because it's, a, you know, such a stark contrast to map one. Sure, and I mean, you could argue that obviously it's their pick. They had the, the, the majority of the preparation lent towards uh, Giant X's attacking side. But like I said, with this sort of deficit, you just, you, you're just you not setting yourself up to really excel or, or even succeed at this point. Just don't have a, a, a big enough amount of rounds to play with. Uh, I mean, again, even here, 8-4, you lose the pistol. Yeah. You basically have one buy round to get yourself back into the game. Not impossible, just improbable. Nat's going to have to give away a little at the start here. Now, it looks like they're going to once again prioritize middle Giant X. Going to put three players to this. And they've actually got them that one round when Fatinho kind of over-delivered in middle, but that was also when we saw Team Liquid leaning that way. Here, very different affair. So four players playing as a pack here for Team Liquid, pressuring towards this A site with a passive hold from Fatinho. He's not going to challenge this himself when they come for the three-play stack. So again, taking a lot of space. Kiko's going to be rewarded here for his aggression. Oh, audacious. And Patino there to greet him. I'm kind of curious where Nats is off to. He's, he's, he's off around the world. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully they can run the clock down. He's uh, picking up the pace now. It's a little scary because now they're going to speed up a little bit here, take back the kind of early steps towards side control because they know that at least one of the players is removed from the equation, right? He needs to get into this fight pretty fast. Team Liquid are playing time as best they can. Yeah, we're going to help the cross, but they can't hold this comfortably. Now running out of that utility on the spike itself, Nats makes it to site. It's perfectly timed, if anything. And now he's going to see two, three, all play... Wait, well, he didn't see the person on the spike, but it's fine. He goes back for a bit more. How dare I down Nats in a lurk. The timing was actually perfect. Keeping the players alive, burning the utility very well. They were able to weather the storm. So this utility really setting things in motion for Nats. Right here. Fortunately, Giant X not able to capitalize on obviously the detain taking effect here. It's too big a gap to close. And then there's no chance for Cloud to retrieve that as well. They get a second shot at capitalizing. And now, unfortunately, Liquid hit nine and for giant x like i said if there was anything in the back pocket for the second half here wow. you just don't have you don't get the luxury do yeah, you you don't have enough of a safety net to really show what i guess so well, i have to assume the hard work has been to rectify and, that, and that's the part you know you, you'd love to see a competitive game between these two because you can see it on map one yeah it was a little bit rough at times and it, and it certainly wasn't the you know the cleanest valorant but it's it's good to see a nice close game but here so far very one-sided and as you rightly highlighted giant x probably not gonna have much of a chance on that side swap to show off maybe what they've been up to but for now we focus as already purpose taking a lot of the space towards a so it's allowed for this cheating the additional body over towards b standing ahead they start liquid begin the assault towards the side, but there's a lot of bodies on the other side. Red Guard going for the safety of that knife, but it is going to be a reward But the trades. So far favorable for Giant X. Fatinho is here. He's the one who got the last round. He might be the one to get this one again. Yeah, excellent from Fatinho. Finally falls, but he's got them another round here. Right positioning, the adjustment with Purpo, it worked. I mean, Red Guard. Now in no man's land, but still digs his heels in, finds the first, and I think actually Giant X collapsed very well to prevent Liquid from getting themselves into a post-plant this time around. Beautiful shots from Fatinho. 
set this one in motion. Even here, Mystic Core. With the stun as well. So second on the board, but again, you're pinning your hopes on the curse here. Have you seen what they're buying? There's a double up. <laughs> on on Liquid side. Yep. See Bladestorm available here for Kiko. So Enzo just looking to bolster some of the finances a little bit. The other side, no command and a lockdown for Giant X. I'm sure Kiko noted the reposition here, but he notes the peak. A beautiful adjustment. That's so good. Oh, that's actually filthy. Oof. That's a little bit of a punch to the gut for Giant X. Maybe looking to capitalize and build off. Maybe the back get three, you know, stop. Yeah, a little something, but now down to four players. Rico still has his ult, Fatinho as well, but. Hoodie's going to have his hands full here. Does have two snake bites. Toss See an opportunity to do a little bit of damage, but he's fairly committed here. If he does get cleared, but oh. he takes out the bait storm here. That's huge. Lockdown is there. So again, he still stands his ground. This is maybe up for that third round that they wanted so severely. Mystic is lucky to be breathing. He might even get to 10. No, he's fine. He gets out in time. Back to the wall, though. 2v3. Enzo with the operator. And 18 seconds. Giant X have bodies to put at this. Enzo's got to keep him safe for this if they want that plant. Yeah, not going to get it. Giant X on the swing. And we're going to have three. They've done the bare minimum to maybe weather at least a pistol round. Said have to set themselves up for success here. Said otherwise, it's basically the one buy round for Liquid will be looking to punch. And away onto map point. Beautiful hole from Hood, like I said. Gonna have his hands full if he does get kind of rushed down here on yellow. But again, the space is just not there for Liquid and maybe relying on the Blade Storm to open the site comfortably. But yeah, fighting chance at least here for Giant X. But it's got to start with a pistol. I, I mean, uh, there's only so many ways we can say it, right? Because as you said, even before we got to this juncture, if you don't get more than this, you, you literally get one gun round and that's that's all she wrote. You can't want a little bit of buff here, but Kiko. They're pushing, they're pushing everywhere. There's three in middle, there's two up be long. They want to brawl and Purpo's up for the challenge. He's up for the fight. That's on the other side. It's a back and forth affair so far. We're just playing deathmatch, but it's Just Nats alive. But should I ever say it's Just Nats? This man is dead this time. Hoodie, gonna get things started. Giant X with a chance. I'm happy to brawl this out. And a must win round for Giant X as well. Liquid looking to try and take the fight to them. I guess capitalize on that scoreline pressure. Oh, Fatinho. He's actually having a game, to be fair. If you looked at it on the first map as well, and this one. <laughs> Again, he is having a good game, and it was one of the main reasons they were able to get rounds, even in the first half. So good to see him hitting a bit of a peak here. Don't know if it's going to be enough to carry him forward, but we'll find out. Four rounds. They now get the opportunity to set a little bit of space between them and Liquid. And well, them and losing the map, should I say. See, no investment comes through from Liquid here. Just the classics. Even Giant X here trying to protect the economy. Got a couple of ghosts to round things out. They might find themselves a, a free plant here. Able to stack down the utility on top. Liquid, a gamble stack, right but there. Oh, nothing on that side of the map. Actually, yeah, Giant X even, I mean, both pistols looking to wrap back through mid here. Torrent's a lot of time passing. It. Yeah, I don't think Liquid are even going to mm -hmm. attempt the retake here. Don't want to give away any progress towards these ultimates. Only one noted from the knife here <laughs> as well, so maybe not too indicative of what's about to happen, but there could be an opportunity for Cloud to farm here. Let's see. It's Cloud to go walkabouts. Hello, entirety of Liquid. Oop. Let's see if they go down to the spike. Oh, <laughs> oh they got to scramble. They're fine. They went down to the spike in the end and actually denied John X from any opportunity to farm in that. An opportunity for Cloud to find 
all he wanted and more <laughs> outside heaven here. But Giant X, like I said, this is the tick in the box we're looking for. Obviously, yep. I don't want to say a massive switch up in terms of composition, but uh, certainly this is where you're hoping the strap book gets displayed a little bit here. We get maybe a taste of some of that preparation going into this pick. Okay. There's my buddy. Looking at the start. B long control. Here. Uh, Pope. Try and get a little bit of a glimpse ahead of that coming through. Our commitment beyond this, that little bit of contact at the start. And Giant X being very patient here. Yeah, no resistance on the way in. And X able to get themselves safe fast towards yellow, but again, the timing maybe of the wall is going to slow things down a little bit now. Challenge back through just yet for Liquid. And hesitant on the plant as well. The audio cube will draw a couple of members of Liquid out, but no kill just yet. Oh. There you go. Drawing Lepo, blood. Finally. Takes down Yampi, but the plant's in, so you take that as well. Happy to add that on top. Okay. Liquid are closing the gap here. Yeah, shown now. Nice work from Purpo, kind of uti utilizing his utility just to identify the players were so close by. But still, the defuse is going to get towards halfway. It looks like it maybe even a little further. He's around the corner. They can't deny it. Liquid snatch away the round of Mystic. An absolute thief there. And maybe in the chaos that the lineup for the wingman plant location here not considered but a fully safe defuse. As you rightfully said, Liquid steal this one from under Giant X's nose. Again, maybe even masked here by the, enemy remaining. the orb going up. But again, once these front yellow players fall, somebody has to come forward a little deeper. I mean, but tell me who won the last round and then I'm looking at, hopefully, the, yeah, the buy. It's not great. Severely not great. It's the only Mystic the one to survive in the previous, but they could have got a couple of rounds to play with. I mean, if they can do some further damage here, Nats surely gets mm. checked, right? Purpo's not checked. Mm. It gets weird now. Mm. <laughs> it gets weird now. <laughs> mm. well, at least Purpo's off the top. <laughs> <laughs> of the crate here. <laughs> oh, it feels weird. And the reason I say it gets weird is because now so much time has passed that I don't think anyone's going to check this on the second drift through if no. they no. progress further. <laughs> Luckily. They've got, there's something weird there. Yeah. There's there's something wrong on that side of the map. I don't know if Kiko just bothered them then. He might, oh, okay. You're not going to find any more. Oh! Okay. Okay, 2v3. Um, oh, spotted. Here you go, forced left. off. Spice Mystic planted. is still alive with that rifle, but... I think they're reading this perfectly. Yeah, like they, they know are. The, the reinforcement's going to yep. come through from mid. Absolutely on the money. Uh, shoulder peak B takes damage, yeah. It's, the chances are depleting. You know, bullet by bullet here. Kiko would have to hit a worldly shot on Purpo. It's not going to happen. So Giant X iron up that sixth round now, and Mystic just wants to drift away with the rifle. Can't hold on to it once again. So it's 16 HP. Maybe doesn't want to give potentially an orb to Cloud if he comes forward hunting. Even though it's just one away. Yeah, Mystic will be able to hold on to this. Don't think that jump was spotted. At least he's going to hear the steps approaching. As Giant X get themselves up to six now. Touching distance. The purchase will come back in for Liquid in the next. Kiko actually going to go straight onto the operator. <laughs> you see adjustment from the observer's like, wait, hang on. What's this? Yeah, it doesn't necessarily amount to anything. But that's other than a kill in the flank, I guess, but... Curious now, Kiko, can he find value from the right operator? Most up on top of yellows, not necessarily in the way from Giant X. 
pushing forward here. But Hoodie will invest the wall, so his presence noted in that regard. Here. I'll draw in the next piece of utility to be drawn out. Gonna spot a little and not a lot, but not enough to really cause much of a reaction. There's Purple making slow progress here. There is still two players, nearly three, you could argue, with how close Enzo is towards this, and they even bring over Mystic. Putting a lot of faith in Kiko. Again, he's got that operator. They can do that, so they are going to leverage that. That's why they're committing so heavily towards this, but Grand X have... I don't say side control, because they don't, because it's a pre-take. They're already getting back into this. Nats wants in now. He's going to take down Redgar, old teammates now, and leave that spike isolated on the site. And that fourth member coming across to rotate. You know they're going to commit towards denying this free plant from Wingman. Right next, though, can they find their way back onto site? 30 seconds left. Between Nats and Enzo. Yeah, it's going to be very tricky for everything to be unspotted, right? It's given away. God, that looked so close. Plant still not to be toyed with. There's still players to clear, and Nats still holding on. I told you there's no access around this point. Hoodie and Purpo need a miracles, and with only 13 seconds, there ain't much time to be praying for them. This is just down to Hoodie in a 1v4 liquid. Push up to 11. And well, the round to chip away at the finances of Giant X, but already with a bit of a cushion built up. But approaching map point now for Liquid. And beautiful adjustment here, like I said, when you have four players in a situation like this, left. and I guess no information or confirmation on the other players. side of the map, perfect, perfect, you have perfect. to commit towards this sort of play, denying the plant from coming down, removing some of that comfort factor that you do get from Wingman. Mm. Giant X, again, ultimates Bloody on the brink here. Lockdown and Tour de Force, two away. Now does have his already. Again, ideally, you want to see Giant X hold Liquid at 11 here before things get a little more dicey. So the finances are concerning for a couple members. See the denial of the space, but the flash through. Maybe trying to test that mid lurk again. It, it will be hoodie waiting to see if anyone dares come through, but no one is. No one's really checking this way. I mean, Keeper might be tempted, but you're not going to see him probably slow oh, yeah. with an operator. Monster so, Alt this time should at least give them safety on the site. Give them a little bit more control for at least a plant, but there is a window of chance where that could close. Yampi, Mystic, everyone nearby. And obviously the two almost kind of countering each other. Careful now. Yeah, denied on the plant. So now they've put bodies to this. Now is the pre-take time, and the patience pays. Kiko rewarded by finding Hoodie. Towards the site, though, again, that spike going down is just not happening. Liquid denying. Yes, a trade back and forth, but Nats has crept forward. He's still here to clear, left. and Burpo's been spotted. This is all getting difficult now. Team Liquid redrawing the lines of battle. The flash, the timing was outrageously good. Nats tries to just stand still and hope he wasn't spotted. But it's Redgar in a 1v1. Oh, he's got him. Redgar. Pulling it off and putting Giant X up to seven. Beautifully done. A 4K from Red Guard. I don't see them very often, but a crucial one nonetheless. Keep Giant X in this half. In this map as well. They talked about this old cycle looking pretty healthy for Giant X. That round victory is definitely going to support that as well. One off the lockdown, one off the tour to force two off the pit. And the null command will be here at the disposal of Giant X. Here. See so yeah, a back and forth exchange yeah. here. I mean, that diffuse on B side from Mystic really kind of altering the outcome in the next couple of rounds. Nats, though, back Not in again. this spot. Not again. Not again. Oh, this time. Yeah, they, <laughs> look at the difference. Wait, what? Yumpy. No, no, they've got, they got ghosts. They've got ghosts up against a full by Fatino looks dead as well. You give them an inch and they've taken a mile. Liquid. Two of these rounds are nuts that they've got in this half. The defuse against, was it three or four that Mystic pulled off right under their noses? And then that. It comes in a round where, as I said, Giant X have so many tools to try and convert this, to secure this round. Oh, I'd be fuming. Nats, not happy to sit back and let this one pass him by. This time around, Liquid crunch into B main. 
Yeah, I don't know either. Well, just... A weird yeah, fist bump from Bacon, play, nonetheless. Bacon was having none of it, wasn't he? What's up, brother? Um, at this point, we have ults. 12 to 7, though. You have three ults, and you probably quite like to use them. But Liquid have been up to weird things. They've been winning rounds that just feel a little strange. So now, what do you do, right? You've got Kiko on the other side with his ult. You've got Nats as well. And they're going to pop the ult that was spoken about, and now there's a double swing potential off the back of yellow. Do they predict this? Totally different look here. Right on the knife's edge, Mystic. He's fallen. It's all on Kiko. The one-man band. Oh, he delivers two fantastic kills. But Giant X still standing, still breathing, trying to operate with less. They've got three alive. The plant's still being denied. They're just not getting what they want from that. Oh, Nats has an angle. <laughs> Cloud. That boy is rather fortunate here. They are really chomping at the bit, Mike. I don't know what was going on behind Yellow there. I don't know if that was an upgrade or what, but Yampy's found another. Oh, and he will respond. Yeah, he definitely was looking for a weapon swap out here, but a 2v2 now for Giant X to once again try and keep hope alive here on Icebox. 30 seconds left. Side. It's Enzo by Snowman. And you've already got Yampy uh, wondering up. if they're going to try and hit, hit that A site, right? That's, that's what they're considering. It's obviously all the... Oh, come on, Enzo! Come on, no breaks allowed, as Hoodie has to isolate a kill here, and he has no idea, no clue where Yampi was, and Enzo, the known factor, still besting him. 13 to seven, Team Liquid are alive, and they close out the game, and they close the door on Giant X, bringing this one back through. A great way to bounce back here find themselves an opportunity to maybe recover this series after what was a travesty in the first map. Yeah, well, let's hope it's better on the third. Ascent on the horizon. Don't go anywhere. I know a place that will break you into a thousand pieces. Stay away from them. Stay away from Lorca, Paco, and Picasso. Don't ask about Lola. I, Caballo Grande. I, Lord Nieve. But in spite of everything, it occurs to you to visit Andalusia. Don't say I didn't warn you. Be careful of the Andalusian crush. Hey guys, it's Jimmy Lin, former professional Counter-Strike player and Valorant coach. Watch out for the stairs, clear this angle, you're going to be able to fight this. Red Bull gives you wings. Second and none. I need me a trophy, I need me a ring. I'm not with the bull, but keep it a beam. Know what it is, you know what I mean. Shit. All I do is win, 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 win. <laughs> Haters wanna hate, they ain't made top 10. <laughs> Double, triple team, what they need to defend. <laughs> I do left and I'm going with the win. I'm going with it. I feel like a champion. A champion, there ain't nothing that can't be done. Oh, yeah. I put it all on the line, definition yeah. of divine. Yeah. I feel like a champion. A champion, there ain't nothing that can't be done. Oh, yeah. I put it all on the line, definition of divine.
vision of the vine. Feel like a champ, MVP status. Yeah, the win been guaranteed. Snow, let's see about it. If you gon' speak about it, then be about it. If you don't bring that energy, no, I can't be around it. Nah, I'ma shoot my shot. I'ma stick it, watch. At the tippy top, I cannot take no loss. Two seconds on the clock, they gotta give me the rock. I got a game on what? Yeah, I got a game on lock. I feel like a champion. A champion, there ain't nothing that can't be done. Oh, yeah. I put it all on the line, definition of divine. Yeah, I feel like a champion. A champion, there ain't nothing that can't be done. Oh, yeah. I put it all on the line, definition of divine. Yeah. Welcome back to VCT, where we're going all the way because Giants X and Team Liquid are one one apiece in this epic day through showdown of week three. I'm Frankie. I am joined by Tom Biz and still for one day more before we pack you back off to Canada. Yeah. Well. And we did that. That's one of the reasons why, you know, back we're going to, to three maps. <laughs> we are oh, not Canada. Sorry, he lives in Arizona. <laughs> We had this conversation. <laughs> oh my goodness! I didn't say where though. It's a big, yeah. it's a big place. Oh he lives at number 253. He still lives <laughs> in Canada. Is <laughs> what I'm trying no, to say. There we go. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, let's actually talk about what happened in that map. Because for once, we're seeing a really nice, clean performance from Team Liquid and the way that they are taking space, making space. It's looking pretty good, Tom. Yeah, overall, I, I think they're going to be much happier with this. I think they're wasn't they weren't too reliant on hero rounds we did see it a little bit in the second half where they won a defuse in a 1v4 they also won with ghosts but the first half actually came out clinical from them i was actually impressed with how much more togetherness they had this this uh, icebox versus the other iceboxes they played they were doing a lot of these five man hits and it wasn't until later in the half like round eight and then round 10 where you know they started to do the four ones but they started off with such a strong lead just doing these five man hits whether it was a with the harbor uh, wall or at b they had the viper wall and then they were able to stagger the harbor wall on top of that and they did such explosive hits got into the site got the plant got everything done so well that they're like we're doing this no problem whatsoever let's start having that go on the lurk and and trying to find value that way well we found a lot of value from that on the lurk but also kiko on the lurk as well well yeah i, I know that you actually have a, a clip that you wanted to talk about with him sort of being a little bit a little bit sneaky in middle yeah i think there was a good round here at middle they they do a really explosive thing here they have the harbor wall go up for him he dashes under tube he's got the uh he positions himself. I don't know if they like plan this on purpose, knowing that the Killjoy turret is going to be in Boiler and it's not going to be able to, to, or sorry, in Kitchen, it's not going to be able to see him. And then the rest of the team is basically going main together, pop that Harbor ulti, and in comes that big flank from Kiko. He's able to get two people in the back, first uh, top site and then back yellow. And I thought this was pretty cool because well, I don't know how Giant X didn't know that, like, did they not hear the dash on their tube or hear the jet cloud burst or see the harbor wall going up? Like, none of those things happen. Well, you're running happen. Killjoy and Chamber. Like, if you don't have info off one of that piece of utility, yeah. something's definitely problematic. And I feel like that kind of leads into the 
the next clip as well with the the mega flank of Nats, flank, where, yeah. which was just utterly ridiculous. It's like it came in so late in the round. They're like you can even see on the map right now where he currently is. They are they've got the spike plant down. He is on the wrong side of the map and is going on the longest rotation you've ever seen in your life. Now a lot of the success of this round comes down to the rest of Liquid's player buying time. Like you have those post plant lineups and all those extra pieces of utility. But ultimately, as you can aware, otherwise I wouldn't be talking about this clip, his flank is incredibly successful. And of course, from the side of GX, at this point in the round, absolutely no idea that he's going to be there this late. Do you think they forgot about the fact that he'd be potentially coming to stab them in the back? <laughs> well, they, they haven't been doing it all game. And then also when the spikes planted top site like that, it's really good for Vipers to be kind of like yeah. towards the, the T Basically side. Basically outside yeah. A, you just, just toss doing the mollies so. in, orb on the spike, all that stuff, and just constantly just nuke the spike to fuse. Because this is one of the weird things about this map. Giant Sex have come in and they have had a successful map. Okay, they're probably a bit mentally fatigued from the fact that they had to go to so many overtimes to win it after nearly losing and ending up in overtime. Um, but there were a couple of kind of weird moments from Giant Sex where they were not covering their backs. There was obviously the Mystic Ninja Diffuse, which was a 1v4 clutch. He won not by killing anyone, but just the Diffuse and also that Liquid Eco as well. But enough about Icebox because we need to turn our attention to Ascent and we haven't actually seen Giant X play this map. So are you, at least this year, so is this what you were expecting? Yeah, I mean, still? Giant X is just doing their, like, a standard comp yeah. on this map. This is what like 90% of the teams do. I just made that setup, you know. But Team Liquid's doing what they've done before, which is, you know, having the double controller, they have the Viper with the Omen, and then they use Yoru as their uh, attacker. And um, basically the whole point of it is cut the site up with the Viper wall, get the Yoru past the choke, but it allows everyone to get past the choke. That's the main issue yeah. that people have. I'm with interested attack. in the pick for Cypher coming in because one of the things the Yoru is going to break down, you know you're going to have that coming, is Kiko should be able to bypass a lot of what Hoodie's going to have on offer. So I want to see what Hoodie has planned to almost deny that Yoru for having the success, because that's the one thing like, this Yoru does. I feel like it's quite good at disrupting the default comps. On the flip side, I think it's going to be really easy to deal with the Cypher trips with the, the Soba Shocks and everything, and then the True. Drone. And the thing about this is we knew what Liquid were going to be bringing. Yep. yep. So it's, a, it's interesting that Giants X, having built themselves back up, have still gone with this composition, but obviously this is an intent for the future, not just for Team Liquid. We are ready though to find out who is gonna take this series. So we're gonna head back to Pansy and the Hypoc as we head to a center. First one, Frankie, you're absolutely right. We are now in the third and final map. <sighs> Even Stevie's getting excited down there. We're getting ready. We're getting ready, Mike. Third map, where do you stand on this? I mean, coming in here, not much to take away from the compositions. Obviously, Liquid previously, two kind of polarizing results here with the Yoru comp, but they've stuck to it. I think there's a lot of positives that they can employ. Yes, there's an argument you can make the Giant X have the right approach here with kind of the vanilla and maybe some more comfort with the jet, but um, yeah, I think Giant X are probably going to have their hands full in, in, in terms of dealing with this. Unless they've done their homework. No, exactly, um, unless Kiko's got any other set pieces to cook up here. Red Scar in a weird spot here. Yeah, he's found two, though. Somehow, weird exchange in mid. Two in either favour. Plant will still come through, though, for Liquid. Yeah, should have the site, and the tempo can now slow down a little. Planted. Have to close the gap, clear back through. Yeah, they've got some utility to do so, but it'll take a second or two to get there. Didn't even notice Cloud actually getting tagged up as well, area. so you could argue a slight advantage here for Liquid, but everybody huddled into sight, Lauren. Yeah, a little paranoid about a lurk there, but no one is. Everyone on the site can still see him closing the doors, still a little worried that someone is behind them. Little do they know it's all three Stop, no. on the site. And Cloud taking steps through, the paranoid is going to catch it. Only he's one able to take the fight, and that's going to be Hoodie. A 1v2 needed. Kiko, yeah, a little low, but he's still breathing. He's still standing, they're still holding. Oh, the site! But time, you can hear it, it's ticking. They don't have much time on this one, and Hoodie knows that his days are numbered. And yeah, Enzo just <laughs> toying with him, teasing it with him. That's cruelty at its finest. He was looking to fire the shock dart straight at him. Liquid on the board, though. Uh, yeah, really strange. Uh, yeah, because Purpose is not expecting this at all with where Redcar is positioned over towards Sub Rosa. But two for two. I mean, the chance here maybe for. 
Trying next to pick up the pace on the flank, but... <laughs> yeah, Yampi lining up the shot back for yeah. zone. Ready for the role Hoping play. Hoping for it. Jump them. Good start. And then again, I think the paranoia you see in the retake there is if Kiko's managed to get himself into a tricky spot with a TP, so... Really giant X got their head on a swivel. Well, like we get to take the first step, and now we see if there's anything Giant X want to do back, right? Like, are they up to anything in this round in particular? Frenzy, Sheriffs, and Classics, and not much else. No progress made by Giant X, but a deeper hold towards B main. Purpo looking to try and make use of the Sheriff in that situation. Quid undecided just yet. Deploying drone. drone will sniff out. Deeper hold we were mentioning. I mean, for once, they've actually fallen for the Al drone fake. Yeah. Uh, didn't really work on the first map, but now seems to have found a little bit more validity as they do take towards the site. The pressure comes in from Cat, and Red God has they to evacuate. He had the frenzy, and he. <laughs> <laughs> Very lucky there. Three of them towards CT, two through middle. Spike planted. And the information free flowing. Nats, though. Almost pre fired, it felt like, by Purpo there. Denzo now to try and deal with the wave coming. The flood back on through. Handles two of them. Expecting that push and pull through on towards Triop, towards Cap. And he's doing well enough. Getting a little remaining. close, but they shouldn't be able to break that final hurdle. And his hoodie, yeah, gonna go down. So no harm, no foul. It was really Yampy. was that one player you never wanted to lose. He was that backbone there. But well explored by Liquid. A beautiful shot from Purple. And that's looking to swing on, obviously, on the back of his spy camp being removed here. Giant X nearly finding a way back into this, but unfortunately, with limited investment on the side of Liquid, it's not necessarily upgrades for them to find on the back of these picks. Like you noted, Yampi, as long as he's safe, tucked away somewhere with a rifle, nothing really gets out of hand. Mm. Clean start here on the decider for Liquid. I mean, out of all the bonuses we've seen, though, this isn't probably the most threatening. We've seen a couple of those Guardians coming out. So I'll be interested to see if maybe this is the one where we do see Giant X get, you know, that 2-1 start. They can start building off the back, but Redgar again. I mean, it, the tempo on this is is, is quite bizarre because... It, he's, he's got all the way into again. sub Rosa, yeah. But are they going to be considering this? This was used early, right? This, I, I feel like Liquid are going to consider it at some point. Now, we, we have to wait and see when on the other side. And it's so dangerous to do this. When I'm sure the Liquid would love an upgrade or two, but they don't consider it. Oh my god. Oh, it could have been more. Yeah. It could have been more, and that is another rifle. Could have yep. argued, should have been. Uh, absolutely. It, now, the, the issue is that it is on Mystic, and he can't quite ferry it any closer just yet. But again, that's still fine. You'll still take that. That's still huge. Purpose yeah. position, he didn't relent. He still held on the back side of that. So Yampi goes down and. What? What is going on here? Did they just forget Purpo existed? As now Enzo and Nats, both with rifles, up against three in middle, and we've just got a fight. Everyone's One swinging, they're all remaining. taking opening fights. What a strange round, Mike. Break that down for me. I'm kind of curious what they were going for there. I mean, Mystic's core with Smoketown maybe just not computing the fact that Yampi's fallen. They don't have that, that safety net of the Viper Wall cutting sight lines in mid. Again, even there, descended into chaos. Said <laughs> Red Guard. Even here, yeah, Yampi's way ahead of it, so there's a big window. There's for a gap there, here. yeah, that's the bit that catches uh, me, the timing. Maybe just not anticipating a swing onto yeah. Purpo's angle. Nice. Oh, sorry, a Purpo to swing onto that angle yeah. for him to tuck himself in, but I mean, in that situation, he's always going to keep swinging that. So, yeah, a little bizarre, but. Not quite how I imagined Giant X getting that round, but a round nonetheless for them. Time to jump. Again, keeping eyes on this, it looks like a high priority for Giant X to get Purpo posted up, right? That is something they want to kind of build back to. They're leaving Nats on that side of the map with the TP. Actually, Yampi kind of drifting this way, so I wonder if that's the eventual goal. But that spike is up cat as it stands. Yeah, it will be cancelled off on the knife. Tino slow things down as well, dealing with the climb. Fast rotation across the purple is probably hurt. It's huge, yes. It's only one <sighs> note. Dash pop, but not able to get away. No, but it's still going to be a split, right? They're still utilizing middle rather than cat. Obviously, that <laughs> wherever the Aldrin is, they're not on that side of the map. Just call it that for now. As it stands, though, two players already onto the call. Hoodie being one of them. The Paranoid didn't isolate him, but actually it's Kiko to take him away. Sight is now available, and so should be the plant. But the issue is it's still on Enzo, and he's tucked in the corner. Take it away, and Giant X claw back into the game. 
And so caught on switch here with the spike. No chance to even convert that through. I think that's what we're seeing there, the information being relayed. Maybe something has gone awry on the way into sight here. Oh, I think we found the kills that they needed, at least to get themselves into a post plant, but... Oh, it takes a weird pause ahead of getting onto site and yeah, waiting to confirm another kill in CT potentially. Here. A little bizarre, but speaking of bizarre, Bucky on the board. Oh, for Kiko. Mm. Trying to make things work pretty quickly, I imagine. Yes. What's he doing? Paranoia. Bucky. <laughs> you can see the cloud was ready with a shorty, but I mean, the man was blind. There's not much you can do. Paranoia, yeah. yeah, that was really well done. Set to motion, so they get the side control, but can they get that spike across? Hoodie wants to deny that if he can. Try and catch some chip damage on them on the way through. Keep on getting really anxious at this. Wants to get into it. Oh, dear. Get on the spam. Beautiful. But that rifle is recoverable, so you can drop to the next man now. Spike is in, so time's on their side. Lots of util to work with. Still for Giant X, and that's maybe one of the key pieces on the other side, though. Enzo trying to send this down range. Does get a tag and a frag. Fiddy from afar. And it's down to three. Mike, this is getting really dangerous. Yeah, Tripwire dealt with, but one way goes up here. Giant X need another kill. But it's traded out. Mystic's found a response. But Red Guard's been really on fire this game. Mechanically, actually hitting some shots. Ah, uh, why did I say it? And now Purple with that operator feeling less and less invested. And this is getting all go. Oh, God, why did I say it? Why did I say it? What have I done? Team Liquid. Oh, dear. They'll be happy. But I don't think Giant X will be with that sort of uh, moment. No, you could argue um, it's not the prettiest end to the round, no. but uh, statistically, at this Ooh. point, it's going to be a difficult recovery nonetheless. That Beautiful was... setup here for Kiko. That was so nice at the start. And not an awful lot you can do in that situation if you cloud. One enemy uh, the, the widest of swings. The popping <laughs> swing on that, just keep it holding it down. Oh, it's sad. Uh, like, uh, it's, it's a mental heart. killer. My heart breaks a little bit, especially after that mid moment as well. Like Red Guard's, I, I mean, keep in mind, Red Guard is top fragging for the uh, Giant X side. So, you know, there is some validity to what I'm saying, I promise you. But still, that's that's going to, that's, that's a little sour moment. But anyway, yeah. shake it off and move on. You look to see what we're coming out from Liquid. This, 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 I'm going to be honest, Mike, this is one of the weirdest Valorant I've seen in a moment. It's been an odd day yes. so far. How have you found it? Entertaining. <laughs> but, but I don't think Purpo's going to be feeling no. that. <laughs> Blade Storm removed now. Yampi I... on the Viper with an Operator. Of course. <laughs> of course he is. And these are the sort of kills that are versus a Yoru comp. You don't really want to see Liquid getting kind of dry engagements on the extremities because then they have so many options. I think that's maybe why Giant X are I looking to like... prioritize mid. Mm. Maybe catch some of these. <laughs> The stragglers in rotation, maybe when they're trying to fake a site and then capitalize yeah. on Kiko's TP. Yeah. Everyone's in the right place. Everyone's here. We're all in this together. That's, big info. That's huge. Okay. Nice stall as well. Hoodie's going to slow left. down Kiko. He can't break in. Now, with 25 seconds, how are you going to get on the site? I'm, I'm kind of interested what the plan is. Is it Enzo on the operator? Is that the, the entry point? Because it's still doesn't, util. Doesn't feel good, no. No, no, Michael, this feels quite bad. This feels awful. As Giant X are going, well, they've got 20, 20 seconds, seconds to try and take the say against all of us. Uh, and this is a perfect example of when Giant X can take this space away. Like I said, Red Guard's position is fairly pivotal. It might look a little troll that he's just walking into mid every round, but he's there to yep. cancel out some of these fakes. And then when you have Hoodie in a position to get into, or anybody on the side of Giant X, whoever's holding onto these sides to get into spots that Kiko wants to TP into. Late round, if you can stop him. You see here, it's actually just a spam. <laughs> uh, Murphy maybe notes the, the TP preemptively. But that's when you can't, I mean, Josh was talking about this, so you can't split those angles off the choke point. If somebody's holding Kiko's TP constantly, it's not even as if you can really set him up with the paranoia comfortably. Because it's not red, so I'm I not got so that. nervous. No, it's not red yet. yet. I just didn't see the word. Yeah, no, I know. And then I saw Mystic, like, relax, and I'm like, oh, but it's fine. It's a liquid timeout. Um, Oh, I'm so scared in this game of being another technical. Yeah, I mean, to, to, to be honest, <laughs> the, the, the complete opposite is what we're looking for, right? Which yeah, is kind yeah. of fast hits from Liquid, but need, there needs to be consideration around it. 
Uh, I mean, once Giant X take this space and they get Redgar set up, which is obviously the game plan, yeah. then I think they're going to be able to get themselves fairly comfortable in some of these yeah. rounds. And Kiko doesn't get away with some of that cheese of TPing into the back lines. Yeah. I, this this map just feels like neither team are very comfortable yet. I, I actually, I, I'm glad you highlighted what Redgar was doing. It does feel like Giant X have some of the answers, right? Like, because again, if you ignore that fifth round, they would have had quite a decent streak here. Now that sounds silly, it's like, yeah, if you can go one of the rounds, it would have been great. But still, like, they would have been on a four round streak since the pistol. So it would have been the more kind of uh, valid rounds, right? If you want to talk about the gun rounds. But since then, again, it's just a very uh, out of tempo, very off game feel so far. And I don't think that's going to really stop as it stands. But we're going to find out as the operator is still in hand with Purpo. So he's going to be willing to take fights, challenges. And look who's going walking again. Redgar is willing to do this every single time. Thing is, in the rounds that it's unconfirmed, it makes the head. Oh my god, the timing. He's caught Mystic. He just wants to get out of there. Get out of dodge, and he does. I mean, and they've lost out on Mystic early, so what do they have to depend on late? I mean, at least here it's confirmed, right? This is a confirmation that it is happening. The rounds the Liquid don't spot out these sort of pushes from Red Guard, those are the concerning ones, because that's yeah. when they will get caught off in rotation. So now looking to line up a dart. Just try and force somebody off an angle or find some utility. But he nonetheless tucked into a site. And again, the problem is you've still got Purpo then, who's adjusted from middle, going to go sit towards B main, right? So again, committing to the extremity while playing safe on the other side of the map. Even if we could get right up in the middle, it seems like it's already accounted for. Cloud's keeping a shoulder on this. Like, yeah, market yeah. might be a bit sketchy, right? That could be a little bit scary, but there's still Purpo, right? So Purpo can punish. He's going to find Kiko fall left. away. There's no second layer of pressure. They're down in 25 seconds. And Purpo can just keep doing damage, right? He's got support on site in the form of Cloud. Do they continue on this trajectory? What? Yes. And they've got to do a try. There's nothing fun Back about down. this for Liquid. The they are so out. red. And yeah, the pit's a little One interesting. As now, what are you going to do? Nothing. And that flash over the top there from Fatinho. Yeah. <laughs> what was that? I mean, the first one, a full team flash, but actually, Yampi getting caught on the outside of this pit, which I think is just to try and cut off the CT, but again, there's no guarantee you find this plant. I think it just comes to it exactly yeah. the same time as I fell. I didn't catch the voice line the first time around. Yeah, that, f that f flash. Jesus. Still catching on the backside there. They've got to come up with a plan. Now, they've had one timeout so far. I think Liquid still have another. Would they exactly. burn it in this half? I don't know. But you're kind of hoping IGL-wise they can find a solution to Getting Red Guard taking away a lot of space from them. Now, obviously, you can't do this every round. That would just be silly. Uh, and obviously, no need to in this round. No, but no, again, uh, yeah. pace change here, Mike. Exactly. With this purchase, you don't want to see Red Guard running, no. uh, running down mid. No. Uh, I'm not punished. No. I was surprised. I thought he might have been caught there, but... Oh. He may be trying to find the spam with the Guardian, but... I miss when you look sharp at the previous hit. Just have Cloud and support, so not necessarily a concern just yet. <laughs> They're trying to make him sweat here. Liquid just holding just close enough, and that's... I don't think he even fired off a shot then, unless I missed it. And as Cloud gets to take these... Oh, God, what the hell is that? <laughs> that was a disgusting <laughs> transfer. <laughs> um, Enzo, I mean, Mystic made a go of it, right? But what are you going to do, Enzo? 1v4 here, 40 seconds. I mean, 47 HP. A chance. 30 seconds Maybe left. to catch somebody. Well, <laughs> <laughs> nearly. Red car. <laughs> of course it would be red car if anybody on the side of Giant X, but... He finds the kill. Mm. Giant X find their fifth. Right, so here comes the, the interesting part, right? Have they found the solution? What's the next steps then as well for Giant X? You can't keep doing the same thing, but you want it to still have that similar effect, right? Yeah. So you can't just keep walking Red Guard down middle. So what do you do now? How do you keep track of any of these adjustments that they might be trying to run? Well, I, I, I think for Liquid, honestly, it, I do think the response is a little pace in the early yeah. rounds. Yeah. If they're allowing Giant X to take this space, then, then ultimately they are limiting their options or I, I guess the efficacy of this sort of composition. And try and work towards the ultimate once again for Kiko. They have the TP and the Neural Theft for Liquid, but... Look how deep Purpo's exploring. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, now, now it, it, it's not where I challenge her. Yeah, I mean, they've got a good feel for the map, though. Yeah. I think they're, they're kind of reading that, yeah, Liquid has set up in, a, in a, a widespread default, looking for an engagement on one side of the map. They did this before, but there's no really way out here for Kiko, so I'm kind of curious what his game plan is, unless they double pump towards A. It, it kind of looks like it's like a double fake almost. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, well, with Mystic coming over here, maybe if they fake, it's still a chance for him to TP elsewhere. It's the drones who actually try and fake into B main. Yeah, will be confirmed. But Popo's going to know there's nothing behind it. There's a spy cam as well. It, again, the reliance on these Aldra and fakes just, just aren't enough to sell. You've still got four players here for Giant X. Yeah, Bridgar gets forced out of his first position, but he's still here and he's got support now coming in from heaven. Isolated two on the site, but they need to deny them the step forward cloud. Just farming. Death from above. Liquid left. looking too simplistic here, too readable. And now Yampi in a 1v5. Uh, there's, there's 20 seconds. He's got a whole lot of players to deal with. It's not going to happen. Cloud, excellent work from the side, but Mike, uh, it's it's too obvious. Yeah, and again, uh, these sort of defaults, if you're waiting, anticipating, or trying to capitalize on rotations to find a pick on one yes. side, you still have to achieve something with a default. Mm. And the fact, I'm not sure when the spy cam's activated, or if that's the first yeah, I time. Catch that, yeah. If it was activated was previously, seconds. somebody has to remove that, because you, you can't fake versus that sort of utility. If that's so deep on main, it's going to confirm behind the drone that it's just Enzo. Even if he pushes forward, best case scenario, he finds a kill on Purpo. There's still a camera. It's yeah. not going to sell anything. It's not like an instant no. you know, red alert, no. And, it, and it, I think, is this the second liquid timeout? or is this Yeah, this is, yeah. Yeah, they've burned um, both, yeah. Which I believe I, in a space of what, four rounds? I think yeah. it was before round six. I'd, I'd like to see more options, because again, the first map felt like they were very dependent on those Aldrone fakes. And again, if Giant X read in it, into it in map one, they're going to uh, maybe not consider it completely here, being like, oh, of course, every single time. But you know, there is going to be that point in their mind that they're not just going to lap that up. And as you said, deal with that utility that's committed there. Obviously, that comes with the caveat of you do have to clear Purpo, but still, it, if you want to sell this, yeah, it, 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 it requires a much deeper commitment. It, yep. you, you can't just sit outside tiles, can't sit safe behind, you know, the shed out, outside B lobby. It, it's that's not the case with this this sort of uh, this sort of round at least. If you want to try and sell something, somebody has to commit to an opening engagement, not just kind of pray that Giant X will give you one. Yeah. And now the, the, the problem becomes the economy to boot, right? They, they should have a buy behind this, quite a decent one. They're going to have alts to play with, but they're going to face seven rounds regardless. They, I, I mean, hey, look, maybe maybe they can convert something there, but it's going to be very, very difficult to do so. So this is a good round to maybe kind of go through the protocol list of how they want to address some of this utility or maybe just kind of keep it in mind, right, of what they need to be executing going forward. And again, a little bit of a split here. 3-2. What that? Oh, say, Kiko. Got to be careful of that kill trip. Yeah, it's on such a deep angle to clear it. Very difficult. Punished, removed here. Spike not committed just yet. This is Liquid kind of dipping their toes, testing the water in a main. Right here. We struggle to find much else here. Boys Two sheriffs, so a chance to find a pick at least. Mm. Yampi trying to scale behind some of his utility. Yeah, Giant X, uh, I mean, look how deep they are. Purpose is the only one really committed on anything. He's got the dashes posted deep with an operator as well. Got to favor him in a round like this. Yeah, down. Not too worried about it. Maybe they can isolate him from that crunch, but the door's still in play, right? So it's like, there's his yeah, because it's pistols, offset of timing. It takes a long time <laughs> yeah. to chip away at that. Yeah, spam in there. I was kind of looking at this, if they were kind of using this as like um, a, a mini timeout as well, just kind of taking their time over chat, but I didn't see Enzo kind of talking through too many options while they were waiting in middle. So I was, I was kind of interested if they were going to use this as an extended pause, but not really the case, just kind of trying to play out what's in front of them, explore middle a little bit, and there's, there's no threats to be found in Giant X. Gonna be happy with what they've done so far, and Lucia flawless here, so they keep everything they come in with financially becoming excessively stable. And now, uh, Liquid need to deliver here, Mike. This is, there's no two ways about it. It's got to be like this. Yeah, map one, streaky in terms of consecutive rounds here, but a little more concerning to see it in map three in, in terms yeah. of the nature nah. of some of these round it's losses insane, for Liquid. Insane. Well, I guess a real positive if you're looking at it from a Giant X perspective. Mm. They've controlled this composition of Liquid very well. Ooh, battle on short here. Bit of a fight for middle, it looks like, Mike. 
Yeah, they're getting into this one. Purpose fully committed. And oh my wait, Redgar's walking mid again. And he's just about to pull this back out of the hat. So this is the sort of round where I hope if this has been noted in the timeouts, what the response is if Liquid try and prioritize a site, which it looks like they might try and catch a window towards B site, but Cloud's still That's here. Committed. Does have the hunter's fury, so like curious to see him commit towards a site position. Yeah, deeper owl drone, and there's the ult as well, just to add on top of it. There's no assistance coming. Cloud, you are on your own. How much can one man do? The Paranoia Send, he knows what's coming his way now. Oh, but the flash on top. Lovely adjustment there as well. Adding layers to this, knowing the spam would be in play. But we've seen this play before. It's not the first time. But Redgar, going to remove mistake. move is an opposing number. And that's now. Will be noted with a knife. So further information, potentially. No way. Not necessarily Hold clear. On. Exactly oh. on the position. But a huge ultimate from Enzo. Yeah, they're trying to scramble, trying to get out of there. Oh, almost got Purpo down as well. Now the three of the walk-in wounded. Looking a little less healthy than they want. Nat's waiting for that smoke to dissipate. If he gets a chance, he's going to hear the steps. The timing might just be right. The flash! Outstanding! Coming in. And Liquid... Whew, this time they get it. I mean, that might just be best-case scenario recovered half here for Liquid. A chance to maybe find five, but at least coming out of this, 8-4, yeah, you're not necessarily happy, but with how it's gone, Flash was fantastic from Kika. How did it get all three the there? Yeah. Just, yeah, really impressive. Yeah. But yeah, to even just, uh, I, I guess, plug the lead, stop the bleeding here in terms of that run around. Crucial for Liquid. And it will be a miracle if they do find a 7-5, to be honest. Because they looked shut out of this. Okay, so I'm wondering if Yampi noted the utility invested late towards B main. Again, we still know that there is a play here in the form of Purpo. Here. Here. So have they righted their wrongs? Right, have they learned these lessons? As they're trying to kind of imply pressure in middle. Going to force out the Aldrone on the other side. Or is it or? And it's Yampi to go and try and clear this camera. little game of chess between these two, the information game early. Yeah, Liquid is so cautious. I mean, this time around, not in the typical kind of 2-1-2 two, two mm. that they have been. It's like they were trying to get a split going early on, but maybe not liking the look of something. Kiko now going to try and... Oh. This is really close. Bye, Fatinio finds a swing so well and gets out of danger until then. Enzo on a trade. Okay, so they've made impact this time. A one for one trade out, but Hoodie gets cleared. This is better. But still, the final boss waiting is Purpo, and he was the problem. Yeah, they get the info, but they still have to get past him if they want to, I guess, nail the landing on this B site. You know where he is. We got to handle him. Mystic does well to find Cloud just charging into the smoke. In name and in nature, he finds his value, but it's Purpo still. Still the problem on the back of the site. Still finding the kills. And did he spot Mystic? I think he absolutely did. But oh, stunning from Purpo. The final boss stands, and Liquid don't get past him. And it's just another example, though, of how split Liquid are. It takes so long for them to collapse behind what is a, a win, effectively. And I say a win, it's a trade. It comes to a trade in three, <laughs> and ultimately, it's not Kiko you want to see fall because he's the one that can TP yeah. out, capitalize on the pressure elsewhere on the map. And then, like I said, it takes a full 10, 15 seconds after Yampi dies to even descend upon B site. 8-4. Uh, it's, it's not impossible, it's, it's but... It's not, no, it did. Like I said, I still come back to the same thing. It yeah. feels like a bit of a recovery at the end here to yeah. even find one. Like, I, I'm... I'm Cause what, it was the clutching pistol. the straws. Yeah, because yeah, it was the pistol the and then this. Here. Oh, man. Yeah, sorry, but yeah, pistol, round five, and then round yeah. 11. Yeah, yeah. Like... Oh. Ain't easy. <laughs> Ain't easy. If you're a Giants fan, yeah, you're going to be happy with what you've seen. They, they won the kind of, I guess, the... The harder rounds to convert, the rifle rounds, they had a good beat on the game, but... Ooh, Redgar. Gonna be left feeling a little bruised after that. Reeling on 64. Nat's posted up. This, this is very proactive, actually, from Liquid. And so it's got to be careful, because he could get isolated here. If there's pressure felt on extremities, the normal answer is middle. I think Giant X, you can see them kind of considering that. That's the expected. Next step here. 
Trying to get uh, Rats back into a similar position we saw on Icebox a few times. Tucked behind a box. <laughs> and the only open segment is here. Now, yeah, there is utility, but once that's gone, it's game on. And they're going to be isolated towards main. The smoke actually going to kind of adjust the routing a little more. Going to take him towards heaven, but Redguard's just kind of playing his oh, life. Yeah, I was going to say, you want to just see him sit here. He's got the yep. paranoia, so he can set up the rest of the team to retake this space if necessary. This is smart from Redguard. It's so well read. This is really, really well done. They're not going to clear this deep. They may consider it, but he's, he's kept two players busy. Yeah, that's beautiful from Redguard. A one-for-one one trade out. They might have to be now careful of A main in the kind of, I guess, post-plant, but that, that was really well done from him. Heads up work, three players noted. They now know everything. They have the full information and full picture. Giant X shouldn't have too many surprises, so Liquid got to really turn up here with some shots. Get that information back on track. Nice couple of attacks found towards Nats. It's actually Cloudify and Yampi ends on the trade, and it's going to be Nats trying to find them towards Hell. But it's not going their way, but still, Kiko and Enzo against the odds, against the information. The red guy worked so hard for, turns it on its head. He buys a ton of time, but just can't hold on. I think maybe anticipating that the grid have finally given up on trying to dig him out of that position. Initially, I mean, with Yampi. Yeah, Yampi's uh, nice! attempt to throw himself back onto site here. Liquid able to come out on top. Again, not out of this map just yet. Set themselves up to get themselves a comeback going here in the second half. Right here. You know you play cloud, Yeah, cloud, cloud almost blocked out there. By the way, you can see the moment of panic. Again, just oh. all dip. Well, that's actually oh, the smoke, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the shock dial on top. It's a blender. Cloud, yeah, he's alive on AHP. Oh. <laughs> That's a flawless and a half. It ain't pretty, but it's job done. Okay. All right, Liquid. You're taking the first steps. Sell me on it now. Once we get into these gun rounds, hey, this is your bonus, so I'm not going to hold you to such a high standard, but I want to see in the gun rounds. But for now, they've done what they needed, Mike. Two steps. That's it. Pistol, convert second, and look at how they did it as well. Yeah, that's lush work coming out. I mean, you take it when you get them. It ain't the prettiest, but hey, job done. Exactly. Yeah, same. True. I was just about to say that, Enzo. I agree. He's been See, playing with Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> I was just saying, Cloud buying the Odin back into this. Yeah, a smile from Enzo to confirm. They're trying to dig him out of that position. I have the spike. You have to try and make this work now. Again, a little more difficult to justify on the attack. Nonetheless. Let's see how it does progress. Let's see the drone going to clear through towards the bottom mid here. Uh, I mean, Liquid very proactive on the other side of the map, looking towards short, but forced back now. And going to re-explore main. Cutting through. Still a minute left on the clock as well, so yeah. this is very proactive from Yeah, Liquid. it is. I quite, I quite like it. Timing could be rather interesting too. They're going to get so much information, but again, I don't know how Giant X are going to read this either, because they're, they're making slow but steady progress towards B, up middle. Yampi, he's drifting away, because there, there has been enough time passing now. A little bit of info, and now here comes the burst, but it's going to be Nats and Enzo here. Oh, God, look at the state of this. Cloud oh leaps on in. Actually, it's Bourbon Clear Enzo. Sights available and open. Happy found one. In towards. Oh, he has, yeah. Spike planted. Can he actually follow up on this, though? And, and again, these outlaws aren't going to be what they really want here either, because look at the armor that's on the other side. This isn't going to be as comfortable as maybe no. they'd want. Trying to spam their way through, but there's so many unknown angles, so many issues they could face, and I can't say Kiko's pretty far away from this still. I mean, they're looking to just kind of yeah. herd them in here. It looks like it. Remove these weapons as best they can. I mean, it is just a bonus, I guess. That's maybe not the worst outcome. I think now Giant X have realized. <laughs> Trying to exit through on Cat. Oh, oh, like side. That's so sick. Very nice work from Yampi. Beautifully done. Going to cost them a lot here. 
maybe even consider did I have time for that defuse? No, absolutely not. But still, you take him. Nice little bonus there. Cost him a great deal. For reinvestment required here, but I guess that's how you make the attack in Odin work. Just jump on Nats's head. Response found here. And, I mean, the patch is not as bad. All things considering. One off the Hunter's Fury for Cloud as well. But Liquid have set themselves up here in the second half. Three rounds left to find to close this gap. Looking towards middle because Kiko is eyeing up tiles, but wondering how far he's okay. This he's got a ton of space here. To explore. Yeah, Fatino's sitting really deep on this. I'm wondering Fake what the game teleport. plan is. Time to jump. It looks like they want to re-clear middle. Uh, maybe Cloud's aware of the possibility. Yeah, well, I mean, he was considering it, but actively clearing. Yeah, decent, no. decent tag on Kiko, though. Down yeah. to 46, so that will humble him maybe for the rest of this round. Keep him in check. <laughs> Still a little worried, so, yeah, though, wait. Yeah. Anyone down there? No. It was a single man Imagine mission. Imagine Redgar calling to clear that spot. <laughs> More than likely. What do they do now? Down to four, right? Like early damage. They're not finding any easy pathing, but again, very patient Keeps from Giant X. Walking towards this trip, though. Just outside market. That'll be confirmation. No time, 30 seconds Spy left. cam to confirm numbers on the way in here as well. So yeah, gonna be tough. Giant X to continue pushing forwards here towards B. And seconds. They know they're going towards a Nats held site. Never easy. 14. Yeah, there it is. That's why Nats is always good for one, but he does get traded out. But it's Yampi then to take over the mantle. Eight seconds for this plan. They need to defend him. Hoodie tries but fails. Team Liquid still standing, still breathing, and closing the gap. Nine to seven now. Another step in the right direction for Liquid. And this has humbled the money off that fantastic bonus round. The amount they achieved there, this quells any of those purchases back from Giant X. Again, the, the trip just so deep on lane. You can see Purpo's conscious of it. He doesn't want to just barrel onto site, but even so. You allow Nats to sit comfortable in those sort of setups. He's usually going to punish. Well, the timeout will come through from Giant X now moment to reconsider their approach potentially again it's just it's been fairly clean valorant from liquid in the second yeah. half here it's not an awful lot for giant x to really take away from this and identify as a problem or no, something, to, yeah, something to target troubleshooting wise and i wonder if it's more just kind of how they're approaching the map because again we've seen this kind of like very patient mid plays maybe just how they want to kind of look around to maybe remove kiko from this or be aware of that but sure, again I even then it's it's very hard to kind of have an over overall idea of how to deal with it. That's always the thing you want to see, which are playing versus a Yoru, particularly when on the defense, is yeah. waiting for something to maybe happen. Right. As soon as the barrier uh, drops, mm. it's like, mm, is somebody drifting forwards? But there was a huge gap in mid here that, yep. that Kiko exploits fairly comfortably to us with no yeah. support. There was no utility to put it in motion. It was pretty much, I'm walking out mid. And I was a little surprised because Fatinho and Cloud both seemed kind of considering it, but neither but invested cam, utility. Drone, recon, yeah. like there's tools there to right sniff that out. Yeah, no one went for it. So I was a little, yeah, wonder if that's maybe the change. Oh, it's Enzo. Oh, and that's, oh God, they've not seen one of these players. And the last time nah. in these sort of rounds, they, I don't think they saw them either. So they don't let Enzo get back on. I was going to say, Hoodie's already tagged up. Yeah. You can see him just. Tucking oh. into the corner. Escapes the drone as well. Giant X very quickly reduced to three. Well, one and three quarters. One and three quarters. <laughs> That's how we talk about Tom and Mitch. Right. <laughs> I don't know why I'm flaming him today. It's because he's not here. I mean, I just you know, flame Mitch a little bit. There's too much Odin. You just think of Mitch. Yeah, it makes him. you want to like, be uh, upset and take it out on Mitch, because I think he encouraged it, if, effort, if anything. But Again, there's there's no real easy avenue forward here, Giant X, but they're gonna try what they can. 
and uh, Yami's position is basically wraps on this round. It, the the, the second, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so good. Again, him taking over that A main control, he already had the round in hand when they don't have a split towards it. There's no yeah. threat there. So again, nine to eight gap. Again, closing now. And if we get nine nine, it gets a little fun. But they do have that snowball round almost in touching distance. Mike, it's right there for Giant X. Yeah, looking on the other side of things. Hunter's Fury, yes, a pit to maybe slow things down on the defense for Liquid. You're absolutely right. Giant X gonna have plenty of tools at their disposal here, should they get Patino and Purple another orb. Mm -hmm. Okay. Early round towards B, not gonna happen. Okay, that's a vibe that's a, and a half. Yeah, that's yeah. a wide spread on that. They completely cut off any possibility of splitting through eight. The Yampies works better than Nats is, is what we figured out. That's going to... I wonder how that kind of tempers maybe Giant X's plans, because it's very hard to kind of apply pressure in those choke I mean, it's, up it, cat. It, this is the sort of pit that you have to walk so far into it that you're always going to be one HP. Yampi yeah. can just sit at the yeah, other side right. of that, and it's, it's not one that you can really challenge with utility, because there's such a huge gap to close on him. Unfortunately, the other side of this may be reading into this that, you know, the, the pits here, maybe they don't have Nats' as utility alongside it. Got a pop flash waiting on this. Hello. Hoodie. Right, Hoodie lives here. This is how, huge. How are you alive? Kiko's mad about it. He's furious. Hoodie looks so chill about this. Like, someone just flew at me with a shorty. They had a little setup for me. I'm all good. I'm going to still get He should never one. get one in that situation. I don't know how he did, but it's a miracle and it's worked out well. But they're going to get a plant here, but they're going to be worried about Cat. There's no subtlety to where Team Liquid are going to be residing, but can they handle them? So far, the answer is no, but it's traded back and forth. Mystic going to put down Redgar, who caught Nats, but the plant gets denied for a set. Oh, God. Oh, God, again, Enzo. He's such a nuisance to play up against. He's and drifts got, away. Now as well. And you can hear it there. He gets the tag on oh, oh dearie yeah. me, this has gone from bad to worse. There's not much more they can do. Six seconds now. Just put a body to it if you can. Oh, there it ready. is. Denied. Round is there. Yeah. Team Liquid playing from the back. Positions noted. Everything noted. And they still get the value. We're back up all even. Nine apiece here. Liquid turning up now. Almost a little bizarre that Giant X find success at A site. Like I said, Hoodie. Mm. All you could want and more from that situation. I'm not sure even actually if Nat's repositioned on the back of the spike cam being removed, maybe thinking it was a split towards B. Yeah, ridiculous wall bag to come through from Enzo. Oh. What do you think that signified? Just shimmy inside the pit. <laughs> That's what it was. <laughs> I was just wondering. I'm sorry for you on yeah. the spot like this. Um, as it stands, though, talking of the snowball round, well, they, they've only got sheriffs to complement it. So we see a little bit of light armor, but yeah, Purple are going to bring out the knives. Maybe that's a chance to do some Here. serious damage. We haven't really seen them be able to explore. Sure, it seems a high priority going out from Liquid to keep control of this. Early utility coming out from the Yampi. And that sack's going walkies. Yeah, hello, Kiko, going to find Red Cop. And the trade out, yeah, Cloud going to claim one back, but they need a couple more, and they're not going to get a couple more. It's just for the EDO. And wow, Liquid taking matters into their own hands, being proactive there. And that's 10. Double digits found. But until they're across the finish line, Mike, I ain't saying a word. Yeah, I, I, I don't even want to talk about the score just yet. I don't care if it's 12. Comfortable second half, we'll leave it at that. Yeah, that's fine. They've done the hard work, though, getting back into this decider. Considering how the first half went. Kiko now. We'll pick up the operator, so another spanner in the yeah. works. Okay. Maybe something to throw off yeah. the early round protocols yeah. here. Not going to be as aggressive, trying to just find himself on an angle. Yeah. Well, no presence off the rip here. This is quick from Purpo. Right in the mean, middle. Uh, uh, wise for Kiko to not even just retreat, but TP all the way out. Yeah, they felt enough of that pressure. Al drone to try and re assess the space, but tonight quite early and actually before it could clear Purpo. So maybe he gets played in, maybe not, because Yampi just swings Cat, takes away Cloud, and they get the early man advantage. Giant X is just getting nothing. Red got, okay, I've told a lie. I've told an absolute fable and a fib because Yampi comes creeping out of the how? corner. I don't know how, how he's living, let alone how he got that kill. I don't understand. I'll handle this here. Okay. So actually big info from Kiko. Okay, but the paranoia gets sent. We've got 
a 3v2 here. Spike is down. Ults are coming out everywhere. This is a game of information. Back and forth. Kigo top middle. Trying to hit that adjustment, and it's great. Ridgar's gone down. Flash off the back, but it's all on Hoodie. Notes the one on short. Knows there's one towards top middle, but he can't get past Kiko. Keeps him down. Readjusts well. Very unorthodox, but it works. Yampi gets out of this corner for after the fragment gets posted <laughs> in, by the way. Yep. And uh, just hits him with a full running. Cloud so conscious he can't back into either corner Look here. At this. Wow. Because he's tagged and revealed, he has to just commit towards Sorry. holding the short angle. Really nice setup for the mid crunch from Liquid. Like I said, on the back of discipline, really, Kiko not giving away that opener mm. feels enough pressure, as you noted, to just TP out, not look for a second angle. Flash. Surely Liquid close this out, right? <laughs> They're up 11 to 9. It's been an exceptional half. Clean Valorant, confident Valorant. What a flip from the 8 4, though. Like, it's, yeah. it, it's crazy. Genuinely. To think about. Time to jump. Oh, we've cursed it so severely now. Are you ready for Giant X against one? Mm. Sorry, Liquid fans. It's just for the fun. And a, little, a little bit of an adjustment here. No presence in middle that's been noted early. No steps towards B. It's the first time we're seeing this kind of A-side investigation so cleanly. There's that late mid presence going to be handled, but that's actually going to send away, if anything, Kiko towards the side of the map that they're going to be going on. And here we go, Purpo jumping at the bit. This time he's going to get in there, but it's Yampi playing from Dice, and he rolls them well, but Purpo on the trade out. Still a three to three. Where is the spike? It's left at main. That's still a problem here. Still an issue. Couldn't quite capitalize on the kill that could have happened there, but here comes the collection, hopefully, of the player and the spike. But they've got to be careful about this one. Patino back on his feet, but it's hurt. What? 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 Oh, well, we've cursed them. We've cursed them severely, Michael. I can't believe we've done it, but it's Nats now in a 1v4. They're all standing, and it's 10 for Giant X. Taking one step back here. The first time we've really seen them explore that A side like this. How did Hoodie get two? Show me there? Hoodie's POV. Please. I don't get it. I don't understand. The second one was definitely blind through the cage, but I mean. This is Yampi. Yeah, Yampi slows things nice. down here, gets the knock on to Fatinho, obviously. Did the best he could. Okay. Oh. <laughs> That's nuts. Uh, a tough pill to swallow for Liquid. It wasn't, it wasn't a full investment. Obviously, there were weapons brought into that for yeah, Giant yeah, X, yeah. but again, Liquid teed up to find themselves 12. Just missing the mark. They're clearing the knife, kind Here. of indicating they have taken over B main control, but the question mark is who? Who resides there? Enemy and so Love a bit of info, really reading into this heftily. Giant X cautious on every corner. Kind of huddled into outside B main here. Mm. Question marks across the map, yes, but... Just find something to springboard off, a catalyst here for this B site execute. Is that enough to indicate that the operator was there? I, I, I don't really know what they... Oh, Yampi. Yampi. Don't do Yampi things. He's thinking about it, though. Portal closed. He's thinking of... Oh, dear! And Hoodie and Fatinho aren't thinking of anything because they're dead. A re-aggressor on Kiko. A little maybe over the top there, but hey, take what you can get at this point. The paranoia gets posted, so it slows them down. The smoke is great, but they're going to disrespect it. Purple going to go straight forward, but it's Red Guard to fall. Enzo's going to catch him with a spam. And now there's issues galore as Mystic adds insult to injury. Liquid back on track, holding it down. The three still alive. Operator recovered. They are on match point. A long time in the making here. Pico's patience pays off here. He said the re-aggress, sure, maybe, but the confirmation at least behind it with how Giant X have approached Ascent overall. And the cleanup duty on point mm. for Liquid. <laughs> Giant X will be able to string some rifles together. This is where it Fury, scared. yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm just thinking back to the previous that uh, yeah. Giant X able to slip the net. Three man walk A main. Where are they off to? It could be great, right? It could be great. Red goal won't expect them. 
I think it's, has somebody heard something from mid here? Because yeah, they were spamming, but I, I'm not sure. Okay, they 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 kind well, of. Well, would have this, been yeah. in a spot to to hear those steps, but it, there's no pings or anything. It's only red guard back here, and it's not necessarily an unorthodox position for the omen to be in. Maybe just to get Kiko on this deep angle now. One off his ultimate. Never TV back towards sight, but Giant X might be able to get behind that. Okay, pop flash. Ooh. Doesn't land. Cage trigger. It's all a bit wonky, isn't it? It, 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 it feels. Oh dear. Oh dear. No! Kiko waited so long, but so did Redgar, and he waited a little longer. Yampi, you got to be here! Oh, and maybe he is! Burpo's gone down, he knows they're coming from short, he's got them too! But is that enough? A 3v3 now, post plant Stop should done. be on the horizon, and Cloud's got his ult. Caution being aired here, safety in the plant, but can they even get to a safe post plant? They still have one by main, they have two on the site. Enzo starts to clear, Aldrone still there, two shock darts to boot, paranoia for Redgar, and a lot of kit for Cloud. There's util in this post plant, Mike. Find a way to break back through though. Oh, Cloud wow. gonna send up the recon and yeah, Nats. Finding the tripwire though. On a knife's edge. Uh. Enzo, he's fallen. Cloud gets tagged. The paranoia is perfect! And Cloud <laughs> is not gonna let that slip. A step back. And maybe the knife to the heart here as Liquid. They've got money, they've got a buy. But do we go OT again? A couple of ultimates to work with here. Obviously, Kiko getting his online. That is just. An outrageous shot from Yampi. Unbelievable. Gets a second as well, but it's just not enough. Giant X not giving up just yet. One round separating them. Full purchase. Alt. Uh, Kikos is there. Pitt's there on the no other man. side. Oh, oh wait, no Hoodie's, Hoodie's on. What has just happened to Hoodie early on here? Well, answer right back is that he's being hunted down on the other side too. Cloud gonna post it through. Catches a tag towards Enzo. But Hoodie's on 12 HP. He must have been spammed here by Enzo, potentially. I don't really know. The That's a on. heavy loss. But this is all not where it's heading. Again, straight towards A. Yampi sat in his pit. And I mean, that's his on the A side. He's got his setup here and already Kiko's on this side. The yeah, difference being this time around, there was a third member, Kiko. Gonna confirm Hello. a ton of them. information. Now slip back on towards site. Do they continue? They've got 50 seconds. Again, Operator, Phantom, and obviously three members noted now. So Giant X is going to try and find some sort of a window towards B. Drop the spike. Oh, B main seems off the menu, doesn't it, with what Enzo's been doing. So maybe quickly up middle already. Mystic seems to consider that one. He's having a little look here. Nat's ready for it. He knows what they're doing. The information is there. The slowdown, 30 seconds now. They've got to commit to this. They've got to make their move. They've got to get towards the site. But on the back lines is Enzo waiting, watching, patiently looking to do the damage. Good flash to force him off the angle, but Mystic unaffected so far. Could make his presence noted. Mystic can find all three. They try to come to his side again, and Enzo, the unknown element. This is the time they close out, surely. It's all on cloud with 10 seconds. I don't know if it's enough, but he's still going to make a damn good go of it. Five seconds now. Enzo just needs to live, and he knows it. He keeps his heart beating, and Liquid make it out of the danger zone. 13 rounds. They do the job they needed. We mentioned map one being a war of attrition. It lasted yeah. the entire series here. Right down to the wire. A 13-11 victory here in map three. Uh, again, I, I, I gotta come back to some of maybe the concerns you have coming into this series about what you wanna see rectified for both of these teams. Maybe not the sort of performance that you'd hope for, but a real barn burner here to go the distance, Lauren. I got so nervous though, Mike. After map one, after you know the previous performances, I think Liquid there, started to feel that pressure towards the end of that round, but sure. good to see them recovering, 
keeping composure. And yeah, I, I don't know quite where to place these two teams, bigger picture now, but it looks like, yeah, Liquid, a couple of steps in the right direction here today, a couple of nice looks. Gotta say though, for me, Yampi in that final map was nuts. Enzo as well, a couple of players yeah. really stepping up. But early maps, you had Mystic absolutely popping up with some insane clutches to even get them out of Lotus. This, this whole series feels like a saga. Sure, yeah, and I think coming back to the initial objectives we talked about for both of these teams, Liquid was still looking for the consistency, right? For them to yes. set the bar and maintain, I yep. don't think we're there after today's series. Ooh. On the other side of Giant X, I mean, just to know Purpo looking pretty comfortable overall. Yes. Obviously, yes. The, 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 the comp on Icebox, uh, maybe that is just I, a comp yeah. issue. Didn't like um, that. But overall, slipping into this roster, the synergies and, and, and those those small kind of tweak works that uh, I guess you want to see yeah. progress week by week. I think for me, tick in the box there. No, I'm absolutely with you as well. I'm, I'm kind of enjoying how he looks, how he's been approaching the game so far. An explosive little player. I like to see what he can do once absolutely. he finds that yeah. comfort, right? We've seen the mechanical capability. Let's see how it blends further down the line. Again, outside of that, though, happy to see Liquid on the right road. I'd like to see what their next couple of games are, to see how well they make, you know, might suit the opponents. How sure. you know, is it uphill, downhill? You know uh, what I mean? Yeah, I, I think with traditions and the history of Liquid as uh, as an organization, not necessarily a ro this roster yeah. in particular, we're looking for those improvements, right? And for it to be trackable, for us to be <laughs> able to come back to it and say, yep, they fixed that, that issue. This They've got to next, yeah. yep. And obviously last year, obviously Matt Paul being one overall where the consistency was just never there. So again, early on, we're, we're still tracking that. And speaking of tracking, I just turned around to keep my eyes on who is ready for that interview. It looks like Yampi is down there with Frankie. Yampi and Frankie are here and ready to talk about exactly what went down in that series. There are so many happy Team Liquid fans waiting player, to hear. You should be a happy player and their fans are very happy because your performance on that decider of ascent was nothing short of epic. But let's go back to the beginning, a mere four hours ago, because the veto, slightly unexpected, did it take you by surprise? Yeah, I think I, we didn't expect maybe them to pick Lotus, uh, but I think it was a good veto. We were surprised, but uh, we were happy about it, so no, nothing, you know. So what happened in the first half of Lotus? It, it felt like it, it took you a while to adjust to what Giants were throwing at you. No, nah, it was, you know, the crowd is full here, so we just wanted some entertainment for them, so it was, uh, it was completely under control, but uh, yeah, we just wanted some entertainment, a long match, you know, so. And then Icebox clearly planned from you. There's been some comp changes. You've been trying to find out what worked. You dropped the gecko, kept the harbor, and also we saw you on the Sova. What happened there? What was that decision, given that you've got Sova God Enzo in your team? Yeah, uh, I don't know. Uh, we decided to change it because uh, the gecko is a little bit too good on the map, so. We, we just wanted to give some uh, respect to other, other teams also. And uh, I think uh, the kill choice is Enzo's calling style. He can take a little bit more time that he doesn't have to beat, beat the pack. So that's why we changed it to me. So it's less about you and more about Enzo? Yeah, of course. And then Ascent was all about you? Yeah. So let's actually take a look back at some of your highlights if you want to check out the screen over there. And before uh, the cast was through to us, we were actually talking about how the pistol round in particular was a big game changer for you guys, the shift in momentum. You were very emotional when you won that pistol. Uh, talk me through what's happening here, though. You just pointed at the screen, impressed with yourself. No, it was uh, nice shots, I guess. Yeah. I mean, this was uh, all, all the Kiko, you know. His flash helped me there, so, you know, it's a team game. But why so emotional after that pistol round? Did you feel like if you didn't win it, then the victory would have slipped away? Yeah, I mean, not slip away, but it was such an important round. You know, I tried to have that uh, fire and ice thing that I tried to be calm, but when there has to be something to hype, I try to yell and like, it was just emotions because I, it was like a 2v3 and it was super important for us. And I think that was the turning point of the match that we could believe that we can win it and yeah, it happens, so I'm super happy. It's incredibly finished of you as well. And what's really impressive is actually the turnaround on Icebox because any team who have just lost after multiple overtimes would maybe feel a little bit put out, would maybe struggle with their mental, but you guys didn't. Tell me about how you brought things back. I mean, we were out for last week. Last week, uh, we were on the opposite side, you know. We were leading first map, and then second map, we were leading, what, 10 and 2, and then we lost the series. So I think it was a nice learning point from that, and we, we never gave up on anything. So I think I'm super proud of the guys that how we managed to do it today.
You should be incredibly proud. Yampi, I'm going to let you go and celebrate with your team. Thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you guys, everyone who came to watch. I appreciate it. Thank you. We're actually going to be Navin Anatta with Mystic after this break to get his take on what went down in this epic series too. So do not go anywhere. Mystic, Fnatic and Koi coming up after this break. <laughs> They call me Mr. Bombastic. Mr. Bombastic. Go pick KF for a knife at the bots. That's the way, bro. I know a place that will break you into a thousand pieces. Stay away from them. Stay away from Lorca, Paco, and Picasso. Don't ask about Lola. I, Caballo Grande. I, Lord Nieve. But in spite of everything, it occurs to you to visit Andalusia. Don't say I didn't warn you. Be careful of the Andalusian crush. Hey guys, it's Jimmy Lin, former professional Counter-Strike player and Valorant coach. Watch out for the stairs, clear this angle, you're going to be able to fight this. Red Bull gives you wings.
Uh, Welcome Washington. back to VCT. We have one more match before we round off week three here in Berlin. But before we get Fnatic versus Koi underway, we have got to chat more about what happened with Team Liquid and Jardex. And luckily, we've got a guest to help us break it down. Mystic, welcome. Is uh, it nice to be uh, in a victory seat again? Yeah, finally. <laughs> uh, it's been a bit of I don't know, a hurdle, I guess, that we had to climb, but yeah, we made it. And Does it feel better than last week? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were the 10-1 hurdle that none of these <laughs> no, climbed. No, please don't remind me. You, you won the week. close game this I time. I had nightmares so for at least three days after that. <laughs> That's crazy. But to be honest, though, you found yourself behind a couple of times uh, on the server today, and, and you managed to actually mount some comebacks of your own. Why do you think that Team Liquid were able to do that? Do you think your mental game has just improved so much? Your protocols as well? Yeah, definitely. I mean, Obviously, in the Navi game, we lost quite heavily, but we've been working on just like trying to keep the mood positive and just having fun, really. Like, yeah, no pressure. I get like we're trying to remove the pressure as much as possible. And today, we just—you can probably see me—I'm singing all day. I'm, I'm singing all day on that stage. Or barking, just, like, maybe. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's BBL, BBL box. That's the obvious well. barking a little bit. I, I think we should bring back the barking. No, no. no. <laughs> no I mean, you no. guys what? can, I mean, but. <laughs> you, know what? you know what I really want to do? I, I want to run it back all the way to Lotus because it gives us a fantastic opportunity to look at a marvelous moment for Mr. Mystic, which is your ace. I think it came in round three. Talk us through. Um, so basically, just killed two people for free and then killed the third one for free. This was a nice <laughs> shot, actually. <laughs> um, and then everyone's just screaming, ace, 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 just go for the ace. So I just I just went for it. I mean... It's nice when your teammates let yeah, you go for it and finish it, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's nice when you got uh, Nat as your side, uh, side partner, so you just, you know, you know, either he He's gets all the kills or I just steal all the kills off of his uh, yeah. util, so... Yeah. Well, basically, it also means you can throw. You can run in and try and get the ace, and if you don't get it, he'll probably get oh, the kill yeah. anyway, right? Yeah. So it, it's safe. We're all about discipline, but yeah, when, it, when it comes to that, <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> okay. Well, I want to also take another look at a round winning we'll moment from you. <laughs> let's, let's move on to Icebox, because I absolutely love this. This is the Ninja Diffuse which must have taken you by surprise that you managed to pull it off. I don't know what was happening with Giant X, but you clearly, you got the clutch. Let's let's run it back, if we can. I think what, what, uh, yeah, I think what happened, yeah, sorry, go, if you want. No, 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 I'm you're gonna, the analyst. I was I was going to say, I think their wingman, yeah. when they went to go plant, the wingman planted it too deep, and it, you could stretch it around the corner, right? Yeah, so because um, we used to play wingman, uh, Gecko, sorry. This has happened to us a couple of times, and I, like, I'm, the, I'm obviously the planter in this map. So I saw this, and I was like, "There's no chance they know they they messed up the plant." So yeah, I was like, "Guys, just fight, fight, fight!" I was just, and I was just, yeah, my right, anus yeah. was tight. <laughs> <laughs> anus was tight. How is it They're feeling now? Are we, are we, we loose? We good? Oh, we're loosey well, goosey right now. We are loosey goosey <laughs> right now. Squeaky <laughs> bum time? Is that what it's called? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah listen, I've played too much with Booster in the previous years. I think I've uh, brought some of that into this team as well. So. This is what happens when you're in a desk with three British people. It's it, it's just going to happen. Uh, I want to also um, actually get a bit more input on Ascent as well, because we've obviously we've we've gone to Lotus. We have gone to Icebox, much to our amusement. But on Ascent, uh, Tom, I know you were kind of interested in talking yeah, about some we, of the, the combinations. That we have a couple of own. rounds. Now, the first one I'm going to show you is a, a successful round. It's your combination of the Paranoia and the Euro TP and a Bucky, which if you're talking Fnatic days, the Bucky coming back into play, I guess we can run that now. Th this seems like one of the big plans that you have as a, as a team is like sort of having this aggression into the site and then having that Paranoia used from you. Yeah, I mean, we've tried this play a lot and failed a lot. So we're like, <laughs> just whip out the Bucky, mate. Like, there's no, there's just one pump him, you know, because it's a kind of a hit and miss. We saw Casey introduce this early on, and we were like, this is a good combination we can do. But I'm pretty sure we failed it another time in this game. So well, that will that will be the clip we're going to run in the next bit. Obviously, I think this is the close up. But the the thing I want to talk about a little bit with your attack side in general is. Do you ever find that the running that Euro can be on the attack especially can be a little bit one dimensional? Because it's like, I feel like you have to have those sort of massive risk plays. And I guess if we just go straight into the next clip and show how it can go a little bit wrong. Yeah, I mean, it, there is a lot of pressure on Geo, uh, Kiko. Um, and, idea, and our idea is just to 
him to be able to call whatever he wants and we just help facilitate that. Um, when Enzo brought this comp to us, we were like, this is crazy, but let's run it, you know, let's see what we can do with it. And yeah, I mean, you are partly right, but that's why we have to kind of feel out the map and see, see what we can well, abuse. Mystic, you mentioned uh, Boaster earlier. I'm sure you miss your old teammate. So why don't you get to see him, relive some memories? Because we want to find out what happened when Steel caught up with Jake earlier today. Thanks, Frankie. Yeah, so I'm standing here with Boaster, and we're going to go through this round. It's uh, Fnatic versus Gentle Mates. And I picked up this round. It was round four from your game last week against them on Breeze. And I just wanted to walk through because it was a pretty cool concept that you guys had here with the Euro ulti to get a lot of space here. And it looked like you guys were going to play for the retake on A site. So I'm just going to play through it a little bit here until we get to the nice meat of the action. So, so far, what we've seen is instantly Durka is going for the Euro ulti down through elbow. You have the Sova and the KO to set him up. And then what are your jobs, you and Leo, over on A? Um, honestly, we we saw that they had the Phoenix ulti, so we weren't really sure what to do. So we were like, they could just do their Phoenix ulti out A. And it can be quite oppressive. So we were just like, let's try and play a retake style. So. Dirk was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just Euro, Euro E here, and we were like, oh, okay, and then we were just like, let's, let's, let's just send it then with the ult, and uh, they seemed to be all right. They did actually go at A. We, we couldn't actually hear them, um, so all of a sudden they're like, they're at A because we hear the, the Phoenix ult now, and we we're like, oh my goodness, run away, run away, run away. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> you couldn't hear, the, hear them out A because they were just so far away from everyone, or is there something else? I think it's just in this round, there's a lot of common going on. Yeah, because okay. obviously Dirk is in his ultimate, so he's saying, uh, Cypher here, he's going this way. And then people are saying, like, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And then next thing you know, they've, they've gone at A main. Now if you're saying they've gone at A main, and we're like, oh, oh, dang. And then suddenly there's a Phoenix ulti, which I think if someone actually followed that Phoenix, it would have been quite a nice round for them. Um, yeah, it looks like they're just kind of in, in between two ideas here, where it's like, do we push and get the space because we were given everything for free, we know they're behind us, do we push forwards or do we just like get on the site? Um, when you guys decided to go this slow and then having Alpha kind of group up with Durka, how were you guys approaching the retake here? Um, honestly, it was because Durka was already on the flank that we were we weren't really sure where the Phoenix was and what co kind of space they did take. So we were kind of just letting the round cook a little bit, honestly, because when you don't really know, as long as like we have five e uh, five e three and it was a five e four before Durka got that pick. So as long as we kind of go together here and if we just trade out, it should we we'll end up in a. 2v0, two, two so that, yeah, was kinda, that was kind of the plan. So it was just like, we stay together and we'll just go together. We don't need to rush it. We thought they planted the bomb. Like, oh, we no didn't way. even realize they hadn't planted the bomb until uh, the end of the round. And we were like, wait, wait, there's no bomb. <laughs> like, it was it was a bit of a hectic round, but it was funny. Yeah, when I was watching this, I was, I was kind of surprised that, as you said, they didn't go through with the Phoenix. But I think even here, they had so much time to work with mm. that they could have uh, made you guys kind of make the next move and, and mess up, uh, which which is kind of what you're doing here, but they're they're taking so much time. Um, whose call was it to kind of be like, okay, let's let's go forwards now? Well, that's what I was saying. So we thought they planted the bomb. Yeah. So uh, Leo was like, I'm going to join up doors for you. So now I was like, all right, I'll follow it. And then we saw someone on the default. So uh, from scrims, I saw I, I was missing a spit and I was like, right, I'm going to try aim here. And then luckily the spit came in handy on the tongue there. <laughs> and then uh, yeah, we were pushing up as if we were retaking because we were like, oh, we, they've got the bomb down. And then suddenly, obviously, we get the kill in the tank and then there's two on the, the left-hand side. Yeah. And we were like, uh, yeah, but there's, where's the bomb? Like, Let me we, get to the yeah, yeah, we, we, were, we were so confused. It was, it was a funny round. All right, well, thank you for helping us break this down. No worries. Back to you. Thank you very much, Steel. Pleasure seeing you break things down with Boaster. As it is having you guys sat with me right now as we get ready for this matchup. I would be slightly nervous before walking out onto the stage if I was coy. Uh, Mystic, should they be afraid? You can tell me in 10 seconds. Uh, or less. <laughs> nah, 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 they shouldn't be afraid. They've got to believe themselves, back themselves. But yeah, Icebox, if that comes up today, 
I don't know, that would be interesting. That will be very interesting. And we are just about ready to see what is going to happen in the map veto because our teams are ready to take to the stage for the final match of week three. It's Koi versus Fnatic. In the arena today, it is Fnatic. Fnatic still have a bit more to prove that they're back to form. They need to, we need to see them trend upwards a little bit more and show us how they were in the previous years. They were the trendsetters. They were indeed, but Koi have been going back into the lab. They have been trying to perfect things. Will it be enough? Well, they're looking for their redemption arc, right, Frankie? This is a team that definitely has the caliber of players within their roster, but the fact is they're yet to really prove it within this stage. It's still possible for them, but they've got a very tough task here today. If there's anything we've learned from the last few weeks of stage one, you just can't count anyone out of this race. Fnatic, traditionally, you would be looking at them, and you know what? Based on their performance from just two days ago and last week as well, you are going to be looking at them in this matchup. But you know what, Mystic? You know Fnatic probably better than, <laughs> than anyone on this desk right now, I should say. Uh, so uh, what are you thinking of Fnatic's performance right now? Is it up there with the glory days of the past? <laughs> I mean, they've had a shaky start, but I think they're finding their form again. Um, so yeah, I think it's a matter of if they, uh, you know, let any plays slip through from uh, Koi and yeah, keeping their head together. And as we can see, the maps in Agent Select, are oh, things going to get interesting? Well, the thing is, you've got perma bands going. I think buying for Fnatic kind of makes sense, but I kind of want to ask this to Mystic. Uh, a rough icebox coming out uh, not too long ago from Fnatic. If you're Koi, are you are you are you picking it? Because that's what they've done here, and I feel like that's a risky game. Uh. I think I think I think this is uh, done on purpose by Fnatic. I think they uh, they had a shaky game, but I think they must have worked on a few things. Obviously, they've been kings of icebox in the past. So, yeah, yeah, they're happy to let this through. And uh, Koi picking it, I guess, it's a bold move for them. It's one of their strong maps as well. But I'm in Fnatic picking attack, right? Yeah. You've had a couple of uh, icebox matches against Koi, especially at kickoff. What do you guys think about uh, how they deliver their icebox? Um, I mean the. Uh, I think they've got a deep playbook now that they've uh, developed a few rounds, a couple defaults. I mean, Shadow has a pretty good idea of how the map should be played, uh, especially being on a team with him as well previously. So I think they're just confident right now. And yeah, that's why they brought it into this map. Well, Bind is going to be the first map that we're seeing. And obviously, we're still waiting for Agent Select. But in the past, they've run almost a mirror matchup. It's just the difference in initiators. So Fnatic with the Gecko and Koi with the Fade. Is that based on the way that they just like to play the game? I feel Why like it's more difference? like Gecko is the modern agent. Like that's what everybody's bringing in. I feel like, especially with the combination of flashes, I feel like that works slightly better at the moment. I think it's, it comes down to Gecko on the executions for sure. The Sky Flash with the Gecko Flash oh, is definitely taken a combination. It as well. Yeah, they have. And they're running the KO as well. I wonder uh, what that KO specifically is for, if it's going to try to be used for um, just really hard hits on the attack and going really explosive. That's kind of the direction I think that they have to go in with the KO. What kind of direction are you expecting, Mystic? Why do you think pick? I mean, I think with the Sky nerf right now, they want to switch to different initiators, but still be able to grab, so grab some sort of util. Obviously, uh, Gecko is quite an over, has a, quite a wide uh, ability to be aggressive and defense like passive. So, yeah, I think it just comes down to how the meta is right now. And yeah, I think it might be random, it might be, might not be, but I think that's uh, one of the only chances they have if they're playing against Fnatic as well, so. Well, Mystic, thank you so much for joining us on the desk. We are just about ready to get this final match underway. So everyone, please do get behind your favorite teams because it's time for Fnatic versus Koi with Ash and Pavlov on the mics. Thank you very much, Frankie. And indeed, both of these teams looking to get on the men. Fnatic kind of on their way there, but Koi not so much. But also this map situation is looking a little bit risky for them. It's kind of dodgy, it's kind of dodgy. Maybe a false sense of security there yeah. for Koi with the Icebox pick coming out after Fnatic ended up having that 4-13 to loss up against Heretics previously. But the team also wasn't in full form at that point. And we've finally seen 
Durka come back online in the server. Exactly right. And it's what you want to see from Fnatic. It's what you want to see from the star-studded roster. They've got every single one of these players has got the potential to be amongst the best in their particular roles. Koi, I've got a lot on their hands here to see how much they've worked on to take on this beast. As we start things off on buying, it's Fnatic on defense and Koi on attack. Slow creep up to kick things off Two here. Surprise. Bit of information over towards that B side. The stack on the side of Fnatic. You've got all there, all alone over towards Showers. Great positioning, though, with that lack of presence from Koi on the other side of A. That's very fair. Alpha has been stuck behind the smoke here, lurking, waiting for his team. But Koi not looking to overstep, looking to take down the wingman. Alpha has done so. The delay coming through. So now, Koi is to step in a little bit further forwards, take a little bit more time, and Fnatic are already here. No reason for them to back out just yet. Shadow into the fight already as Fnatic are forcing spike things straight out of the bat. And the spike again is down. Fnatic relieving the pressure but taking control of the lamps. Oh, this is a difficult game, a fickle one. And Koi is already feeling the shakes. And Fnatic, they're calm, they're chill. Just put pressure where it's necessary to. Spike collected, TP granted, and onto the B site they go. Okay, they gotta make a mad dash for it though. There is 40 yeah. seconds left here on the clock. Fnatic, we're gonna play the retake together. I do like the choice to make that teleport. I was worried that Koi was gonna maybe stick around there, try and continue to fight, but they had yeah. no space now into the post plant. Good no call. flashes to work with here for Chronicle. Camo. He's left behind while the rest have got some sight lines to cover. Ooh. Oh, the nade is done good, <laughs> but at least he takes Chronicle down with him. Still a 3v3. And a few of the players are pretty darn low. Grabinho making good work of Durka. And then all of a sudden, it's Leo and Alpha. Yeah, and Alpha yeah, doesn't have much health in him at all. And Grabinho's still alive. How is he still alive? Shadow's only just coming into the occasion, but Koi win all their fights. And it's first blood to Koi. A nice pistol round there for Koi. What a way to turn things around. It looked really uncomfortable over towards that A site, but the quick pivot on to be just in the nick of time. But now as we head into this next round here, heard the desk talking a little bit about to these compositional changes, right? The fact that we're seeing both yeah. these geckos coming out here on Bind, how he's really had this uptick ever since the new season started, just to do the ability to send that wingman in and just have a full five or just have more numbers there to actually fight off contact. It's slowly becoming a staple, isn't it? But yeah, look it really at this. Is. Fnatic going ultra aggressive, but not really finding much apart from lead to their face. It, I, this round's just, it's over at this point. Yeah, yeah, it <laughs> it's is. It's all things considered, right? You've got Alpha all the way on the other side of the map right now. Koi's still getting a lot of respect over towards B, though, just waiting to see if maybe another piece of aggression is pushed out. One enemy remaining. I mean, it's good to see Koi having a good start like this, right? They had a pretty bad beginning to the season. They've lost against teams they've already beaten in kickoff. So, I don't know, it doesn't seem to you that maybe all the Here. other teams have just gotten a better rebound from kickoff than Koi, or has just Koi stagnated here? I think it's a bit of a difficult question to answer. I feel yeah. like it's more of a, a win trading going back and forth here between each team. I think BBL maybe one of the teams that we're actually seeing a bit more of that improvement mm -hmm. on, but uh, this, we've also heard a, a little whispers about this from <laughs> Bucks for BBL, of course, but uh, going forward here for Koi, I think what's also tough is their battle doesn't get any easier as these weeks continue oh. on because they are going to be facing off later against Carmine Core and Vitality. So it's it's an uphill oh, battle tough. here, and they're at the bottom of their group right now. Yeah, pretty much it will die for them this match against Fnatic, but it will be quite the upset, right? And Fnatic losing this, now that would be quite the dagger in their hearts. But for now, a buy round in play. Three defenders to that A site, two to B. Already contention from Koi towards Alpha. Yes, snake bite to delay. Does he send out either way? Curious to actually send it as he You have to go and retrieve that eventually. Alpha's actually going to stick into the smoke. That's cheeky. Assistance of Flash, and Alpha your peeks out. Stark, so good to read it. Oh. Doubles up as well. The bonus from Koi, grand stop for it. It's looking really good. The TP over here from Boaster as well. Everything falling apart in this third round for Fnatic. Oh dear, they've let this go haywire. And Koi take full advantage of it. And I like how slow they're paying it. They don't want to get overzealous, over eager, give out any early kills and give an opportunity for Durka and Boaster to do anything. Because, you know, give give Durka an inch and it'll take it a mile. And mm -hmm. Koi know, they're, know that they're not supposed to do that. Yeah, I'm very aware that it's just a save situation here on the side of Fnatic. And I actually do wonder, is Boaster safe in the TP there? 
Can we talk deep enough, actually, uh, um, when the spec I mean, detonates? It's not, it looks like Koya going all the way around, and Dirk is trying to keep his opponents from getting into the TP. Oh, and this toxic screen just allowed Gravinia to get through. Oh, oh, Bosta. Yeah, not going to keep his life there. And Darker won't get a kill either. Andalusia flawless from Koi as they get three off the bounce against Fnatic. I mean, incredibly comfortable around here for Koi. We saw the idea that Fnatic had with maintaining that hookah control, the attempt to try and hide into that smoke there for Alpha. You had Chronicle coming to back him up as well, but the sprays through the smoke were just too much. Fnatic now. I like the protocoling as well coming out, just yeah. knowing that they have the opportunity to chase down and take the rest of these rifles out there for Fnatic, not allow them to carry it over into the next. But with the eco weapons, we've seen a lot of Bucky's kind of resurging, I yeah. think, within Imia. Uh, Mystic, you've been talking it about it a little bit there on the desk. We're kind of seeing a resurgence of it. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Yeah, an interesting one for Fnatic. Uh, I mean, on the one side, Koi had had a lot to change, right? Not only the individuals weren't working, but nothing was really working. So fully back to the drawing board since last week. So I wonder what their <laughs> process was, right? I'd love to get a chat with Barba later to see what on earth do you do if, you're, if your banks are against the war here. I want to chat with Barbara. I just want to see his reaction cams again. <laughs> <laughs> Highlight of my day Plus for any Koi game. Plus one. Pop flash ready here over towards the B site. Again, disconnected on the side of Fnatic, though. You've got Alpha and Chris, who's going Chronicle over towards Elbow. Trailblazer going to seek out some of that information. But they're not going to be able to really fight together. Because not being pushed in on, though. It's just a Bucky here for Alpha. Having to fully fall back on Chronicle. Free site for the taking here for the plant. He easy does it, and Fnatic get to play five into the post. That's fair. Even with limited uh, weaponry, Fnatic might be quite troubling here, especially with a pick or two. Now, Showstopper from Camo could be quite disruptive, and it looks like it's going to be instantly engaged with. Grabinho, good to answer off the back of it, and Koi move like a unit. I love it. And Fnatic in trouble. It was supposed to be around for Koi, nevertheless, but let's see how much damage they can get. Durka looking to bounce really fast forward into Elbow, and Alpha is there to help out. Snake bite on one end, but oh. Durka closed in on good crossfire duty from Koi, getting four in a row. Nicely done here for Koi. I mean, this isn't how we would have expected Bind no. to start off. This being Fnatic's pick as well for our first map. The replays, I like that. I, I think it is a bit scary to see, you know, them pushing in towards Elbow, not necessarily uh, being confident about weapons or we weapons are in the hands of Fnatic there, but making sure that they're going together, going as a group, ensuring that they can guarantee the trades if it doesn't end up working out. First timeout already called here in the first four rounds. Can I just draw out the Caster Curse to begin with, just to get it out of the way, just so it doesn't get brought up again? Because, look, um, this whole first season, this first split of VCT EMEA has been whack, right? Um, Heretics winning, Fna beating Fnatic. BBL beating Heretics. Uh, Gentlemates beating BBL and Fnatic beating Gentlemates. So it's, it's, it's a big topsy-turvy <laughs> all across the board. <laughs> it, it's, it's pretty crazy. Now, what would add to that craziness would be if Koi beats Fnatic today. You had to put it out in the world, didn't you? I had to. I had to place out the possibility. Now, the chances uh, coming into this are slim, right? Mm -hmm. But it's a 4-0 four, four and zero start. I like how you say it's slim when it's a 4-0 <laughs> start. It's still it's fanatic, like seeing, right? Two it is world still fanatic. Two world you know, uh, titles un under their names. Chronicle's got three titles yeah. to himself. I think that's why we have to temper those expectations, yeah. because Fnatic is a team where we would expect them to be able to make that comeback into the game. It's only the first four rounds, but of course, it's a, a difficult start there for the defenders, but overall. Thrash available here in the hands of Shadow. IGL on the side of Koi. Alpha, yeah. It's been a position like this, like the first round. He got punished, even though the utility from his teammate was fairly good. Koi, let's see what you've worked with this. Thrash. Already thrown out. Oh, nice. Okay. It's a really interesting Molly to throw down. And Camo is looking to punish Alpha yet, but yet to do so. That smoke from Koi allows oh Fnatic to stay within it for a little bit longer, but the kerfuffle there puts Fnatic on top. 
instantly four versus two. Shados looking away from the guiding light. Chronicle fighting on two fronts at the same time. This guy is a multitasking monster, putting Fnatic on the board. That's exactly that is exactly the kind of round you want to see coming out of Fnatic. The fact that they're able to emotionally come back into this game as well. You need one of those big plays to try and bring that mental back up. Not to say it was necessarily down to begin with, but it was a cool idea from Koi. We saw that Mosh going out, the zoning, when the Thrash is coming through the other side as well. Perfect timing with how it lands. Uh, it, it just... You yeah. can do much with Chronicle shooting like that. I heard you yeah. <laughs> so fair enough. But still, ultimates at play. Guns still available for the Koi side. They built up quite a healthy economy yeah. uh, with the rounds that they have accumulated. And now, back to the drawing. Yeah, with those first four rounds as well, it's been nice ultimate cycling here. Grabino, the one to have that up here for Koi this time around. But you've got Seekers with that 4K from Chronicle in the last. Looking for a little bit of information. A jump spot to start. Not seeing Starkso on the other side, but Starkso can hear him. Uh -oh. Well, Chronicle will get out of there. Just a hint of damage done. Quite a big ultimate to be expended that early. And Seekers come out in retaliation from Fnatic. How soon oh. do they respond? Koi, amp up the pace quickly. Catching Fnatic off guard, and it might be the solution, but Shadow moves through the mosh and ends up losing his life. This is getting troubling, but it seems Koi have got everything under cover because the B site is theirs, and there's only two Fnatic players remaining. They're backing off. 4v2, money in a tough situation. Fnatic want to maintain these weapons into the next round, knowing that they're cycling up into that yeah. thrash here for Leo. But this is a really hot start here on Fnatic's map pick here for Koi. I mean, I'm actually surprised with Koi's approach there, because it looked like they were pretty far, pretty slow on their approach. Orbital Strike comes in, it seems to delay, and, some, and, and all of a sudden, bounce onto the B site, catching Fnatic off guard, and it was exactly what they needed. And it's what they want to have in store for them, right? Have those multiple adaptations, mid-round adaptations, round-to-round -round changes. It's kind of what they've been missing, and why they've been so easily readable the past few weeks. I think it's also difficult maybe for Fnatic because if they're doing their homework, this is a big compositional change on the yeah. side of Koi as well, right? Looking at the initiators being completely swapped out and a very different look for how Koi are approaching these rounds. Gives you, it makes you have to guess a little bit more. You have to kind of work up into these reads here with those comp changes here for either side, but... Yeah. For both of these teams, it kind of feels that their journey up until the season is working on themselves, less about looking at their opponents. But it doesn't really help Fnatic having to not only work through their own style, but having to deal with the changes up against them. Big adjustments. And that falls on both your shoulders as well, yeah. right there. And in the timeouts, also the coaching staff here for Fnatic. they are moving up. This is aggro. Through the smoke. Flash coming through, Durka looking to follow up right nice after it. Molly, though. Oh, he catches a couple, but I think Shadow is there to try and save his teammate's life, but doesn't have his gun out. Still, one for one trade. And Koi need to figure out how much space Fnatic actually have gotten. Camo finds Chronicle, and now Koi with the advantage. We saw them trying to push out towards B long there as well for Fnatic. Just the spacing wasn't quite there, able to catch up with Durka. Now, Koi, they take the green light to hit towards B. Oh, Alpha, you're out of the smoke. Oh, Policy move, but. How much did it really pay off given that Stark so can be beat, brought right back into life? Boaster aggressing as well, knowing that heroics were required, but Leo back on the save. Koi, this is looking like a different team since we've seen from the start of the season. And um, yeah, someone's got a pitch for me already. <laughs> I'm calling for the pinch. Feels a little bit like a dream here. Fnatic. Something I think that the team has talked about a little bit as well in some of those interviews was Boaster mentioned how Fnatic does have to find a little bit of their confidence back yeah. after how the season started over in kickoff and kind of reset their minds in that kind of sense. And for Koi, I mean, this is night and day, I feel like, compared to before. Such a like dominant way to start things off. And this is a team for Koi who... Previously, again, in those win trade situations, yeah. even in the games that they were winning, it wasn't it, it wasn't like this by any means. That's very fair. That's very fair. And I think the desk mentioned it as well, right? Koi are very capable of many great things. They've got great individuals. They've got mm -hmm. a couple of world championships in the likes of Stark, So and Shados with their individual teams ascending Gambit. So it. They've got the capabilities. They've got the talent. They've got the rookie raw power. They just need to put that all together. 
This was also a team that I think what was difficult for them was how late they came together before kickoff. They were the team that closest to kickoff kind of rounded out their roster there. So maybe it was just needing that additional time together to gel and figure things out. Showstopper though. I mean, there's not much available for Fnatic here, but the Showstopper could make the attacking endeavors of Koi that much simpler. Alpha Yer is moving up his Viper's Pit, inching forwards. He's sensing blood. Koi's still sticking around for now though. Maintaining that shower's control. You can see Fnatic concerned about the fact that they are making a, a rotation over towards that B side. You see the Trailblazer clearing out all the way towards Fountain. They're just waiting, biding their time a little bit longer. Nice snake bite to push Alpha Hair off the close cubby corner there. It's got to be eerie for Fnatic playing in the dark. No information really given. Ghosters on an island. Nice oh, read with the Molly. Great timing. 35 seconds, Koi have cut it close. This could be their own demise of their own making. 30 seconds left. Come on. Oh, everybody wants to see Bosa press that mouse one button, and he finally does. They're all in trouble, and it looks like it's going to initiate the attack for yeah, them. Grubinho in the ground. Bosa close distance Climbing. for this thing has gone all the way around, but Shadow eventually finds him. Alpha is still in the fight. He's still within the Viper's Pit, and Koi annoy of it. 14 seconds of spike will go down, though, and Koi have got the advantage weapon-wise, but look at this. Alpha is being sneaky. He wants to stick around a little bit longer. Starks are to the other end of it, but he can't hear a thing. Durk has just walked past him, and now there's two players that can waltz through that Viper's Pit to bring out another angle of attack. There's a showstopper, even in the hands of Durka here. Oh, Shadow, but he's able to find the back end of Alpha yet, and that changes the whole endeavor. Durka, what do you do with this? Takes his time to get a Vandal. This is kicking. all so close. Anything could make a difference to the balance of this round, and Koi have got it all covered. Trying to make it expensive at the very least here for an eco round on the side of Fnatic, but Koi are doing so well with those timing. Stark so even playing insurance over towards A short. But guns are back out now for Fnatic. They're down six rounds into this first half. We see the operator now coming online here for Durka. Still has that showstopper in hand as well, but we're already looking over towards Koi, who now it's a second thrash to come out for Shadow. He's been having a good job uh, with using that thrasher, getting ultimate points onto that having it time and time again. And it's been quite relevant as well, clearing out a lot of these spaces. Oh, yeah. Multiple times in this round, and instantly after he gets it, picks it up again to help them push onto this A side, or at least gain some information of where they can push into. Short and shower approach. And Fnatic are forced to fall, fall back. But no, Bosa has a different idea about this orbital strike, sends it right on top of him. Leo finds another fight. But who stabilizes here? When does a spike go down? Fnatic have got the numbers, and they're keeping things agile. I mean, Pink Shell's still in hand here for Camo, not needing to use it quite yet. What a wow. shot from Chronicle. The Jiggle Peaks seem to be what Fnatic need. Keep Koi uncomfortable, put ants in their pants. Childhood prank, but seems to be what's working out most for them. Koi, though, they've got both of their World Championship players left. And if there's any two to win out a clutch, it's got to be them. 2v4, Starks over, that's the first start to it. But Durk has got his hands on an operator and he's not gonna let this round go. Shados, they know exactly where he is. They'll peak simultaneously and guarantee it's second round for Fnatic. A must need round here for Fnatic and saving that operator into the next one as well. Not even needing the showstopper into that retake. And you have Chronicle cycling nicely back into the Seekers there. Koi, though, I want to say they're doing well with kind of changing up the timing here. It was a nice swap over to some higher octane hits over towards that A site. But again, I think if you're Fnatic, it's still a bit too close for comfort. I mean, I'm, I'm glad we're seeing some of these pictures from Elmer Putty. We know he had big shoes to fill with Mini, you know, maybe taking the, if it ain't broke, Here. don't fix it, um, wording a bit too literally by not Here. making too many changes coming into the season. So maybe these adaptations for Fnatic is what they need to build up this Whoa. confidence again. But that was very aggressive from Durka, but luckily for Koi, or maybe luckily for Durka, no one was there. I mean, that's why you see the toxic screen laid out the way it was, was to allow that opportunity with Leo having already scaled up towards showers. But a five-person hit here for Koi over towards A short. You can see the players being pulled away already. Different angle from Camo. Durka can't see anyone, and he still gets shot in the face. 
and now Thrash is sent, but this time in Fnatic's favor. Not quite sure if they've got a pick off of it. No, Bosa's in trouble, taking a oh lot my of God. damage down to 40. Koi are going for the chase, and they've been sending little bro directly at Bosa. Now they haven't gotten the spike down yet, and Fnatic still have got four players. It's anyone's game. This A site has been incredible. Like, it's such a difficult back and forth. Nobody wants to take these fights. Nobody wants to lose their lives because it could be the chain reaction to turn the whole round in the opposing side's favor. Stark, so the first again to shoot. Dizzy gaining information, but it doesn't even matter. Camo doing wonder work at the back of this site. And Fnatic, one by one, they swing, but one by one, suddenly Chronicle wins his duel. But Leo, he realizes he doesn't have any more teammates. Their chances are done, and Koi guarantee an eighth round. I mean, beautiful crossfires that were set up over towards front site there. And then you have the fact that, sure, Boaster's able to maintain U-Haul the entire time, but that was also a util dump of all time. They threw everything under the kitchen sink over towards the IGL of Fnatic. And with one weapon to carry over into the next round here, we've got two rounds left into this half. And money is dwindling on the side of Fnatic. I mean, you know Koi's doing something right when uh, the arena here in Berlin is the fullest it's probably been in a long time. Um, and it's full of Fnatic fans. Nobody's talking, nobody's cheering for Fnatic, nothing's really going on. They know they're in trouble. Time out, out. the team knows that something's going wrong. Second one. First half, second one already hit. I mean, it does. you do have a chance to talk about the next half as well with yeah. how close it is to wrapping with these two rounds. But again, Koi have been doing so well to cycle up these ultimates. You already have Orbital Strike up, could do well for the A hit, throwing it over towards U-Haul or backside B, whatever. Your, whatever floats your boat in that regard. And then you also have Camo and Stark, so looking to get up to theirs as well, potentially into this round, but it's, it's looking tough. I feel like Koi are coming out with a lot of confidence yeah. that we actually haven't seen in their previous matches. And it's not that shaky confidence, that ultra aggressive, panicky situation that we see sometimes from BBL. Not to say that theirs isn't impressive, it's just that it's sometimes 50-50. Like if you lose the ball, then it can all crumble. For Koi, there's some control to it. They look measured right now, that is certain, in the way that they're approaching these rounds. Very thought out, a lot of that leaning over towards Shadow with his calling here for Koi, and the way that they really are playing more like a unit, something that we haven't necessarily seen from them in past matches. Honestly, a completely different look here for Koi. Yeah, Fnatic also playing quite scared. Haven't seen, well, we have seen a couple of plays for them aggressive, but have never really gone their way. Nice delay. Koi have also been very good with their molly usage, whether it's in the post plant or on their approaches on towards these sites. Very good at the zoning and trying to funnel Fnatic into their crosshairs when they do want to take those fights. Koi very much so able to play their game right now. It's been quite measured and they can just walk in, pressing the shift key at the yeah, same time, but there's a shark lurking in deep waters, and that's Boaster getting away with his life and the kill. Wingman not planted. Finally, something going right for Fnatic, but again, limited in the Arsenal department. Stars has just found so much information towards backside of A. And again, it delayed. Delay. And there's even a showstopper for Durka. Stark, so knows he's going to play this quite aggressive oh, flash coming dodgy. through, but close distance with the shorty, not going to be very helpful for them. Koi are able to move away from lamps, but it allows Fnatic to move in and have a different front to work with. Left. Shadow, not quite the victim of that mosh, but at least it clears out the center part of the area. But Fnatic don't respond off of it. It seems like they wait for Koi to make the next next action, trying to get the spike down. It's Durka. First yeah, shot really. in, three spotted nearby. Stark, so three. Oh. That's one kill. 12 seconds. They've got to get onto the spike. Fnatic yeah. know of it. They know they've got a delay, but Stark, so is looking clean. Not allowing Fnatic to do a thing. Spike finally down. A three versus three, but rifles collected by Fnatic. Collected. You have Seekers online here as well. Going to be popped by Chronicle. Information given here for Fnatic. Grubinho knows he's the linchpin in this position. They know they've been contesting Lamp so far, but they need to go after him before they go for anybody else. Wingman is on the spike, defusing, but nobody knows it from the Koi side. Fnatic, it's got to be an eco Red Bull clutch to get them on the board again. Last round before. What a round there for Fnatic onto the defuse now.
Last round before we swap sides. A snowball round here for Koi as well. Fnatic used all the ultimates that they had left into this first half to secure that third round. Now you're looking towards the Null Command, the Showstopper. You've got a Viper's Pit into the post plant as well. And Koi have had no trouble actually finding these plants. Well, there's a spark. There's a spark <laughs> off the back of Little Bro. And um, yeah, finally we can see hints of Fnatic being on the server. Ultimate galore for Koi here. They're comfortable still. Last round in the half. Let's see if they can end this on a high or Fnatic can close up the gap on the final instance fairly quickly on this aggression. Um, and somehow Leon Alpha Year get deleted from Earth. Chronicle gets thrown to the stratosphere. Yeah. And uh, Durka and Boaster are scratching their heads wondering what happened to that B side defense. Okay, but when Dirk is in the server, you can't call around out quite yet. We have to remember which duelist we're talking about here. That's true. He's got his IGO with him. These guys have been through thick and thin. Table. But Gravino is kind of smart, but okay. is kind of quick. How many more can you find? Boaster, the it's captain. Sad. Now forced to make some way for his teammate to move in, but Shadow and Stark, so both find their mark. Nine to three at half time for Koi. Switching sides. I think if you had asked anyone before this, it, it wouldn't have been the story that you would try no. to paint for the audience, right? Uh, Stark so is 14 and three right now. So many of these rounds just opening things up. I like how Fnatic did on this B-side in this last round, try to change up their positioning, both players looking towards Leo and Alpha, who had been playing on top of that box, angles that they hadn't really chosen before over towards that B-site, but swapping sides now, back into a pistol, and Fnatic needs this round to get themselves back into bind. That's very true, that's very true. Yeah, Yash, I've got a theory here. Panpok are the tech timeout duo. Are we the, uh, uh, is uh, Ashlos the The lost duo? duo? The, the lost the, duo? The, the upset <laughs> duo, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. But Koi, now on defense, Fnatic, of course, they do quite a bit. They, they need to show why they picked this map right now. Koi have had all the answers thus far, and it's Koi that bring the fight to Five Fnatic, down, albeit please. being the defending side. They just want to cause pressure. Don't let Fnatic get comfortable. Spike on the ground fully under control of Koi. Well, not anymore, because Chronicle has gotten it. Retreated. Grabinho making sure Boaster is no more. And I believe this round is no more also. Grabinho could get caught out here, but I like the shift back over there. About to meet outside of showers. Chronicle still got his kit available to him. Come on. Oh, knife out. Timing? I mean, nah. No, not for Grubinho, not today. Double digits hit, and it's the best start Koi could have hoped for in the second half. This is looking clinical. It is clean coming out from Koi. Quite a way to turn a new chapter here after the back and forth that we've seen coming out from these teams. And again, those wins weren't comfortable, but they are looking stunning right now within the server. Ah, everybody thought Fnatic's troubles were over. They got two wins in a row. Well, it seems number three is a number that always eludes them. That triple oh, world title, this third win here in season, t season one, split one. It's uh, number three just isn't it for them, is it? Maybe in rounds this, this game. Information garnered, at least farming up some of those orbs over towards showers, but... Or is an orb right now, Fnatic. Just biding their time. We still have Boaster on the other side of the map. Just trying to relay some information. Spike rotating over there too. I mean, usually teams on Boaster pistols might go for down. something explosive, trying to find power right with here. numbers, trying to find advantages that way, but not Fnatic. They're pretty slow, pretty pacey. They like to be measured. Right there. Yeah. See how much they can really garner out of an any go round. Nice pit to allow Shadow to fall back safely towards site here. You say measured, I say scared. Nah, <laughs> it's a piss around, it doesn't even matter. But still, there's sweat on their foreheads, knowing they're so far behind. It's Koi they're dealing with. They say, why on earth are we struggling this much? 30 well, seconds left. they might be able to figure it out during the map itself, but they might have to find, figure it out if they have to head to Icebox with a map in their opposing side's hands. 
but Fnatic find their way onto the A site, and Koi finally find their way onto the kill feed. Camo, only good for one here. And with room into the site, there's a chance here for Fnatic if they're able to find any more guns. Shados, you've got a choice to see how much you can obstruct this. But it was the wingman on the spike and couldn't delay it. Grabinho, I think he spotted Alpha, hasn't he? Yeah. He knows, and he's no. also got a chance to be the backstab against Leo here, but no, still a one for one. And on the spike, they are putting pressure onto Fnatic. Poison Cloud concealing their position. And Wingman is here to save the day, just like he did for Fnatic the previous half. It's Koi on 11. What a way to start off this second match of the day here within day three of week three. Koi are looking so good. And that's also the bonus of little guy, of wingman. The fact that in those post-plant situations, those mollies aren't yeah. going to have that area of effect when you're looking over towards that Viper and over towards that Brimstone as well, unless they have a bit of that elevation, because he's just, uh, he's too short. He's got to have his feet up off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sure. Kicking it back while he gets the defuse out. The timeout now for Koi. They want to close this out, and that's why you can imagine that they're calling it with two rounds left if they can actually manage to get to 13. It's a diff difficult situation, right? Because you don't want to get ahead of yourself yeah. because you want to close out this map. Don't give a chance for Fnatic to start shooting back, gain confidence, and this is a focused barber. This is a very focused bar. He says, listen to me, guys. You've done great. You've done incredible. I can read it in his eyes. I don't <laughs> read lips. I read eyes. He says, I'm proud of you. All you have to do is stay chill, play your game. Fnatic are the ones making the mistakes right now. Little father bar bar moment. Yeah. It's important. Keep yourself grounded. Especially when you're looking towards Koi being on this bonus round. Not too strong of one to look towards either. Full rifles here for Fnatic. Curious to see how we looked at we cycle up into some of these ultimates. What kind of control Koi are going to look for here on the defensive side? Oh, many might be wondering. They're tuning in. Why is everybody so quiet? Why is everybody so, at this point, you know, startled? And uh, the quickly answer is, if just look at the score, this Poison shouldn't be happening. This is outrageous. Koi have already done quite okay. a lot. All they have to do is win two more rounds. That's it. Get 13 on the board, have a map against Fnatic, and then they play on Icebox, which already we deemed quite a crazy call. Fnatic might be in trouble. Mm -hmm. There's a deep player here in the likes of Camo. Trailblazer to potentially seek him out. Oh, not able to get out of there. Fnatic, first blood goes to them. Shados next in contention, blinded, but gets away with his life. Goes in for another bite. Oh, Alpha, you're not aware of it. And Fnatic, this is their buy round. This is the one they should be winning. It's Koi on the bonus. And Shados has found himself an upgrade. No. Leo, though, gets there on time and keeps things square. The gun swap, not quite it there. Triple here for Boaster. Spike yet to be planted, though. Okay, Chronicle has been able to deal with two already. Grabinho, is he going to make it work with a classic? No way. He's got himself a Marshall, but Leo finds himself the swing. It's a damaging round for Fnatic, but one they win nevertheless. Expensive there, like you mentioned. At the very least, you see the Thrash cycling up here for Leo Fnatic. Scoreboard looking a little bit top heavy. Shados. I, that could have been a completely different engagement had he actually not swapped over to Thy Vandal. But just giving away his location there. But man, nice. they have to fight tooth and nail to get nice. back into this, Pavlos. Yeah, definitely. We hear some nice, we hear some... Well, well some more positive energy from Fnatic, that's for sure. But let's see if they're able to carry it onwards onto this one. Thrash available for Leo. And it seems they're heading and leaning towards his left-hand side. Walking out towards showers here as well. But look how passively Fnatic are playing that. Boaster was spotted out. Molly. Oh, yeah. They have so much lane control right now. Grabinho able to mad dash away from that thrash here. I mean, I think the timing of the incendiary is pretty good because even though the thrash gains some ground, there's no follow up for it. So it delays the push from Fnatic quite a bit. Ooh. They don't know. Ooh, they've got no idea. Behind? 
Oh, Durka reads it in time. There. Averts the crisis, and Fnatic still in charge this round, but there's three defenders still on this B site that could do a lot Thrash if they're not figured w. out. Thrash recollected and back online. On the lookout, he is finding one, stunning him. Shados gets one pick, though. Can he keep Starkster from dying here? Always oh, in the smoke, but not able to stay alive. Finally getting his gun out, but Ducker's quick to react. Camo there on the back line, have they realized? Ducker has four to his name, one remains, and it's got Shados to follow after. Thrasher in hand, well, ultimate in hand. And it's going to be the ace for Durka to put Fnatic back on track. Put Fnatic on five here and slowly making their way back into this game. A momentous play needed here to try and bring those spirits back up. The team is focused here on that stage. You can see the replay, man, that timing. The shot through the smoke on Starkso was insane. First buy around for Koi, doesn't work out. And uh, that's a disappointment here from Barber. The reason why they brought out the timeout is so they were able to close out quickly. Now they've only got one left, obviously. They can still use it at an opportune moment, but give Fnatic more rounds, like we said, it gives them confidence, it gives them time to grow. And when Fnatic are feeling it, there's not much stopping them. I mean, being on the attacking side now as well allows them to control a bit more of that pacing yeah. of the game. We have to keep in mind that Koi did favor the attack into this pick when they chose their side at the beginning. So we saw how that oh, was working out for them. The set plays that they had prepared here onto bind. What can they do on defense? Again, pistols, like you had mentioned, but we've also seen some nice engagement conversions coming out from Koi on those eco weapons. I mean, Shadow's got his ultimate. I want to count of how many times Thrash has been there for Shadow. <laughs> Even if they're losing rounds, still getting those ult ups up. Let's see if it'll be utilized this time around. I think with the pick, they might feel the comfort to go in for it. But other than that, Fnatic should be able to pick this up without too many issues. Wingman actually out into the open here. They try to pre-fire and they have to lose their life because of it. Of course, the left. Wingman has been killed, so Fnatic are down to 25 seconds to get the spike down, but it's still enough time to get through. Durka not going to get overzealous here. They put it all down. They spray off the rip against the Stark, so flash and push, and they're looking to make clean work of this. Koi not allowed a kill, just a peek, and Andalusia flawless for Fnatic to get to consecutive. Nicely done there. I do think something I want to point out that was kind of interesting in that round too, is we did actually see Starks are throwing at that fragment and it destroys Wingman, right? Because it has that area of effect that explodes up. I do wonder if that's a choice that Koi made working the KO into this composition, knowing it, it could be that Wingman counter in that kind of sense with the Molly, but they've gotten the ball rolling here. They have, and we know how dangerous the momentum can be, right? Koi were able to make it work on their half. If there's anyone to do it, it's gonna have to be Fnatic. Thrash being drawn out here from Shadow. No aggression off the back of it. It sounds, it looks like it's just gonna be oh. aggression from the showstoppers, but Ducker yeah. is a superior raise. Flash out into him, sprayed I down, coming in. But Grubinho is able to isolate him one-on-one -on -one and get himself and his team back to square footing. Calling that there's two over towards that B site when you normally see the three stack over on A here when you're playing that bind default on defense. Trying to beat the timing now. Flash out towards front site. We've got a trailblazer just to guarantee that U Haul is clear. Yeah, they know there's presence to the back of the site. It's a matter of clearing out the front of it, which is what Alpha is doing out in showers. The rest of Fnatic in short, not really putting too many chips in other baskets here, just fully putting full focus onto this A site, seizing control of it, or at least forcing Koi out into the open. They're not really interested in going to the back of the line. Maybe Leo is, and not allowing Koi to set up a bit. Grabinho using the elbow to strike, but that's to no use because his teammates are no longer there, and he's got to do it alone. Swing out from Leo, triple to his name, and Fnatic gets seven in this game. If there is a team that knows how to snowball and when they find that momentum to start chaining these rounds together four in a row for Fnatic after that first anti-eco that comes out. You see the little anime battle. Usually it's the Jets that you're like, okay, a little anime battle coming out here, but the raises, that head-to-head. -head. But you can see that confidence brimming now here for Fnatic.
Yeah, they're starting to shout, they're starting to cheer, and so are the fans as well. This is getting quite dicey, getting a little bit uncomfortable for Koi, because they built up a, gr a great lead. It's about being able to bounce back for it. And of course, the tech board has to come in to make them wait to get back on the server again. Now, Ash, uh, we know that both of the teams have kind of been on the mend, mm -hmm. um, but surely we expected, you know, Koi to take some time to bounce back off of last week's unfortunate results, right? If you're a team, you usually want to go back to the basics. And do we get that feeling here from Koi from this match so far, from the, you know, approach they've given that first half? I think in the first half, we do see them tightening up on those fundamentals, the way yeah. they were moving together as a pack, the way that they were looking to actually take that space. And every single piece of utility that was thrown out, you could see its purpose and they were capitalizing off of it. But now having a bit more of that difficulty now that you see, uh, you know, Durka on the attacking side, he's going in, making that space. You have Leo, usually the second one in on the entry to help follow up. And then they're just starting to shoot back now as we head into the second half. Well, uh, we have received word of the reason because of the tech pause. Listening here, it seems that Koi may have used an exploit in round number three. What this means is that Koi, because as a punishment, will have their second tactical pause removed. Right, so that is their punishment for that exploitation uh, as it, it stands. So, coming into this one, uh, that has been resolved. We'll get back into it. The score stands as it is. Let's have a look and how this one goes. But of course, that is quite a big tech pause to move away from Koi, right? This is yeah. getting quite dicey. You want to be able to speak to your players, but they no longer have the ability to do so. They're looking to slow that down, and that's tough because again, Koi, they, they find the success so early on into the round. Not sure about the hopping that's happening in spawn right now, but uh, when we're looking at these player cams, you can see, okay, everyone's kind of just biding their time, waiting to see how how things will pan out in that kind of sense. But Yeah, uh, it, it looks like we'll be jumping into the server in a, one or two minutes, and that's exactly what we're going to be looking into. But so far, so far, Fnatic have been able to bounce back, right, Ash? It's it's been a, a timely manner. I, I feel like it's one of those things that we've seen from them this entire season, right? Slow to begin, which gets some nerves in, gets them to panic a little. And when they don't get things rolling in their favor, that's when they end up losing. Now, this seems to be a different affair. They've started to start, sh they started to shoot back. They started to feel some more energy. And for me, I, I hope this is not an inherent problem in this current roster, right? Where is this uncomfortability coming from? It's likely because of the high expectations, the titles that they've got behind them, expectations that they should have made Masters Madrid, expectations that they should be making Shanghai. And that's a lot. Well, Koi, there's no expectations on them, <laughs> right? Especially from what has happened thus far. Yes, they want to be the best they can be, but it's, you know, <laughs> they haven't got all those titles before them, at least as this five-man roster, to show for it. I think that's something that we even touched during the kickoff event, the fact that they do have the opportunity to be a little bit more loose in the way that they're trying to play and approach things with a, a very fresh look with how the roster was essentially fully recycled out and swapped up here heading into the 2024 season. Yeah. But man. We promise that the game's coming back soon, yeah. guys. It's just a couple more minutes that we've heard from production until we get back into things. Yeah, you can see Thinking Faces because Comp Ops is currently uh, making sure that this is all being uh, communicated with the coaching staff and the players. And uh, of course, once they know what is going on, of course, they'll be jumping into the match as well. Yeah, it's a little bit troubling, right? They figured out, wait, round three has come back to bite us. It's, it's quite a dicey one. But of course, you've got to play this fair and uh, and uh, props to the admin team to be able to see that and be able to act quickly enough before this map comes to fruition, right? Before it all ends. Because it often, you know, often just flies past, but they're able to read it, get back and react on time. And uh, surely once this was all communicated, we can jump right back in. That's four rounds consecutive for Fnatic. It's got to feel good. It's got to feel grand for them. Uh, because Koi, they haven't simply, apart from the pistol and the follow-up, they haven't gotten a single piece of that pie on defense. 
And I'm actually quite amused on how Bind is being played out this game, right? Because it's also just been their approach on plants, not really go for the backside denial. Yeah. It's just wait for your opponents on that defense side to try and peek you, try and contest you. And so far, both of the teams that get the spike down, they've had quite a lot of success on that A side doing so. Yeah, having a bit more trouble breaking through into those post-plant situations here. Yeah. And we also have to keep in mind, like, sure, as a reminder, the score line, if you're just tuning in, maybe is seven Fnatic and 11 Koi. We started off in that first half, we ended it 9-3 Koi. They picked up the pistol, they pick up the anti-eco. So we really, it was 11-3 for a while until they got the ball rolling. And you can look at this tech timeout as in two ways, I want to say. Yeah. For Koi, there's potentially a chip on their shoulder, thinking back, okay, now we're getting called back to something that happened early on into this matchup, and if that would add any kind of mental stress to them. But then you also have Fnatic, who just started to get that ball rolling, and now everything slowed down. It's been a bit of a speed bump here with this pause within the game. 100%. And as the players are giving our ready checks, we'll be moving in to this swiftly. It's uh, looking like a dicey affair. Fnatic on the bounce. Koi looking to close out this series in their favor. We're rock and rolling again on bind. Fnatic's pick, and it's all on the line. Let's see if Koi can close it out or Fnatic can do a magnificent comeback. It would be absolutely insane if it does end up happening. I mean, you do have the thrash up here for Fnatic in the hands of Leo. He's been on fire ever since we swapped over into this second half. And for Koi, a bit of a light buy coming through, a bit of interesting situation. A lot of those ultimates used in the previous round expended. Oh, yeah. Information garnered. They know at least one is residing in towards Hookah. Looking to fall back here for Fnatic. Just looking to poke and prod. See what information they can draw, what utility yeah. they can pull out on the side of the defenders. In full Fnatic fashion this half, I'd say, right? This is exactly what they've been going for since the beginning. Waiting for Koi to push them. I mean, Koi did push them the first couple of rounds. Worked out. Of course, that was a pistol. Now there's guns involved, more utility. How do you end up working right this one out? It seems like that A site has been their favorite. It's been their little baby on this uh, attacking side here for Fnatic, and that's exactly where they're heading to yet again. Scout destroyed. Oh yeah. Do they actually Monster take back that shower's control? No, it's gonna be a fall back here. Thrash out on side of Fnatic. Front sight fully cleared out. Koi looking to play a full retake. We've got to slowly see their adaptations here, Koi. I mean, they don't have many ultimates to work with. They've only got their guns and a bit of utility to try and work through it. And uh, there's no reason for Fnatic to change up their approach. They have gone for a bit of push and pull before. Will they do the same thing again? It seemed like Durka was thinking about it. And he's still very far forward on that lamp side to right avoid Koi pushing in too quickly. But they're all moving in together. Dizzy out. And they, this unit play from Koi, we'll see if it works out. Snake bite to the feet of Durka. It's Chronicle to win Hours first fight in short. Durka still not moving, still not budging. And he's there for a guarantee to get himself behind his opponents. It's good for one. Diffused halfway, though. The wingman has done his job, but Gravino's alone. And he knows there's not a chance he can do against these three players of Fnatic on this defense. And he's going to have to concede this one to allow Fnatic to get on an eighth round. Could take a Chronicle here at the very least, but I mean, the bank is full here for Fnatic, right? You get another alt point here for Rubinho, but not much you can do otherwise. An eighth round on the board for Fnatic. The crowd behind them as well, cheering them on, helping them boost that momentum a fifth round in a row. Let's see the replay. So I had the idea here for Koi to flood back in, but I think that Ever since we have also swapped over to the defense for Koi, we haven't seen the same kind of impact coming out from that KO pick, actually. Hasn't really done much to slow Thank things you, down on the side of Fnatic. Not the way that they like to play that push and pull. Yeah, you can slowly see the confidence from Fnatic also showing, though, right? Uh, Durka going for some more aggressive plays, and yeah. he's actually working out for him, connecting his shots. Koi feeling a little bit Koi's more disjointed, but it's off the back of Fnatic's pressure, to be fair. Really is. Koi have also gone for a little bit of a different approach, I think, the last Careful round here. and into this eco. Just trying to information star Fnatic a little bit more. Previously, they would throw out a bit more of that early utility and try and contest some of these choke points. Now they're choosing to play it much more quietly and force Fnatic to bring the fight to them instead. 
bit of a read over towards this A site here on the side of Koi. Zero rotations being pulled for players. And they're getting just about ready for a hit. Scout destroyed. Be quite convenient for Koi if Fnatic move into this A site. It's where they lie. But of course, against guns, Fnatic still won. Will there be the pistols? Shadows has been spotted. Possibility of him going ultra aggressive. Wingman coming out. It's enough of a distraction. There's a full up oh, there, but Alpha, Alpha you're there with a double. Spike planted. Somebody's there. Okay, into this round. 3v3 into the post plant. Is he out? Leo managing to find one at the very least. We're looking for a bit more stall here for Fnatic. Molly's in the post as well, denying the defuse. Grabino finding a third there, though, and it's all down to 1v1. How does he even deal with this? Starks are looking to move in quickly, but Bosa is trying to hide out. It's going to be Bosa to win it up against Starks. So, Fnatic right back in. Looking into the replay here as well, man. Buying so much time there on the side of Fnatic. There's Molly's perfect, a very open plant for them as well. You can see the hype. Okay, Boaster stands uh, up. And there's the bar bar cam yeah, that we love. The frustration. I mean, I don't know if we love it this time around, right? He's, uh, he's well, a he little bit it. overwhelmed with that one. Thinking how close they got to it. But no cigar. No cigar. I mean, it's been a while since Koi have been two away from closing out map one and Fnatic. Well, they're known for their comebacks. Let's just say that, right? Their first international title was off of back of an insane comeback on an icebox. I mean, ever since Guns came out to play here for Fnatic, it's been all them on the board the second half. Contact up towards showers for Fnatic. A look that we haven't really seen much of. They're looking to... Oak and Prod, maybe try and get behind that Viper's pit. I actually see the spike being pulled back here. Prompt and pull. Koi, go for an info grab. I haven't found anybody, though. When Fnatic were in this difficult situation here, they also placed that Viper's pit in the same direction. Can Koi and tackle this in the way that Fnatic did? Durka has gone all the way around. Camo not expecting Durka to be that deep that quick. And Fnatic take over. Orbital Strike out. Looking to stop the plant from ensuming. There's not much time to it. They've only just got enough to the spike. Diffuse or incendiary up against Grabinho. Where did that happen? Koya losing players left and right. It's Bosa's turn to get onto the fragging reels. But Shados needs to do something heroic. Orbital Strike up against Shadow. Shados will only be able to be alive for one. And with the plant coming through, it's Fnatic to be on the board yet again. Shadow is going to be conceding this one. I mean, you have to. There's nothing else you can do in this situation. Money dwindling on the side of Koi. It's been a back and forth with their economy, not finding any comfort on this defensive half. Not being able to build up that bank and Fnatic with the continuous rounds that they're finding for themselves. Now, this one being the seventh in a row. The ultimates have been cycling up quite nicely. Again, one away for Chronicle and Durka into the next round. And Shadow's not even able to keep that gun and send it over Fnatic. They All go right. hunting comfortably. Yeah, and they've got a message to throw at Koi here. How dare you play up against us in the way that you already have? How dare you challenge us? Fnatic are right back in, and you can hear the crowd saying it. Who are they? Fnatic. They've closed up the gap completely. Only one round differentiating these two teams. That was a statement round. And let's see if this buy round from Koi is enough to break this red streak we see on our screens. Band-Aid to stop the bleeding. Now Showstopper up with that last kill. That Durko is able to find on Shadow into the last round. Information sought over towards B-Long. Fanatics poised and ready, expecting maybe some aggression for Koi to change the pace of this defense, to look for something a little bit more aggressive and try something different because the passive look hasn't been working out for them. 
Fnatic also do well to do some information starving of their own, of course. Incendiary already out, denying that hookah control and group over towards long. Shadowrun is very tippy toes to try and find information there. Scout I mean, he's completely alone on B now as well. And starving from info. And you can see how Koi have reacted to it. They're, they want to seize control of some sort of a part of the map, and they've chosen to do this on A, leaving this B site completely defenseless. It will prone this showstopper to go... No! Towards Shadow? A blind alt in towards Elbow? Through an incendiary grenade? That. You know he's feeling himself now. Yeah, no, he's <laughs> alive. Uh, he's doing things no one would have thought fathomable. But still, Koi, let's see what they can do in this one. Darker up again. No. A nade again. He feels comfortable under pressure. And Koi, they have got an alpha yet right behind them to put them to sleep. Fnatic with an Andalusia Flawless have performed the comeback and have found the score of Koi. We've evened things up now. It's all about who's going to hit that match point first. And based on how attack is looking for Fnatic, we've got all eyes on them. A snowball, a monster of a round for Koi to face up against. And they've only got tough weapons to work with. Pistols, tough. got a shorty, impossible yeah. weapons to work with, yeah. realistically. Not looking bright, it's dodgy. They're playing for overtime, right? Essentially just Ooh. guaranteeing that they have enough in to try and tie things up in that last round. Down. The Fnatic, they also have the opportunity to keep these alts into our 24th round as well. They've been good with juggling those ultimates, mm -hmm. right? Even in moments where you thought Koi would start to run away with things, Fnatic still Toxins were one away down. from an alt orb, one away from being able to turn this round in their favor. And again, they're keeping Koi uncomfortable, forcing them out to over-rotate, overthink, and that's exactly where Fnatic chooses to pounce. Falling back here, Koi again. Continuously moving the second man on that B site over towards A. I mean, in this situation, right, they're on pistols. They're on, well, on weaker weapons. They've got to make a gamble. But I feel like they're making this gamble even when they do have weapons in hand, that's to be fair. True. That's very true. <laughs> A big risk. I, and they're playing that retake protocol, but it's not looking very good on that B site with how Fnatic continue to push in and take that elbow control. Well, they're going to keep holding it and reinforcing it with extra players, knowing that Koi might want to take the short I distance angles. Camo actually moves into the site. He's the only one of the two players with the rifles at play. Durka, though, is going to be a menace in the back line. They're on the spike. Seeker's heading in their direction. Wingman got an off of it, but Alpha is still fighting, still breathing, and still has got a gun on him. And the bullets in his chamber have got Grabinho's name on them. Fnatic on 12, one away from closing out bind. It was an insane way that we started off this map. 4-0 and for Koi, 9-3 to at the half, and Fnatic clawing their way back since the third round of the second. See the way that they just continue to push forward. Durka literally entered sight, one elbow, cleared out the entirety of CT, and did the whole ring around the Rosie. See frustration mounting. I think it's also, you look towards these compositions for Koi, the initiator swap was very interesting on attack because of how it allows you to open up those sites. But on defense, you're lacking a lot of that information that the sky actually yeah. provides despite the nerf. With that intel. I got you, I got you. Well. Back to square one. And Koi, again, they've got to make decisions constantly. All the time. Fnatic know. They know this is when Koi are uncomfortable. They're just feeling out this server. We're also going to a classic Fnatic map next, and it's Koi's pick too. Right. On Icebox. I mean, Durka has already woken up, and he is the king of oh, that map. It's a bold move from Koi to pick that up. Yeah, okay, last time Fnatic played it up against Heretics, they did end up losing quite uh, in an ugly way. But you got to think that you got to be able to do the same thing that Heretics did to be able to pick that up as your own. Spike will be dropping down, nothing to stop it. Thrash thrown out here from Shadow. Who will be following up with it? Showstopper from Camo. Chronicle to the left oh. side of the site, but Fnatic have set up a lot of crossfires, and Decker's looking to go in aggressive. They sent in a thrash of their own. Two of them already could cost. Fnatic look 
looking to close it all out as quickly as ever. Alpha with a triple. Fnatic turn it all around for them. Smiles across the board here on the side of Fnatic on the stage. They know what they were able to pull off, and it was magic seeing this team come back into form in the second half. I mean, Koi, they gave us a lot of full play, but Fnatic, Fnatic showed us how to climax. There you go, map number one going to Fnatic's way. We're back for Icebox. I know a place that will break you into a thousand pieces. Stay away from them. Stay away from Lorca, Paco, and Picasso. Don't ask about Lola. I, Caballo Grande. I, Lord Nieve. But in spite of everything, it occurs to you to visit Andalusia. Don't say I didn't warn you. Be careful of the Andalusian crush. Hey guys, it's Jimmy Lin, former professional Counter-Strike player and Valorant coach. Watch out for the stairs, clear this angle, you're going to be able to fight this. Red Bull gives you wings.
you have a huge wingman. Wingman, Lil Bro, Lil Bro. Lil Bro saving our lives. That's my IGL, bro. This guy is my IGL. Come on in, come on in, come on in, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Gordo, give it to me. Who are we? FNC! Who are we? FNC! Who are we? FNC! Who are we? FNC! Thank you very much, Gordo, everyone. I've joined the Fanatic fans in the fan zone here at the Riot Games Arena because I've decided to test their fandom. I want to find the ultimate Fanatic fan and I want to root out people who don't really love Fanatic. In fact, I found an imposter. Sir, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but if we can just remove him from the building. Stevie, Stevie, get in here. He's not a real Fanatic fan. Sell says who? Right, okay, behind me. You know what, Gordo? I'm going to ask you the first question because right. you have been leading the chance in the arena and we've absolutely loved having you here. The first question, fill in the blank. Spam this blank to help Fnatic. What? You don't know your copy pastas. It's like this man touches grass. <laughs> Spam this what to help Fnatic. Static! I don't know. <laughs> help, help him out over there. Just say that again, louder. <laughs> louder. Someone just whispered behind me, static, static, it's static. Gordo, what's the answer? Static? Yay! Yay! Right, Stevie's going to give you a, uh, a special reward. Who's your favourite Fanatic player? No, it's not. Okay. It's Chronicle. Uh, yeah, it's Chronicle. Congratulations, you've won <laughs> an autographed <laughs> cue card with a fun fact about Chronicle. Would you like to read it out? Fun fact, I'm not funny. Well, but actually, I love cooking and I'm good at it. There we go. Another uh, fun fact. Okay, uh, question number two. Can I ask you, what's your name? Uh, Laura. Laura, lovely to meet you, Laura. Okay, question number two. What did the Fanatic Core call their team before they were signed? Can I pass the question? You can pass the question. I'm not sure either. <laughs> <sighs> okay, anyone? Hello, hello sir. Oh my goodness, I should have worn my heels. Do you know what a fanatic used to be called? No. <laughs> okay, it's fine, don't worry. Okay, it was Salmon FC and it was short for Sage. Oh, my Nan. Okay, no wonder no one knew that one. Question number three. I'm gonna come over to you. Hello, sir. Okay, what is Boaster's preferred knife skin? Knife skin. I'm not sure. Okay, oh, hello. Boaster's preferred knife skin? Default. Yes, okay. Let's give you a fun fact from Fnatic. This is actually Durkin. Maybe you guys can swap later on. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna let you keep that fact to yourself because you deserve to uh, have a little secret between you and Mr. Durka. Um, okay, who is the only Greek to ever play for Fnatic? I'm just gonna see, does anyone know? Anyone wanna buzz in? There was a Greek player who played for Fnatic. I think Tom wrote this question, which makes sense because he's evil. No one wants to answer that one. The answer was Sack. No? No one? It's all Greek to me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna choose some people to give these spare cards out because I'm gonna run out of time in a moment. Who was Fnatic strategic coach at Kickoff and Champions in 2023? You? You were? Oh, is in you were the coach or you know the answer? Mini. Mini, it wasn't Mini. I'm so sorry. Also, I didn't mic you up. He said Mini if anyone didn't hear on the broadcast. Okay. <laughs> okay, one, one more. Anyone wanna just have a, a guess? He's also, he shares his name with a very famous Danish caster. Oh, I don't know, I, I think Kojo? I don't know. No, no, no one knows, it's okay. Anders, I gave you all hints, it's fine. There are no true Fnatic fans here, it turns out. We should bring back the guy from Sentinels. I imagine he knows all the answers, <laughs> okay? Okay, I feel like someone's gonna know the answer to this. Does anyone watch the Ranked Up podcast? With Yinzu and Boaster, no? Does anyone know the name of Boaster's cat? Gordo. Karma. Karma! Yes! Karma has come Gordo's way. I imagine no one would know the answer to question number seven, so instead I'm gonna actually ask it to Steele and Tom on the desk. What was Durka's ACS in his international debut? Boys, have a guess. 
I'm not gonna lie. I saw, I saw a number earlier. It's 360 something, but that's supposed yeah. to be real. Does it? Does 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 it, anyone know anything at this point? All right, let's just say 369 then. Yeah. Yeah. How about that? Let's go with that. That's a nice number. I like that number, but. Yeah, um, it, it seems like the quiz hasn't gone fantastically. Luckily, we're going to be heading into the AIM Labs, and I know that you had a little bit to say about the, the KO pick from Starzo when it came to the previous map, at least. Well, at the start of the map, I was thinking like, <laughs> oh, you know what? This KO pick's looking good. It's not looking like anything like how Na'Vi runs it with artists. They look a little not great with it. And then, you know, they get that 11-3 lead. Oh, things are looking pretty good with the KO. And then, obviously, it's just like back to reality. Fnatic's still pretty good and then it's also bind which is very heavily attack favored so once you have a very heavily attack favored map like that and you get into that second half it's just going to be smooth sailing uh, to the finish line yeah and, and obviously now at least we, we've got our next map coming up in just a moment I, I want to know in, in terms of icebox do you actually have anything you think will be coming out? It's just like it's just about to be shown, but any anything expected? Well, I'm expecting Koi to run the harbor, but they aren't doing that. Um which is different than the last times they oh, played. They're, they're doing on the double, no duelist thing. They're doing the no oh. duelist thing. They're doing their double controller. I do like double controller. But um, do you like no duelist? I don't mind it. Okay. Uh, I think it depends on the team and how they can pull it off, using that omen to be able to use the op. And, and it's really just like the pressure on attack from his, his one-way smokes and everything. But you can also get really aggressive setups with the, the defense omen as well. It's uh, Is it going to be enough? I'm not sure. But uh, Fnatic's comp is just so old school that it doesn't matter it's not that great yeah well either way we're going to be throwing things off to the casters obviously that is ash cast and pavlos thank you very much tom yes indeed we'll take you through this next map icebox our next journey bit of a switch with these comps don't you think here ash a bit of a change up maybe that's the answer they need to get right back in it's definitely possible. Uh, not quite the same composition as what we saw coming out from the likes of Heretics, but they were also the ones to do the No Duelist comp on Icebox earlier on within the competition just the other week. So heading into this game now, again, Koi are the ones who have taken us to Icebox. This is Fnatic's playground, though, a map that we have known Durka to shine on, and they're going off with an, the momentum of an insane comeback here for map one on Bind. Let's see if Koi are able to rebound from the last one and show us why Icebox was picked up to begin with. So far, so okay. forth, Fnatic are doing Fnatic things like they did on the last map, but this time, it's a bit more bravado yeah. to it as they're yeah. inching their way forwards into a triple stack up from Koi. Dizzy coming out, might be a little bit too late. Paranoia is actually brilliant from Camo and he doubles it up with a kick as well. Chronicle, quick to react to it, but it seems like the numbers for Koi here are overwhelming. Shadow moves out, upgrades his gun and Koi have got the advantage. Hey, they're doing well to clap back into this pistol round after uh, their demise over on Bind, but fanatic. Got two players up here. Not a lot of space making available and three stacked on this B side of Koi. All up. Hmm. It's just a matter of Koi giving them picks here. They could just hold back, play safe, play it chill. <laughs> surprise! Not a, not a nice surprise for Alpha yet. At least it doesn't mean his Koi inevitable death. Some trades coming in, but Koi can be very comfortable taking these trades. They're actually playing the super safe. <laughs> I almost feel it's super, it's too respectful, you know? But, you know, it's Bosa that needs to get that spiked up. But he's going a little bit further. Alarm bot will show his position. And um, a lot of acrobatics from Koi there as they get themselves the pistol of this game. I mean, they immediately shut down that push over towards B main with the look that they saw with Shadow having the positioning over on green there, right? But now we look into the next round. I think we saw a little bit of how Fnatic needed to adjust over on Bind when Koi pulls out a brand new composition. We saw that coming to fruition more into the second half just because of how Koi's composition did favor more of that attack inside previously. So it will be another question of how long it takes Fnatic to kind of get a grip on what Koi is cooking with another new look at this comp. Gotcha. Nice shot. Well, in just a few seconds, Shadow gets two orbs for the ults. Thrash did wonders the previous game. Didn't mean the map win eventually. No, 
but it found so much value and he cycled Usher. it up so many times. I, I feel like over on bind, the opportunities. Tiny here for Alpha though. He snuck past, hasn't he? Looking in the window. And he might have a chance to find a pick. Shadow's looking at it, and he's got a better gun. Alpha can be dangerous with a Sheriff. Shadow Shados puts an end to that. The A-Site is taken over. Yes, there is quite a lot of Shados utility there. Alambot not yet triggered, but the Nana Swarm's just enabled. Spike going down. Fnatic, that's the best they can hope for, really. Maybe a pick or two. If they go after it, stick around together, or maybe isolate themselves. But Koi not going to take any chances, trying to approach it like they did at the start of the previous map. Respect it. And to play it to a T, a flawless round by Koi to get a second on the board. Very comfortable for them now, heading into round three. Flawless. Fnatic, when you take a look at their composition off of this Andalusia flawless here for Koi, it, it's almost completely opposite when you're considering, okay, Koi are cooking. They're trying to bring something new. They're leaning into that double controller meta that we've seen coming out here on Icebox. Um, I think one of the first looks that we saw of that was G2 pulling at the broom on Icebox over in Americas. But right there. Fnatic, they're going to, towards the very classic old Icebox comp here. And we do, it is a, maybe a question of, okay, again, we saw them lacking a little bit of that innovation over in kickoff, leaning back into uh, old comforts. And how can they make it, this old meta comp kind of look new, have a fresh look here? Yeah, we often see that early snake bite paired up with a shock dart. This time, no real need, but you can see that Shadows was a little bit scared of it. Drops back in case that was the case. And Durka going in for a bit of a walk. Spotted though. Bit of hindrance. What can Shados do to deter it? Not much, really. Will yield and allow for this retake. They've got quite a lot of rifles too. This Koi could definitely do some damage here. It's just a matter of being able to separate this out. Fnatic, they moved away from the harbor roll, the, the harbor comp. Let's see what they can do with this one and what their retake approach, their hold approach looks like this time around. I'm gonna tell you, it looks pretty darn clean. Koi, the moment they move in, they get deleted. And um, yeah, it's hard to say what happened there. We're gonna have to look at the replays because <laughs> that was explosive and quick. Alpha yeah, with the final bullet and two consecutive Andalusia flawless for Fnatic. They answer right back with one, right? Weapons out here now for Koi. We got the Thrash cycled in in the hands of Shadow here as well. But I do think it's quite interesting that both teams opted to, to move away from that harbor, maybe yeah. it being a little bit more comfortable for Chronicle to be on this stage here on the side of Fnatic. Uh, Koi, I think, wanting to, That's a cheeky again, off. just flip things. They yeah. don't really have anything to lose at this point. Well, things up. I, there's a lot on the line, well, of course. Yeah, <laughs> they're but trying I to make playoffs. Um, I mean, expectations. Look, that's true, that's true. But if they can uh, make playoffs by the first ma game they win is against Fnatic, that steams all their yeah. confidence, beating so they can fend off the next opponents better. Well, that would be quite the something, quite the something, quite, yeah, doesn't make sense English wise. Still, three versus five. And Fnatic have lost two players one by one. But with Leo able to entangle themselves out of the situation, it's giving them a breath oh, yeah. of fresh air. And one away from that resurrection here as well for Chronicle. You can get that plant, you could breathe new life into one of these teammates towards back site. But that's if they can even find themselves on A. Zero point finds the information, but no suppression to come to fruition here. And you see the boy moving, Shados looking to cut off the rotation. Keep an eye over towards mid. There. It's gonna doing some chip damage to Boaster. 30 seconds left. Snuck right Fnatic in. Fnatic looking to move in. Koi have got this very well read with all the yeah. three defenders being nearby. Chronicle will get the spike down. Will this trigger any attempt from Koi to deter this? No, Spike will be going down and Grabinho trying to deal with Leo. That's the resurrection back in. So Fnatic can, can play off of the advantage. Last time, everybody took part in holding back Koi. Three, three to suppress. It's going to be the bullets to do the difference. Starks are with two, but Fnatic have got more alive. And it's Shados to try and deal with the remaining pesky Fnatic players. Unable to do so, Fnatic are able to equalize. They turn things around here and now into the next 
Koi on the back foot as far as their economy goes. You have that Null Command thrash here online. Unlikely to see that coming through, but you can see this replay. The upper angle that Starkso was able to find, but that recon coming out from Leo was everything to find and equalize those numbers in the early round. Yeah, it was brilliant. I, I can't believe they actually managed to accomplish that. Uh, Leo just found themselves the last remaining piece of that puzzle. And uh, yeah, if it's going to be forced out power from one of the greats, that's going to have to be the way for this one. Koi, lesser weapons, closer distances, yada, 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 we know. Well, risk garnered to the left-hand side with three players pretty close yeah. to the action. But Fnatic are never going to move in without gaining some information first. Nope. Every step, every choice, a measured one from this squad. From this international stage winning squad on the side of Fnatic. Going over towards Koi. Fox They've got that stack down. over towards B. Just a quiet contact up here for Fnatic. Not much delay. It's going to be that retake here on the side of Koi Fnatic is playing to fall back off of sight. Yeah. Will do. I mean, as soon as the Aldrone no is, is notified, Koi react to it instantly. All five players trying to get here as fast as possible. Spike planted. Urbino's job there was really just to draw a little bit of that utility Caution. before that spike gets planted. Well, it's hard to believe that they can make it work with pistols, given that they haven't been able to do it with a full set of rifles. Still, there is a very dangerous Durka lying beneath them. Shadow is able to find something for Koi, but Durka's quick demise gives us an idea that Koi may stand a chance, but both of it is looking to interrupt it. Right clicks from Chronicle. Oh, it's going rough for both sides, but picked up by Chronicle in the end to avert the crisis, and the lead goes to Fnatic. A little too close for comfort into that round, though. Durko playing underneath rafters. He manages to get one, but a good call from Koi to actually have the numbers in that drop and try and get that trade, which they succeed with. But this is the round that we're really looking towards Koi with the, the buy coming back in, the null command of the thrash in. A perfect ultimate for the retake situation. Stall out in that post plant as well. <laughs> Well, I, I just find it very amusing how fun the, the coaching staff of Fnatic were like, <laughs> that was way too close. But a, a, a bit of relief by the end, knowing that they did get the win. Oh, look at Durka going, lining fast right off to the chase oh. of Shados. Leo does get the last tag to at least get the trade, but I think Fnatic would have loved for that to be untraded. I like that you see Leo being so proactive with that Hunter's Fury as well, expecting that it, it, later in the round, Starkso might look spike to down cancel a. it out. But the spike down with Shadow taking out Chronicle. 3v4 or here for Fnatic. Cover going out. You've got to hand it to Koi. They're keeping it competitive. They're finding picks. They're keeping Fnatic on their toes. No, come on. Straight off the rip. Thrash? No, that's the mosh. That's the mosh we heard for some reason. I thought it was a thrash enabled here from Shadow. It would have been a bit too preemptive given that not all Koi players were there, but the spike yet to go down. Koi are going to throw it out for information. Even though the spike not planted, they will be able to catch out Boaster. But Alpha Yes is to there to stop them. No one's going to peek it! Oh my god! Boaster gets away with his life. And now right back on the side to try and get his teammate to put the spike down. Oh, Camo is hiding in within the poison cloud and he doesn't know when to peek because he's getting low. The longer he waits within it, Boaster gets the opportunity to shoot to bottom. Cool, you're keeping things close, but Leo is great on the clutches. He was born in them, bred in them. And will he make it work for him this time around? No, Shadow denies it, triple to his name, puts Koi on his back in this one and wants to restore equilibrium. Neck and neck right now between Koi and Fnatic, just trading these rounds back and forth. It's a gorgeous smoke that gets thrown over towards...
as Koi are desperately trying to keep their way in. And look, Alpha, he's just behind the alarm bot, waiting over towards mid, garnered so much space. Again, Fnatic know exactly where these last two players are. They're not going to expect this forward positioning. Not going to walk into it. You've already seen Grabinho has crept up over towards me. He's happy to play that retake here. Also got Alpha with the lockdown. If they deem it necessary to close out the round. Look how far back you see Leo playing as well, not looking to get caught out in case Koi decides yeah. to walk straight left. over towards Don't B. Get in my way. Even within the Viper's pit, you can't feel too comfortable if you're Koi right now. And the lockdown is the perfect counter to it, right? You just had to push them straight out of this site. And that's exactly what Alpha Yet is going to do. Deny them all this space. What's Koi going to do in response? Looking to play aggressive. Grabinho is no more. And Shados is alone. Can he deny Fnatic the win right here? It's going to be a tough one. It's going to be a difficult one. And with him being revealed, it's going to be the end of this series. Oh, it took them a while on Vine, but Icebox was a different story. One-sided all across the board. Fnatic's map all day. I mean, it's a way to clap back here. They have to remind everyone why they were previously international winners twice into last season. And a nice try here for Koi, but it really was lackluster here on Icebox. And again, surprising that they took it over towards Fnatic's playground. It was uh, a good fight from Koi at, at the first map, at least. And it showed some good signs of improvement, right? It showed that they did go back to the drawing board. They did go and try and fix up some mistakes, not only compositionally, but with their approach, going for a more find approach. But Fnatic were also a team that had to reinstate some confidence in some of their key individuals. Durka, he had his day yesterday. But I think today was Alpha's turn to get back on track, get back in the right group to put Fnatic at the top of EMEA again. Fnatic are your victors this match. Well, that, of course, will be the day. It's been an excellent one. It's been one with many back and forth. Fnatic will be your victors this time around against Koi. But ladies and gents, that is the day. That was... Uh, we were aware that we had quite a few audio issues, perhaps with the stream starting, uh, but uh, we are grateful for you sticking through all of the troubles. Again, thank you very much for tuning in, everybody. We'll see you again tomorrow. Well, we'll see you again next week. Have fun during this weekend, and we'll see you then. Okay, go nice. for it. It's a hair razor! I still remember it's like this. Uh, and this is my smile. Relax, relax! Players. Let's go through it.
wasn't the case, but it very well could have been, right? So that was yeah. that's always a question in their minds. Especially with that Toxic Screen not having dropped early enough for it either to catch him out. So now we head into the next round. Operator online here in the hands of Camo, who's actually on the Omen. It's kind of a very different situation for him, but this Duelist player for Koi. Maybe take a little page of the Book of Angel with how he might be aggressive with yeah. some of those TPs. A bit of opportunity Maybe. there. You see the upper angle there, of course, with Fnatic. They don't even know that the AWP is online right now. I'm trying to get the timing. Turret, shot it down. Toxin screen down. One of the first ventures that weren't single-handed here from Fnatic into mid. This time it was uh, stack up with two. But Koi vacating, and it's just in time for Fnatic to move in. Well played Shock Dart as well, dealing with defensive utility. I mean, the turret was the only thing watching towards mid, right? Then they're expecting that scale up already. From the shadows over towards screens. Koi are playing this together, but it might get ripped up apart by themselves. Dark has been unleashed. Tucker could kill, that's the call. And it's 2v4. And Koi have definitely got to give this one away yeah. to put Fnatic on top here. Seizing respect on, on uh, Koi's map pick. I mean, neither team really have the money to play with with how these trades are going back and forth in the round. And you want that operator to stay online here, Camo. With that in hand, you saw how Koi put so much trust in him to just like completely lock down that B site. The ability to also then get out with that Omen utility. Had he been rushed and after hopefully having get on, gotten a pick, but the ebb and flow here. The gambles coming out from Koi. We saw a little bit of that on bind as well on the defense. They really like to lean into those 4-1 splits, calling mm. for those rotations quite early. Where would you be comfortable here if you were if you were Koi? How what would be a threshold for them to collect here on the defense side uh, to at least you know have, stand the chance against Fnatic on the attack? I know what you're thinking. Even nine to three, they wouldn't be comfortable given <laughs> the result of the first match uh, on Bind. But yeah, let's be realistic here. If there's ever a chance that they are still prevalent on the server, you know what would you like to be at at the end of this half if you're Koi? Well, okay, I think there's a what's realistic, and then there's also a what you would like to, yeah. Because okay. for Koi, I'm sure if you ask them, they would love <laughs> to be at 8 to 4. Nice. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. The next five rounds, right? But <laughs> I think the if they can get to five, that would be yeah. comfortable enough for really them. I think the difference in seeing Mini Boo on a KO versus Stark So is just it, the way that he's able to go in and camo on the Omen, but right underneath the Dark is flamboyant with this, but it's rough around the edges. Gravinho takes the pie, but Leo snatches it right back. It's a game of tag. That so far, no one's the winner, as the spike isn't heading anywhere, but Leo covering uncovering the site hasn't spotted out, crucially, yeah. Shadow's positioning. No, but look at where Camo is right now, fully watching the flank. Fnatic are boxed in towards B main. They are, but they are strong. It's as if you're asking who's boxed in with who. And Camo's left that corner. So he'll be late to be notified of, uh, notified of a rotate, but it's an easier pick to get. And one which could likely go untraded, but Fnatic aren't entertaining that. They're looking at me. They fancy it. They say it looks pretty and they want to make it theirs. All to come in. Leo with a pick up against the smoke as well. Stark so probably didn't see the bullets coming. That plant, but the upper angle here for Alpha is left. everything. You should run. It's great for Fight Fnatic, planted. and I think those just two picks were enough for them to pick up this round as well. Koi, you're gonna have to give this one have away. Brilliant stuff back. for Fnatic, right? <laughs> it didn't really allow Koi to go for this, uh, you know, post plant retake. Didn't happen. No, I mean, having the lockdown available there, it means yeah. so much. Shados, and then you look at the other side, Shados being one away from one of his own into the next round. He's able to find a pick and whatnot or farm up one of those orbs. But I think what begs the question here for Koi is Camo being on this omen. Yeah. 
we're now seeing a lack of ability for Koi to actually break in to a lot of these post plants that Fnatic have. Of course, you do have Stark, so you have Shadow with that Initiator utility, but Camo's usually the one actually making that space. And if he's also now stuck That's on an operator on top of being the con one of the controllers yeah. here, I think that makes it a lot more difficult for him to be dynamic. It hinders the versatility, you're right. And I also want to look at these replays here to see if it's actually Koi's overstepping that caused their demise in this round. That Stark so yeah, he didn't see that coming. Maybe a, a little bit of fault to be seen for Shadow there, but that round was pretty much already over. It was ultra aggressive from Alpha on the, on the wall. Okay, trouble for Koi as they've started to lose quite a lot of rounds. Let's say most of the rounds they've gotten, two out of the three with a pistol in the follow-up. So a lot of work to do on this buy round. It's been Fnatic's game all day so far on this half. That's tough too, like looking at how comfortable Koi have been on pistols. They're three for three so far within this matchup against Fnatic. Um, but right, Fnatic haven't necessarily been pistol <laughs> gamers in the past no. either, <laughs> historically. Uh, you know that it's all them usually when those weapons do come out. Conversation happened here. It's going to be Barbara taking the reins on the side of Koi. Maybe some of his mistakes, adjustments oh. that he wants to see coming through. I think the space that they gained on the other yeah. side of the map with Camo was really nice with how they pushed out. But again, not expecting that upper angle. It's also a redemption story for Fnatic, I feel, this map. Last time they played it, 13-4 against Heretics. This used to be their home ground. This used to be where they were the innovators. Yeah. They got plays named after them. Setups cool. named after them. The Vipers Wars, the Vipers Pits. They hold attacks and retakes. It was where everybody, the, the Fnatic VODs were where everybody wanted to go to learn how to play Icebox. And they got that stole away, stolen away from them. Heretics is the one to blame. When against Koi, does that reclaim it for them? Maybe, it's a step in the right direction. Shados gets caught though, and Fnatic have a great start to this round. That was bold. Um, I don't think Starkso was quite ready on Raptors to actually help him hold the angle there. Not that he would have even been able to see all the way deep in towards A main, but free sight for the taking here for Fnatic. And Welcome to my world. Now we see, okay, the swap over. Shadow's the one with the operator this time. They put Camo on the rifle, expecting him again to be this player to still make that space. The Viper Spit is going to make it a very difficult. Bosa tries to peek out through the smoke, but Koya very quick to react to it. Alpha, his nano swarms are doing damage, and Chronicle is in the fight, causing panic. It's still a two versus two. Anyone's round, Resurrection's still available for Chronicle. That could move a lot of attention towards him. One enemy remaining. Chooses against it. And when you have Alpha, you're alive to shine bullets upon his opponents. There's nothing Koi can do. That heal meant a lot there too. Alpha taking quite a bit of chip damage. I think could have been a different story had that not actually uh, gone through, had they not grouped up in that situation. And now, Koi. They are slowly snowballing into some of these ultimates, oh, but ever remaining. since, again, these guns have come out, they really nice. haven't found an opportunity where they felt comfortable back. expending any of them. Not having the numbers and the three takes. <laughs> I do wonder if we see the pit being popped here on the Eco. Yeah, maybe. It will be quite, uh, quite a daunting one and maybe not the right decision if you want to make sure you win as much rounds as possible. I like the call on Alpha here. There's your confidence. Uh, it was a boaster to Alpha here, actually. There's your confidence. And it feels like he's handing out confidence points to all of his teammates. You get a plus one confidence this game. <laughs> it feels like they need that. Little by little, all of these individuals start to feel a little bit more comfortable. That's what's been missing for Fnatic this year. All of them are stars. The timing here. Yeah. So good for all that. It's tough if you're camo, but he's making a lot of noise in that one. It's a simple spray down, a mow down for Fnatic. Yeah. Not really taking too much damage apart from a loss onto Durka. They were just housekeeping that round. But now is Koi's turn to get right back on a buy. It is. You've got the lockdown available. You've got that thrash in as well here for the side of Koi. But you also have Leo cycling up into that Hunter's Fury, one point away from it. It's going to be a solo endeavor for Shados over towards the A site, locking it down. Fnatic choosing it as the stack in the early round, at the very least. Then you've got Boaster trying to poke and prod over towards B. This timing. No one's watching mid right now. Yeah. The space quite yet. 
It's a tough one. <laughs> and Fnatic don't seem to be moving very rapidly into any of these positions. They're more than happy to feel things out. Get a read yeah. first. Starkso is feeling things out over here. But Alpha, yeah, make sure that Starkso feels pain. And the same for Camo, as they don't really survive for long. That's mid opened up. Very much depleting the defense re defensive resources. Those are very two important players for retakes for Koi, so it's going to have to be dry gunpower from Koi to try and bring things back in their favor. So far, so good. It's a step in the right direction. If Shados gets a pick here, this is actually doable for Koi. He can't, though. He has to live. He has to fall back and play for this lockdown. You still have the Thrash up here for Shadow as well. You could make all the difference in the 3v4. And Chronicle can even go back and resurrect Alpha here if he needs to, but of course he's too far away, so he's going to stick into the fight as he gets the spike down. Lockdown available for Shados. Does he really use it at this point? No. Durka is the one to shut him one down. Koya left with one player only. It's Shadow. He's going to have to run away, but no. We'll try and take as many Fnatic players down with him, but he will not get a thing as Fnatic slowly but surely edge away from their opponents. Because not wanting to use it when you have that Hunter's Fury available there for Leo, but it's not like it's not being carried over into the next round with how Fnatic were able to break through there on a so comfortably set up into those crossfires, the ability to trade each other. Swings to come through. And again, he's also consistently just favored this upper angle, that pipes location here into the post plant. Sage, protect the others. Saving everything in the tank here for Koi. Yeah. Last three ultimates. Full buy coming through. What's the answer here for Koi? It feels like they're struggling to really do anything about it. Is it maybe the Shrupt Fnatic before they even go in, you think? I had to hold, sorry, I had to hold oh, my good. breath for a second because I was like, yeah. does Camo actually fall here? But just chip damage over towards two. And what Fnatic are doing really well is exploiting how weak mid is here on the side of Koi. Consistently finding at least one, sometimes two. I'm in Lurk, of course, they traded out this time around. But that's also now the lockdown out of the picture, an important ultimate that could have been a difference maker here for Koi. Could have been. Could have, would have, should have, perhaps. Now, Koi, though, don't quite have the read on it just yet. Grabinho's just spotted out a recon, but is he meeting any resistance? Yeah, now he knows he has, so he's going to call in the reinforcements, call in the cavalry. But who's going to be hopping their way towards who? Because Koi is standing their ground, and Fnatic surely but surely want to move across. They expect Leo's corner this time. Stark, so great timing by him. But Durka not going to hold back. It's going to be still kept a trading game. Going in for another bite. The thrash is great, but Leo's positioning might be better. Stark, so underneath will be enough for Koi to close out this half on a high. Momentum that they needed now. Looking over into the next half, we're expecting Koi. Well, one, they need the pistol. But two, it's something that they've been very good at converting. Their pistol rounds have been clean, uh, almost feeling a little bit more free in the way that they look for some of that aggression. But it, that was such a 50-50 as far as you can see. Barbar is like, OK, we almost lost that one. Like, if Leo closed that out there, like, how insane of position. <laughs> <laughs> I think Barber has a knock-on effect to his players. It's like they all are starting to gain his traits, the reactions. Maybe that was Stark so coming back to life there, <laughs> you know, when you have yeah. the, uh, oh, what is it? A defibrillator. Yeah, the, the defibrillator. I probably said Sorry. it wrong as well. There's too many. That leg's still getting too <laughs> not quite there yet. All good. Now back to the pistols. I think that was a pretty decent round for Koi to pick up. It keeps Fnatic at arm's reach, at least, with a pistol round, a follow-up. They've been good on the pistols. Koi have won out most of them. It's just that Fnatic are just too dumb strong on the buys. And again, seems that trends are repeating themselves as Koi get the first pick. Watching here. It does make things simpler, but Fnatic are still wary of the positioning of Koi. Still have got plenty of presence towards this A site. Yeah. Just waiting. Seeing if Fnatic will try to bite off more than they can chew one of these pushes. They're going to play it passive, though, knowing that they're at that numbers disadvantage now, needing to stick together. So quiet creep here for Koi. They haven't given anything away, but they also don't know where oh, Fnatic enough. are. They're going to have to expense some of that <coughs> utility as they contact up towards B main. There is the nano to also delay this plant here with time ticking down. 
Props a fanatic. Feels like they read it. Three close by. And Koi have moved into the B site where Fnatic's positioning looks grand. Oh, <laughs> Dox's green drops. Alpha, you gets two. How about that? Gorgeous. And down. now it's Koya in trouble. Yes, they've got the spike down, and Fnatic are the one that need to work with the time here, but they're all here. They don't need time to wait for the rotations. Durka moves in. Nano Swarm's popped out straight away. Grabinho with two. That's excellent. Dox exactly what Koya need. Can they find the rest? Alpha is causing trouble. Three, three already to his name. Might make it four. It could be an ace. Standing. Would Has it be, be Alpha against the world here? On the spike, Shados is low. One bullet should do it anywhere. On his heel. On his arm, on his torso, it's Alpha with the ace to give Fnatic the second pistol of Icebox. What a way to turn things around here on those pistols. And one that Koi so desperately needed getting back into this map. Now Fnatic are looking at potentially an early uh, garner towards the double digits here towards that scoreboard. Imagine but... if I died right now. Wow. I mean, right now, Alpha's 15 and 7. You yeah. also know that the players on Fnatic, they take a lot of the onus on their own shoulders individually in their performances. You can see it when, you know, they're putting things out on socials, talking about how they're sorry for disappointing the fans for the performance that they put up. And it's nice to see that confidence from you. Yeah. For sure. I mean, seeing Alpha in that yellow position is bringing back deja vu memories of when uh, he got a 1v2 clutch against Loud. Here. <laughs> all, all of this entire map, you could just take corners of it, parts of it, and make a highlight reel, depending on where you are. Uh, and it's all fanatic. But it's been a while since we've seen that. About time we see it replicated. Of course, it's against Koi. It's another team, yeah. Boys not the, not the biggest resistance we'd expect from them, but they've done a solid job on Bite. Turning the tides around. Making Fnatic feel uncomfortable. Yeah, Fnatic had an insane comeback, and they did it, get, did it again. Winning pistols, being able to trade it out. They're not being stomped over, and that's, I think, crucial for Koi. Build their confidence up. But for now, they might have to give this one away. They've got pistols, so they'll see how much damage they can do. Fnatic have got the read, but they're patient, reluctant to really go for any fights. To be fair, they're unnecessary, and Doug, he's got to lurk. He's got a spicy look. 30 seconds left. It's only Shados watching. He's making a lot of noise there, and there's a chance here for Shados to get behind. Shadow will be the victim to Darker's bullets, and so will Camo and Stark. So, Fnatic sees the charge. They'll seize the round and seize everything that Koi have gone after him for this one. At least there's a Bulldog found here for Shados to find some damage, but Fnatic are asking for respect. Nay, they are demanding for it as they hit double digits on Icebox. Looking so good, so comfortable. Fnatic back in form here. <laughs> and they knew Durka was running up behind them as well. It was just the timing not having uh, Shadow a little bit too ahead, pushing through that toxic screen, and Shados unfortunately taking the pathing through Garage for the backstab instead. Now, weapons are out here for Koi. They need to win this round comfortably as well, if you're looking at the Koi side, to help bolster some of that economy, giving them a little bit more room to work with going forward. That's true. I mean, every single round that Koi have gotten on a buy round has been fairly close, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. Usually coming down to one or maybe two left alive. Again, the lock up. Hello, contained here by Fnatic. There's no flash for assistance here if Durka wants to peek. He's going to have to be very dry with this, as Chronicle as well will try and be an alternative angle. Oh, no. What? Oh, dear me. That is not what you want to see Five if you're Koi. They're falling uh, apart. They are. And Durka's got the answers. Spike in hand here as well. This round is just about done and dusted. Would take a miracle for Koi to bring this round back. But he just gave him a gift. And then another oh. gift. It's not his birthday. Yeah, everybody was hoping that Dirk had got an ace there. <laughs> you can hear the disappointment in the crowd. But at least this is a round for Fnatic, as it seems like right now. The spike could potentially be collected, but they're scared. There's something off about this. Left. Well, I mean, they know that Chronicle was also over towards Yellow, not still sure if he had maintained that position, but had fallen back safely instead. Fnatic 
playing numbers. Trying to guarantee those trades. To add on to Shados, so Fnatic know they're Swarm still on out. this B side proximity. Ten seconds left. Tag again. Get save. Yeah, they might even try to save, but it doesn't feel like Fnatic will let them. Oh, no. They're going to go for the chase. Absolutely. And that's exactly what they're going to do. No survivors for Koi. Fnatic are looking as deadly as ever, closing in on the score they would have liked, a two and one victory against Koi. Beautifully done. I can't even say that that was a clinical round from Fnatic, though. It was the errors of Koi that gave up the early rounds here. Sure, you had zero point going out, identifying the players, but then you have three people peeking Durko one by one. Yeah. He's not going to let you get away with that. And I, I'm, I'm not surprised. Corey need to go for a timeout here. There's clearly things to be said. Uh, yeah, I mean, we haven't gotten to see much of their attacking plans anyway. That was the full, the, the first full buy round that they had, and it didn't look that great. It begs the question also, with this swap here for Koi, the change in their composition, the depth that they actually have with it, because we saw how practiced they were with that harbor comp, the way that Starkso would cycle out those high tides, uh, the cascades going out as well, but then now shifting over, Okay, we're seeing some new things coming out, but it's not panning out the way they'd like on the first half. Fnatic did well to exploit mid, which was really weak to them, and now Koi are kind of struggling to actually break in. And it, what amplifies is that question is the fact that they picked Icebox to begin with, right? We knew things had to get worked on. We knew that they lost to PPL 3 to 13 on this map. And um, they'd want to come back looking different. They also knew that Fnatic yeah. struggled on it against Heretics, but we're talking about two completely different beasts Listen right now. Grenade. And Fnatic is looking like the strongest one, the feistiest one. And the one that doesn't leave any survivors. Starkso is the first casualty for Koi, and it's looking rough here as they put full force into this round. Yeah. I mean, a lot of what Koi relied on as well in their previous composition was Camo was also on that Yoru yeah. beforehand. So he had that ability to play a lot more disruption, to kind of get behind you and make the round as chaotic as possible. Right and we're just not able to see the same kind of entry power no. here. I think generally we're kind of seeing Koi for flat, not winning out on any of these individuals, but Shadow, the jester of last year, is called to action right now. Wingman will get the spike down, barely, just in time. But this is tall order for Koi. They invested in this because they believed in it. The way that they come back here is by getting this round win right here, right now. But Fnatic deny it. One after one, they shall drop. And Fnatic will get themselves on map point. And again, Koi have got nothing as they look into their pockets. No, the Omen swap is looking lackluster. Uh, comparatively to everything else. Just falling flat. You can see Camo's just not able to put out the performance. He doesn't look nearly as comfortable as when he is typically on that duelist role. And it's biting Koi now. You have to give kudos to them for trying out something new, but... Sometimes, uh... Sometimes you yeah. overcook. Sometimes you <laughs> overcook a little bit. <laughs> Sometimes maybe good, sometimes maybe poop. Sometimes Fnatic just steamroll over you on the map. They know how to do. Here. All right, let's see how they are able to do it this time yeah. around. There is an outlaw on Durk, and imagine if it's the outlaw that does most of the damage. Of course it's got to be. Chronicle close by. Durka still Spike finds another eight. fight into it, and he's got the balls to get the blades out again. Grimpino denies it this time. So no more extravaganza with the blades, as Koi are desperately trying to keep their way in. And look, Alpha, he's just behind the alarm bot, waiting over towards mid. Garnered so much space. Again, Fnatic know exactly where these last two players are. They're not going to expect this forward positioning. Not going to walk into it. You've already seen Grabinho has crept up over towards me. He's happy to play that retake here. Also got Alpha with the lockdown if they deem it necessary to close out the round. Look how far back you see Leo playing as well, not looking to get caught out in case Koi decides yeah. to walk straight over towards Don't B. 
Even within the Viper's pit, you can't feel too comfortable if you're Koi right now. And the lockdown is the perfect counter to it, right? You just had to push them straight out of this site. And that's exactly what Alpha Yet is going to do. Deny them all the space. What's Koi going to do in response? Looking to play aggressive. Grabinho is no more. And Shados is alone. Can he deny Fnatic the win right here? It's going to be a tough one. It's going to be a difficult one. And with him being revealed, it's going to be the end of this series. Oh, it took them a while on Binds, but Icebox was a different story. One-sided all across the board. Fnatic's map all day. I mean, it's a way to clap back here. They have to remind everyone why they were previously international winners twice into last season. And a nice try here for Koi, but it really was lackluster here on Icebox. And again, surprising that they took it over towards Fnatic's playground. It was uh, a good fight from Koi at, at the first map, at least. And it showed some good signs of improvement, right? It showed that they did go back to the drawing board. They did go and try and fix up some mistakes, not only compositionally, but with their approach, going for a more fine approach. But Fnatic were also a team that had to reinstate some confidence in some of their key individuals. Durka, he had his day yesterday. But I think today was Alpha's turn to get back on track, get back in the right group to put Fnatic at the top of EMEA again. Fnatic are your victors this match. Well, that, of course, will be the day. It's been an excellent one. It's been one with many back and forth. Fnatic will be your victors this time around against Koi. But ladies and gents, that is the day. That was... Uh, we were aware that we had quite a few audio issues, perhaps with the stream starting, uh, but uh, we are grateful for you sticking through all of the troubles. Again, thank you very much for tuning in, everybody. We'll see you again tomorrow. Well, we'll see you again next week. Have fun during this weekend, and we'll see you then. Okay, go nice. for it. It's a Hellraiser! So remember it's like this, uh, this is my smile.